Hello, everyone, and welcome back to continuing coverage of the Triton Super High Roller Series from here at Landing Casino in Jeju Island, South Korea, Shinwa World, the resort, Alina Jad alongside Brian Rast. Now, normally, Rasty, when we come back and we start things off for everybody at the desk, we flash back after a little bit of a chit chat to what happened last night when we crowned a champ. But you and I burned it a little bit late along with the boys so late in fact that we've got our first three day event as we put a pin in things six handed in the 25k gg millions and i don't know about you but when you were sitting here at the desk if you were kind of putting yourself into the mindset of the players out there did you feel as though that was the right way to go about things and give these guys a chance to rest come back they're playing for one and a half million yes certainly so clearly this was a function of how many players this event got. I mean, it broke the record. We got over 300 players. You yeah. know, let's tip our entries to yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, sorry, entries. And uh, yeah, you know, I think it was the right play. You know, it's not the latest we've been at the desk, but let's be reminded, this is after two full days of these right. guys playing, right? Right. There's six left. There's still a decent amount of big blinds that were at the table. It's not like if they kept playing, you know, another or level, they were going to get this done. Yeah. This tournament still has couple hours at least left to play so in my opinion the right call let the guys get some rest come back fresh play for the big money up at the top well let's talk about the guys that are left diving into the triton poker plus app do yourself a favor download it if you haven't already there they are they number six and this is how they shake out and note the spaniards Mateos already having taken one down. His compatriot, Sergio Ido at the top, 44 bigs, and not to be overlooked, of course, Mario Mosbach down there toward the bottom, Rasty, in a nice setup here for the Spaniard, I would imagine. Yeah, this is an interesting uh, chip, if we, we want to go back to that right now, like chip distribution. Mm -hmm. Clearly, Ido's in first, and clearly is in second, and then it kind of filters its way down, some mid-stacks. Everybody's going to be looking at Mario. You know, unfortunately for him, most of the other players at the table kind of cheering he goes out so, so they can move up. It's just kind of part of the game. In terms of, uh, low, you know, position at the table, Ido's got a pretty nice spot right there. He's directly in position to Chua, who's second in chips. Mm -hmm. Some shorter mid kind of stacks. Actually, mid stacks to his left, which is even better because, you know, they need to be careful, kind of wanting to survive and move up. So if I was going to pick someone out here, like who's who's got the nicest spot in the beginning? I think Ido is well positioned with the chip lead in a good spot. Yeah, no question about that. Now, Ido first played Triton all the way back in 2016. This is his seventh final table at Triton. Hasn't tasted victory as yet. As you and I know, it can be very elusive, even for the best to ever do it. One would imagine Ido could be in that kind of conversation as time goes on. Also, you caught a little glimpse down there at the names that have been grayed out. Walking you through 10 down to 6, Fedor Holtz, winner of event number 1 for 786,000. There you see him at the bottom. He finished 10th, final table bubble. Then Esan Amiri, first ever Triton stop, first ever final table, first ever cash. Ninth place for him. Kosei Ichinose, who just, was kind of nice, by the way, Just jumping in with there. Amiri. Yeah. Uh, first up, he got some bad luck. He lost a, a big flip with, I believe, uh, Ace-King suited to Jax, and Jax held a little while back, which got him short. He, he could be the big stack right now if he wins that flip. So Yeah, and of course, for Ichinose, it was that Ace-10 that he chose to play as a flat when Dvoris opened the pot, ran into Queens behind him, and that was the hand that I think really surprised a few people in terms of the ICM. Jesse Lonis hung around on crumbs, managed to find that ladder and make seventh, eventually with Kose falling before him, that was a deeply surprising development for a lot of folks. Yeah, no, agreed, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Lonis, seventh here at his first stop. Two for four in terms of caches, and a guy who has absolutely been very much uh, unique in terms of the, the spots that he's taken, some of the stuff that he's done, but true to form according to the scouting report. You know what I mean? He kind of marches to the beat of his own drum a little bit out there. Yeah, no, 100%. Jesse Lonis so far, you know, my time in the booth I've been watching, you know, he seems like a guy who the dictates of his play are not directly from the Silicon Overlord, as I like to call him. Mm -hmm. He's not waiting for, you know, the right blocker where we're mixing here or doing this. It, he's kind of like, if I... I he, I guess you would say it's it's feel, it's moment, it's flow of the game, some of these more old school concepts. I mean, 
you know, why else? You know, I think he three bet with four three of diamonds yesterday. Okay, you're probably not going to find that in a solver, but it worked. He was right. Whatever feel he was getting, you know, was correct. So yeah. That's there it is. Yeah. All right. Other storylines, of course. Let's touch. Well, you know, we talked about Mosbach make made his debut at Triton this time last year. His eighth cash. Over his career, already four and a half million in earnings, and obviously runs with a very deep crew in terms of poker minds and access to some of the knowledge. Here he is, gonna need some spins. Team Canada, Devoris and Adams. I mean, these guys have been on tour since 2017, both of them with two titles, hunting number three. And Alex Theologis, for me, the guy I kind of want to chew on a little bit, Rasty, unfamiliar to me but a lot of guys saying he's had his mouse in his hand for a minute now and has been really crushing souls out there in the online streets in terms of tournaments he bricked monaco entirely so you might have thought oh the live thing not really his go he is now enjoying his fourth cash in five attempts that's a very strong start yeah, no, certainly. It, it really is the tale of two cities there, right? Monte Carlo just straight bricking, mm. you know, who knows how many rebuys. But then Jeju 24, four for five, and now his first final table. And, uh, you know, that's that's got to feel good, right? I mean, it, as bad as it felt coming out to a stop and not cashing anything, a little frustrating. Okay, we're just right back on the horse and uh, having some success at this one. So, uh, in, uh, same thing. I've heard he's an online tournament crusher, so, you know, really want to see how uh, his decisions and how that unfolds. I mean, and obviously a lot of the, the decisions we touched on are going to be influenced, one would imagine, by that chip distribution, by the seat distribution, things just a little bit cagey. Haven't touched on the payouts outside of the one that's up top, though. $1.485 million, that's going to go to the winner. You see 345000 on tap as Lonis took down the 253 in front of Ichinose, who won 186000 as Santa Maria 152. Of course, Freighter busting in 10th, 128. 452 for fifth. The jump is, let's call it $107,000 rest, and that's enough to really, I mean, force people into a sense of respect for what's going on right now. Yeah, strategically, we have gotten to the part of the tournament where uh, ICM, risk premium, I mean, they're in full effect. This is, you know, some of the strongest it gets in the tournament yep. right now. So, uh, like, even stronger than the money bubble. So, you know, this this is a fun part of the tournament, a part where you see kind of extreme big folds, people doing crazy stuff when they have a lot of chips. I mean, when I look down at the table, if I was going to say, hey, th you know, this is the layout, like, what are things to look for? Okay, Ido's got a lot of chips. Right. Let's look to him opening really wide when he gets a chance, like folded to him, RFI, boom. Like, now he's got some mid stacks behind him. They know he's going to do it. You know, their best way to attack it, move all in. Try to get folds. It's risky, though. Right. So let's see how, how much they want to take that spot. And then the other thing I'd look out for is when it's not folded to Ido, and in particular, Devorah's with a decent amount of chips, but even more Chua, who he's directly in position, how much is he going to attack these stacks? where he's bigger, like how wide is he going to three bet? Mm -hmm. Is he going to float some? So some of those dynamics are really what to look out for beyond the obvious, like, okay, you know, right now waiting for Moe's back to bust or double as the yeah. short stack. But Chua directly to Ido's right in terms of seat. I mean, this is not great at all for the second biggest stack. If yeah. it was transposed where he now has clarity in terms of, all right, this is a pot where Ido's going to sit out. Now it's so cozy when we open the pot, we know that he's not going to put us in prison. You know, there's a really weird kind of dynamic with that, which is hard to predict ahead of time. Sometimes it's not the end of the world. If you get a, a, a guy who, who does cover you to your left 2-1, right, like this mm -hmm. formation, if you open, sometimes you get a, a one who, I'm not saying they're going to let you do whatever, but just doesn't really ride you. It's yeah. not that bad. You get your chance to come in, it's fine. But then there's other times where the guy's like, what, you're opening the pot? Like, this will not stand at my final table. I'm sorry, sir. So, you know, it, it really kind of depends on how that dynamic develops. Yeah. Because you, you can get both. And that's why I'm saying that's like one of the things to really look for is kind of that 2-1 dynamic with two being out of position. If, if you were in Chua's corner, then would you recommend that he run a little experiment early on just to kind of find out whether or not the saddle is going to be thrown on his back by Ido to his left or if Ido's going to defer? 
maybe open probe a little bit, you know? I mean, it'll naturally happen. Yeah. You know, the experiment naturally happens as you find a hand that, that you want to open and comes and you kind of see see what happens and, uh, you know, you, you tra- get your data uh, and run your experiment as you go. Yeah. All right. We are not long from the arena and the resumption of play here in the 25K GG Millions Live. Do want to mention, though, once we crown a champion over here, our coverage will flip and we will pick up the mystery bounty. 190 entries in that one from 24 unique, $7.6 million prize pool. And, of course, the chance to rip open some envelopes so lots on the docket here today from jeju as we give you a look at the official chip counts brought to you by betacr.eu 300 600 are the blinds and rasty gg millions live runs a little differently in terms of level length than some of these other events 14 hands for the level when we're six players left 13 hands per level when we get down to four and then 12 hands per blind level when we get down to heads up. So ever escalating pace, bit of a different format. No reason to stall, time has nothing to do with things. It's strictly how many hands are we gonna play? Total prize pool 7.6 million plus. Glimpse at that brought to you by our friends over at Poker Steak. And now we dig our teeth back into this steak, which has uh, been cooked medium but we're working our way toward well done. Yeah, so yes, in the broadcast yesterday, I, I was mentioning this. I'm going to mention it again. You know, one of the things I was talking about is how when there was 13, 12, 11, like this kind of range, 15, uh, and the, you could see the jumps were just getting there, but they hadn't come yet um, like they are right now, like 100,000, 150,000, right. like real, real jumps uh, from payout to payout. Like that was the time, you know, without getting crazy, but maybe to gamble a little bit, take some spots that, you know, yeah, it feel like, oh, ICM says maybe I shouldn't play this. Well, if you do and you get the stack Sergio Ido does, look what you get to do now, right? Well, like Mossbach you get folding threes, by the way, with the shortest stack here. I thought he would get to maybe get in there, Rasty. Yeah, you know, I think the problem with threes is that he's calling and he's like never, he's... He's never a huge favorite. He's never a favorite. Unless he's deuces probably, magically appear, or ace deuce. He's maybe like 51% against the range or something tiny. So it's just, you know, may, maybe better, maybe 55 because he, he's, because Ida's never just jamming hands, right? like 10s yeah, plus, yeah. right? But this is the point, like this is the moment where the max ICM pressure comes, not when there's two tables left. Two tables left, like weirdly enough, not trying, you're just trying to punt, but... It is a spot where you maybe don't want to be so tight trying to ladder up because then what happens is, you know, then you're a super short stack and, yeah, maybe you can get lucky and glide up. But, you know, like the short stacks, most of them were out coming down to six, whereas Ido now really gets to put pressure on and just keep accumulating. Yeah. So it is a chance when there's two tables left to really put yourself in a good position at the final table. And I, I'm just sort of saying this so people at home it's like oh ICM you know you don't have a lot of chips be tight sure but then you miss out on the chance to maybe be one of the top chip stacks or even better the chip leader when there's you know seven eight six five people left and everyone really tightens up to to ladder up the big pay jumps the dance is a delicate one and it's a fluid one as well as yeah you always have to kind of keep an eye on Maybe how things, just the subtlest exchange, maybe suddenly the landscape changes significantly enough for you to maybe have to make the adjustments. So situational awareness, yeah. eyes open out there. Yeah. Chua took a walk. Oh, Mosbach promptly rewarded for putting threes into the bin as Kings pay him a visit. Yeah, I don't think he has a play other than... You know, he might do the thing where he bets half his chips. Right, 1.5. But it, it, I don't think he has a stack that min open is, like, really okay. a thing. And so he jams. So, yeah, I mean, his decision is between something like 1.5 or 2 or just nine. jamming. And, I mean, ace clean off, normally just a really oh, nice... Yeah hand to look at. Yeah, going to jam over the top of it as Chua is a customer. Ooh. <clears throat> Big head. Always a quick exhale, by the way, when Ido just snap out of there behind us. I just want to point out, by the way, 
Chua didn't go all in there with like a short stack to his left in the big blind. Right. He went all in with Ido to his left. Right. That was a. So he was really risking all his chips. Just interesting. The, the click back covering three bet maybe over the or top. I, you know, n w without evaluating the play, I'm just saying that was his decision, and he was yeah. really risking all his chips. Yeah. Obviously, the range is supposed to be quite narrow in a spot such as that, and the ace queen legitimate, but not Ooh. drawing live any longer. It's the eight eight nine board. Just end it. You know, iced by the king on the turn. You know. Good for you, Mario. Okay, so today, a couple hours ago at noon or whatever, I was walking over to just right across the street from our little compound is another one uh, where there's a nice gym and a spa. Okay. And kind of mm -hmm. as I'm walking over there, I run into Mario Mossback just outside in the little eating eating place, just headphones in. He, he stops his, his jog, says hi, quick little greeting. No, he's at the final table. One minute chat. I wish him good luck. And he just runs along the way. Just very cheery, nice guy. I just, there he was. He stopped his run, pre game run, to say hello and greet me. And Now, Rast, this is in some sort of back channel way to suggest that anybody crossing your path the morning before a final table would be well served to stop and say hello. Well, I might point and it out a little run later. <laughs> you know, everybody. You might likes start charging for that. <laughs> So but yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying. This is a very measured, composed. He had his pregame ritual. No, that he of looks thing, at it. He's quiet you know? at the table. Yeah. But I'm just saying, he's actually a, a very pleasant. Oh like, yeah. Every interaction I've had with him, he's just kind of pleasant, very nice. So, you know, it's his table demeanor. He's I, he's here wor working. And I'll say this, by the way, former professional footballer, yeah. back in Europe, athletes. You know, uh, gym rats, these sorts of types, right? I'm looking at Kuhn, I'm looking at Antonius in particular as well. They're just so ripe with discipline. There is something of a, a cloth from which these types are cut, and it lends quite well, I think, to some of the stresses and some of the, you know, the tests that high-stakes poker can issue us. They're, they're ready for the challenge at all times. And also some of the preparation now that goes into it. Like yeah. he was getting a run in before the final table. Use the body. Wake up the brain. You know, stay fit. Well, hang on. That's a thing, by the way. I, mean, I can use you know. my body to wake up my brain, Rast? Why I is this the first time you're sharing this with me? There's a first time for everything, my friend. <laughs> I do. Ooh, d he got kind of a big fold. Oh, he jammed, though. Yeah, yeah. Jack 7. <laughs> but you see the power? Jack seven jam sure. got a suited. I believe it was ace four of diamonds. And also, no, I mean, the double by Mosbach. All of a sudden, there is no clear shorty, yeah. right? We've got a cluster from seventeen down to twelve big blinds shared by four players: Theologus, the largest, Devoris behind him, and then level Mosbach. And Adams, just before that, Adams now a couple of blinds short of him with 10. And then, of course, Chua, clear midfield, and Ido up top. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I've got the weird Because like a very American accent. Pocket fives now for Alex. You have a very nice hand here. I went to call And feels like one okay. you just want to shove Coast? versus basically uh, a 10 yeah, or 11 big okay. blind stack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, you live in yeah. No, no, I, I've lived like, in Toronto uh, for oh, most of my life. I think this is going to be a collision. Yeah, this is too much hand to fold. Here Russia, we go. But, this is uh, a big flip. Yeah, on. a second uh, time that Mosbach is taking a spin, yeah, this time far West deeper Coast, than he was on the first occasion. <laughs> And this would be harmful. I didn't. I didn't work in New York. So for the a stack. Not, if the fives were not to hold, thirteen point two million. By the way, this would put you into clear <laughs> third. If you're Mosbach, Jack seven six, and his rail loves it. There they are, <laughs> Muller and company. He won the 25K GG Millions at the World Series of Poker. I think that's Roland Rakita on the right as well. And what it isn't, 
is a five <laughs> on the river. And he's going to come over and give a little love to the rail. Love to see that, by the way, Raz. Very consistent with what you just described. Operator, all business, well, they don't even in the office. Beer. But, you know, <laughs> quick lunch break there. Yeah. And wow, what a start to the oh, final table up there. for Mario. I mean, uh, yeah. three point something million, now 13 million, and just basically boom, boom. an average stack. That was the biggest goal. Um, the Theologus. I'm actually slide. not sure. Um, won too many times. <laughs> no, I, I think the two, the two tournaments that I won were both like quite small. Uh, like, I th yeah, one was a short deck, one was a PLO, I think. Uh, so, like, smaller fields. Uh, and I think I've had, like, a couple of deep runs in No Limit events where I ended up, like, second or third. Um, and it was more than the... And, and it was, uh, yeah, probably for a little over a million, I want to say. Short deck tournaments kind of weird to play, right? I actually think they're great, but around the bubble it's kind of dumb. Yeah. Mm. Sergio keeps the heat on. 9 8 off from the hijack. 1.2 the min. And yeah, that's a glimpse into the fact that in spite of some of this shakeup, Already this early start. on, as we see DeForest look down at two tens, Ido start. is sticking with the bit. plan. Yeah. And yeah, there, there's this is just a good hand. He's gonna go all in for like 12 or 13 blinds. There's fold equity, good enough, and uh, there's no trapping here. All in. He agrees. And what there also isn't is any further involvement from Devoris, uh, sorry, from Ido. Tidy little pick up there as he nibbles on the chip leader. Theologist, by the way, dust settles and he's left with 4.3, that's seven bigs. Yeah, I mean, when you're one of these middling stacks to the left of Sergio, that's one of the ways you get to pick up chips now is he's opening pretty wide. A decent number of these hands, obviously, because it's wide, can't call an all-in. Mm -hmm. While you can't really get carried away with it, when you get kind of good hands, you, you then get to go all-in and pick up the pot. Well, kind of a good hand is how we might respond to an ace nine off suit but again ido chip leader opening under the gun let's see mario yeah. deep enough now 22 bigs to wag a finger but not looking to get in trouble as he respects the icm of theologus out there with seven and of course a number of shorter stacks than his own which has now been doubled really? twice yeah mario was not going to jam that right with his stack okay. for what is it, 20 <laughs> blinds? <laughs> right. He was thinking about 3-bet, like to 3x. And the to wag open. the finger at what he anticipates, it's good, you know, an overactive yeah. Ido. So he was thinking about taking a 3-bet spot and ended up passing. And by the way, it's one of those, like, you don't lay up at night when you do pass in that spot because you can just lean on the ICM to, to kind of allow you to feel very comfortable about laying back for a time and seeing what's what, the big jumps, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, again, <laughs> it's like the sliding doors thing of what's gonna happen, you know, if you did take it or not. We can see there was a good chance it would've worked, but you, you just, I don't know, you never know. Here's the other thing, you and I have both borne witness to some characters as we see Adams with ace-queen ready to go, who it just feels like they go another level at you when you three bet them, they know you know. And yeah. then all of a sudden some reckless seeming four bets have come forward yeah. where it just is a really loud reminder that you ain't supposed to be out here right now, son. Yeah. You know, in terms of the ICM. Exactly, and I mean, basically that could have happened that hand as right. well. Not I mean, saying Sergio, ace, yeah. But you know, so. I always love that, by the way. I think it's, you know, indulgently speaking, I've always found it very cool when the ICM pressure gets lobbed right back, you know, yeah. volleyed 
if you will. Yeah, you know I'm opening wide, but if you're messing around, you also can't do anything. Yeah, even if yeah. you're not messing around, there's a class of hands that are legitimately three betting that now must still concede. But that's you know actually I mean? that's actually why at this point it's supposed to become very clear. Like ICM three betting ranges are like wild. Like it'll be stuff. You know, there's spots where it'll be like queens plus ace king, and then some like goofy suited ace and king x stuff that's like a clear fold, for a, example. A clear jam for Theologus. Pocket jacks here. One of two ten big blindish stacks coming in, and this round of. Blinds and Annies will be brought to you by folds from Ido and Adams. Like, like in a lot of those spots, it's like the person who three bet, oh, he knows what he's doing versus a four bet type of deal. Mm -hmm. Like he either has it or he doesn't. So, you know, if you're three betting the, the uh, ace jack suited the there and you don't know what to yeah. do but because of extreme one. ICM pressure versus the four bet, yeah, I mean, you know, it's fine. It's probably a fold. You were just taking a pretty good hand and in, in using it in that class, but. But you could flat that hand, and you're kind of crushing the opener's range in position, too. Well, you're kind of crushing everything but aces if you're Daniel DeVoris, as kings have surfaced five. once more here at this FT, first for Mosbach. Now for Dan, 1.35 the open sizing. And ace into the bin on the button for Ida. Nonchalantly folds yeah. the ace five off. You know, let's just let it be known. And now Theologus with a very strong hand in the big blind, but 4.7 million only, little bigger than 2x, not comfortable he is the shortest stack though and there's only one other short stack who just took the big blind it's timothy adams to his right four back. so be uh, two, three, three, because five, of that three, eight, he decides he just can't pass up pass up this chip ev and i don't blame him and kind of an interesting flop the divorce can't be too happy having kings and theolo just has a little bit of something Gutter, no heart on board. The ace is pesky. Alex checks over. And Devorah's king of diamonds also making things a little cozier. Will fire, 600,000. So yeah, versus a bet this small with some implied odds to the, to the nuts. Well, Alex, I feel like that's enough to continue in the pot. It seems like 3.9 back investments have been made already, and he's not ready to abandon them as he keeps the position open. Chasing a six, and instead a double gutter, but in diamond form. Rolling off on this turn, pot growing to 4.8, Devorah's picking up the nut flush draw. But when we get check called in this spot, rasped by Alex, do we favor the pot control -y sort of behavior? Sub one SPR, 3.3 across the way, and of course the strength of that king of diamonds? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the hands if he bets that fold, he's crushing. And better hands don't, don't really fold. A better hand being an ace. A lot of the better hands now, I mean, Alex makes a decent amount of flushes. Something he definitely needs to be concerned with. To check back, very reasonable. Ooh. Oh, perhaps very unreasonable. The way to regard runner, runner, jack high straight as the kings have been vanquished. And now Daniel, I would imagine Rast is going to have a little bit of a decision upon him. Unclear, though, if Alex just rips. Yeah, Alex has, in my opinion, a clear value bet here versus a check back. I mean, he has two-thirds pot at, in his stack, so there's... Sail it Daniel, in. the majority of his check back range is a hand that, you know, the 10 didn't change much on the river, realistically speaking. I mean, it did give Alex a straight, but most hands didn't change in value, so he probably has a hand that wants to get to showdown, and we're beating those class with a straight here very clearly, 
So why check and just let those hands show down and get no value here? So seems like a very clear value bet to me. And uh, it's a gross spot for Daniel. Um, King of Diamonds is very relevant, especially against this type of sizing where he's, you know, I mean, not that it's big, but in the context of the tournament, it's kind of big going all in. Three, two, you know, seven, five. Daniel does have to think like, He's going to check back some good ace X here. So, like, it, does Alex really value betting for a pretty large size at this point in the tournament with a hand like ace-8, ace-4? Eight, ace, ace four? You're like, those the, are hands the types of aces him. that wouldn't, play, wouldn't have played back at him off of yes. that stack depth pre-flop. Yes. I mean, they definitely might not. So now he, now he can maybe, I, I don't know. But he might rule out some hands that are beating him from this value range. Maybe he's making it more two pair plus. A lot of flushes. Obviously, 9 8. Can't be king queen. He's blocking that anyways. The king of diamonds is a very relevant blocker against flushes. I mean, a lot of king x suited defend pre flop. So this is, this is a tough spot. You know, what's bluffing? Maybe some low straight draws that missed. Maybe even like a five, right? A, f a five could definitely bluff here. It's just, it's one of Alex's worst hands and real realistically speaking has zero showdown value. Maybe even like a seven. So. Well, Devor is chewing on it. For clear reasons. As he's trying to construct the hands that fall to kings. Can you see the lips in motion there as he works through it? Index finger. Like, Counting. it's possible that with the king of diamonds, this is like a better bluff catcher than like ace. Like if he had like ace, for sure like ace six of clubs. Because ace six of clubs actually blocks bluffs with the six. And I think the king of diamonds is a more relevant blocker than like an ace is. So, yeah, I, I mean, I know it looks like his hand isn't that strong, but I think it's like, a pretty good bluff catcher actually so um y you know it's it's totally reasonable that he's thinking about this and how many in my opinion left? even if he calls okay no, three. just a tough so spot three left right yeah. shredding time banks but not chips in the form of a call is divorce thus far I stick you in that seat, Rast. You click and call. I don't know, man. I'm probably doing the same thing as him. I'm working okay. things out. I'm looking right. at my guy. I'm I'm seeing if there's any reads throughout the pot. Did I feel like he was on a draw or not when he called me on the flop? You know, it's it's that type of thing. Like the thing with bluff catchers is, from an EV perspective, it sort of doesn't matter what he chooses. So what I do, it's like I I can't give you an answer. I would be very tempted to call, but I. I might or might not, depending on, I don't know, feeling and uh, looking at my opponent well, and stuff. So he ends up, ends up making the right Yeah, he does. Yeah, and I saw you do something, but I like didn't look at you because I didn't want it to be like a weird thing. Yeah, I thought as you threw it, you know, from the corner of my eye, I thought it was a, was it a calling chip. Almost. <laughs> Interesting little post-mortem there between mm. Alex and Daniel. Have you ever given something away, Rast, in a time bank situation where you think that the guy throwing the time bank forward is throwing a calling chip in there and then you have yeah, a live I reaction? trying to angle you, obviously, and then I realized what had happened because I saw you move and then I like looked away on I purpose. Huh? Yeah, I, Seems I like something know. akin to yeah. that, by the way, may have transpired. It's, it's divorce so sporting said, I saw something when I threw my time bank out there, I believe, and then he looked away because he didn't want that to sort of adulterate the process. You know, I think I think my bias with his particular hand having the king of diamonds would be very slightly towards calling, but I have no idea what I would do in the moment. The like, like I said, it would be based on a probably like a bunch of feeling and live reads yeah and stuff yeah more, a lot of intuition yeah. at play there king eight though not a ton of intuition required fresh off of that pickup as he bullies mosbach 
And I'm inherits the button. A nice back-to-back -back spot there. For like, it's a good out. call, but there, there's even, like, slightly better ones. Like, you, you could have played ace-king off with the king of diamonds that way, and now you're blocking aces up and the king, so that's, like, an even better like bluff catcher call so uh, you know it's not it's a good one it's a solid one but it's not like the best bluff catcher you can have so it's you know it, it doesn't have like a bad card like a six with like the six of clubs like yeah. you don't want the six of clubs of course hand. not yeah <coughs> now pocket eights for ido who wants some one eight in the bin Pretty smooth sailing for Sergio. He's been relatively aggressive and just kind of raising and taking it, it feels like. Yeah. I mean, we always anticipated that the waters wouldn't be particularly choppy for him. Yeah. Although it can be very frustrating when you, you have one of these know, man. pesky dudes that's like, hey, listen, man. Like, I know you think you got this ICM set up on your hands. Like, Chua all of a sudden wakes up and goes, no, we're going to rumble. And you're like, hey, buddy. <laughs> You're looking over like, y do you understand we're not supposed to be doing this? Or We've seen it play out. Or sometimes people just get hands. Like, I'll, I ended up winning this oh tournament. Yeah. It worked out. But in, uh, in like, the 3K two-day turbo or whatever WSOP, I remember I, w I like, built up a stack on – it was only a two-day. Or, like, early on day two, I just vaulted into the chip lead. And with, like, three tables left, I finally got in a oh spot I'm where – the stacks to my left were short enough that I could just open jam. Sure enough, my Seriously? first open jam, a guy just had like kings. And I'm like, Seven <laughs> good for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, so it's like, yeah, you get those spots where he open jams the jack seven off. He open jams, it's like, yeah. sometimes yeah. they just have kings. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Sometimes, by the way, they'll ha they yeah. have those kings, and then whatever those two napkins are that yeah. you tried to put to work just shower so. the kings, and you're like, wow. Sun shines down, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, that's yeah. why it's like you know, <laughs> that it's just so funny to me. It's like in my head, I'm like, why? Like why? It, so it ended up working out, but it's just one of those moments. So Sergio has the spot in. No one's had anything, and he's just kind of picking up chips, which is most most of the time, your opponents won't have a big hand, but it happens. I mean, it's not that rare. I mean, you're you're doing it through two, three hands, and you know the odds aren't insignificant that someone picks up something good enough to call. The blinds are not insignificant either. As they've yeah. gone from 3-6 to 4-8, we reset the 14-hand timer here with six players remaining. There's 100 chip in the middle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ido takes a walk. I got to say that I'm quite happy for Alex Theologis, you know, here at his second ever Triton Festival. We've seen some dry spells that have really tested the metal of some goats. And when you first enter kind of the, the Triton arena, it does stand alone in many respects in terms of the cachet, the prestige, and oh, just yeah. the sheer... Buy difficulty, in yeah, buy-in size, oh. all of it, it can cause you potentially to question some things, really? you know, you brick out first one, you come in, maybe you brick out <laughs> another and you're going, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. Yeah, I'm just right. saying these are yeah. natural sort of dark alleyways that we find ourselves in as Ido finds himself with pocket fives up against an Adam's Jam, blind versus blind, call all in rather, forgive me. How will the ace eight perform? Well, not great, not but can enough. counterfeit the five yeah. <laughs> on the king the ten ten board. We add kings to the immediate outs. Now we add a jack okay, as better. well. You see Adams and a queen. Yes. Third ten, not the one though, as it takes a second, but. 
We realize that is not a counterfeiting development. Tens full of fives for it's Ido. One, and the board pair. Yeah. Is that mine? <laughs> end of the road. For yeah. Canada's Tim Adams. Yeah, well played, Tim. Uh, Triton legend. Yep. Cash for so much here. Yeah, you know, touching back on what you said, I think there's two... Well, hang on one oh. second, just to give Tim his moment. Yeah. Thirteen and a half million in career Triton earnings. This his seventeenth cash. Will not pick up his third title. As the second time he finds the money here in five attempts in Jeju. Obviously, haven't seen the last of him. As Adams can go no further and leaves behind five to do battle here in the twenty-five k GG Millions Live. And Rasty, you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim almost got some momentum going a few times here at this final table, but just just couldn't really. Anyway, what I was saying, touching back on it, it's there's a few things about it. One, and this is just touching on one of your points. Yes, you come out to Triton. Now all of a sudden you are playing with some of the very best crushers. in the world, mm -hmm. crushers who who are pretty universally rec recognized among their peers as having very strong games. And you know, it's like, do I fit in? Right when things aren't going well, am I as good as these guys? You know, I I'm, I'm, haven't done well. But the second thing also, and this, you know, it's one thing on some online tournament series or you know WSOP, thousand here, five thousand this. What you know, it's a lot of money for some people, not for a high stakes poker player. You brick out twenty of those in the row, okay, you know, fine. You come out to Triton, you brick out, you know. 30 buy-ins in a row or 20 buy-ins in a row without right. a serious cash right. of like 25k, 50k, 100k, multi-bullet affairs boom, boom, boom. potentially. All of a we're talking millions of dollars. Yes. Right. That's a lot of money for anybody. Yeah. Even a high-stakes poker player. <laughs> the so, bankrolls can get yeah. incinerated pretty quickly out here as Queen 10 performs well against this Queen 6 suited. Chua first time he's popped his head up out of the sand to the right of Ido and immediately by the way Sergio on the button even with King Deuce off suit kind of undressed him for a second looked over as if to be like okay look let's oh. not get frisky did concede as does Alex in turn after <coughs> defending for understandable for reasons as Adrian C bets the open ender takes it down Thank from you. Thank Singapore you. is Adrian Chu first ever Triton Super High Roller Series, not a flag that we see flown altogether that often, but a part of the world from which we do source a significant amount of our player pool, that being Southeast Asia. 61.5 in total Triton earnings as he finished 26 in the 25K Silver Main. Here he is running in second. Two to one plus is the chip lead for Ida with five left. Shortest stack right now belonging to Theologus with 6.8 milli. Go on then. Yeah, you could see on the the seating chart and, and chip stacks that was just up there, the change. Like, Ido has chipped up. Ido now has a very significant lead. He's more than double second. And Chua has slipped back. Um, you know, he is still in second, but he is much, much closer at this point to the bottom stacks. So this has, this has become a runaway chip leader. You know, at the beginning of the table, right, I think Ido had... 20 something to 24 million or so and Chua was like 18 you know it, it was it was much closer but but that has changed Chua hasn't really dragged many chips and Ido uh, has raised and taken a number of times and then just won an all-in there to bust Timothy Adams in sixth and has really started to run away with this and uh, that's a pretty important development at this point and this is not and where do you live now? You know, Pardon this me? is a spot that's probably uh, not going to work out well for Ido because Theologus has a clear jam, right? Nothing to say here. It's, you know, not even nine blinds. And Ido can't really get away from this given the price he's getting. And he's, he's a pretty big dog to win this hand. So should Alex win this, yeah, he's the short stack like and he'll catapult that. right up there. In between Mosbeck and Chua. Not that it makes it hard Ace King suited, performing wonderfully against Ido here, who opened a 1 6, and then they got the rest of it in. And look at this. Where's the sweat? Where's the sign? Jack 3. Ace King in front, Ido threatening for obvious reasons. I mean, you call it for this. This could just be Sergio's tournament. I mean, if he wins this. 
ace for both players on the turn. Theologius still the in front. <laughs> you know, maximum sweat on the river. Can he hang on here? Fade the nine or the spade for 15.2. Yes, as he makes Broadway and leans back and conversely rast. He wins this one and your thought this could just be Sergio's tournament. He yeah. loses it though and now things have shaken out a little bit differently. I mean, he's still in a commanding position, you know, um, no, six, but five, he six, drops back seven, the, the seven million here and you know, slides a little bit closer to the group, and right. the group is inching its way back up. So, what do you yeah, do? I mean, he work? wins this. It's it's a uh, runaway freight we'll train. See. I mean, I yeah. think he has well over half point. the chips if he wins this, and it really becomes kind of uh, like the uh, play for second the type of deal. But now, and probably you know, the these two point. stacks oh, here, Theologus and Chua, you know, they they double That's through him. They're the chip leader. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even if they they play an all-in with each see. other, they'll end up being the chip leader. Uh, I haven't so. been, no, I've been meaning to uh, to go. It's on my bucket list. It's a little resistance from the deck. Maybe saying, Ido, it's not going to be so easy this time, mm -hmm. you know? You've got to show you can weather the storm a little bit. So now a pot where the chip leader's folded and we get to see which of these remaining three gentlemen wants to pick up some chips. Theologus with a pretty weak hand, but he has the most chips of the remaining players and might view this as a spot to, to try to chip up. put some pressure on the two shortest stacks in the tournament. Jack four suited the responsible kit for the aggression from the button of a newly minted 15 million chip stack coming into this one for the Greek. Devoris. Clear call. Queen seven suited. Agreement. Just solid hand, good price. about this flop? The Jack connecting with Theologus, the Diamonds with Devoris. Interest will be maintained by both parties in a 4.4 million chip exchange. Yeah, Theologus with a decision here if he wants to see bet or uh, check back. Kind of both have some merits. And he decides to come with tiny bet. And again, Devoris with another decision. It's not to fold. It's to decide whether or not to just call or to raise. And if he raises, does he do all any in? sizing other than all in? Oh, yeah, he does come with the check raise. I think I started with It's a jam. 5. Alex asks for the count and then, you know, says, I think I'm calling just to kind of ensure that there isn't any unsavory takeaway. Yeah, you, you five, can't bet the five, flop. Five, eight, five, eight, seven, five. Oh, yeah. Call? Okay. Yep. All right. Alex says call. Shows the jacks and the eights. Devoris draws to the queen or the diamond. No, I mean, of course you should ask for a count. It's a pretty fair fight. A pseudo flip. As we've coined it. Point three million chips. The coin weighted somewhat heavily toward Theologius. Four on the turn, and we remove the four of diamonds from Devoris's outs. Can he connect? Right, GG. No. Okay. A six on the river, and double D gave it all he had. But in the end, left to claim fifth place here in the 25K GG Millions Live. That fifth place finish GG. will be good for 400. And 52,000 as Alex ascending 
doubled Mosbach up and then hasn't looked back pretty much since. And just for divorce, that I don't get it. nearly <laughs> half a million chip payout will bring him up Is it a and over eleven million dollars no, it's just, it's a hand in don't want career to go in Triton <laughs> earnings. So Denied his late. third title as the Canadians have both been ushered out of the arena. Thirty-first cash, third here in Jeju. Certainly, we've not seen the last of Dan Devoris. He plays them all. And he's going to get. Some time to hang out. Maybe reset here. There's still plenty of events and opportunities left for Daniel on the docket. And you can do it with. All right, okay, okay. And four left here at the FT. But so, yesterday? Yeah. You know. Just to tie it back into the yeah, okay, sorry. so Maybe. Sergio's not going to steamroll this. He lost the all in, you know. He, Granted, the probability dictated he should have. But now we see what happens. Theologius wins an all-in versus someone else. And now all of a sudden, Theologius is very close. Only a couple million behind him in second, nipping on the heels. Sergio no longer has that runaway chip lead. And in fact, can no longer open jam as a play because Theologius is directly on his left. Right. So. And by the way, only four million separating Ido and Theologius. And you see... Sergio opening nevertheless, doing so to the min as landscape shifts are evident and the reasoning behind the button yeah. jam from well, Mosbach evident as well back. as two queens. Shelter Jack, Jack. Six, and then Jack. He went, he rebet with Jack four. Um, and one I didn't really understand. Well, he was the chip leader, so he doesn't mind so doesn't letting mind. the, the okay. shot begin. It was just like he probably does it with a lot of hands other than check four as well. Okay. So he just isolates the short stack, basically. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have a lot to learn. It's a fascinating game. <laughs> yes. Short stack, late game. I gotta tell you, there's four left in an event with one and a half million up top. And, you know, Chua clearly not as experienced as the other three that he's up against here. Ask the honest question, got the honest answer from Mosbach. And I think that is fairly unique to kind of the the small fraternity that is Triton and the way in which they can be so welcoming and so accommodating to, you know, all experience levels here. I, I do think there is a unique vibe here, but to provide maybe just the slightest level of pushback with that, I'm not so much saying what you're saying is 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 incorrect, but mm -hmm. I do feel like there is a bit of a different vibe in poker in general today, where if you go back like 15 years ago, right, you you were there, the old school. Yeah. There was a, you know, what the high stakes players knew, it's like there wasn't a way to get that information. It was much harder, mm -hmm. right? There weren't solvers, silicon overlords videos that you know that coaching sites coaching sites this it just the proliferation of good high quality information today is, is so high it's so out there that i think it's kind of this vibe of yeah you know it's like why am i gonna be a bit of a a, d a dweeb be mean to this guy and like not give him a real answer when you know there's yeah. so much information out there, and it's it's not that big a deal because okay, you tell them this one thing. Well, there's eight million nuanced things like that you can right. learn. So, right. whereas I just I so I think it's created a bit of a different climate in general. But to throw back to your point and give Triton some props, it's definitely more prevalent here than other places. But I've noticed this in general in yeah. poker. Yeah, I mean, look, a lot of people would look and say there's yeah. 900,000 reasons between a fourth place payout and a first yeah. place payout where I don't want to have this conversation until it's all said and done. But I hear what you're saying. Yeah, How you, big is the advantage we're yeah, giving you're up? Telling him one thing about a hand that previously yeah. happened, the spot's probably not even coming up again. You know, it's yeah. just. I hear it. I, I yeah. definitely hear where you're coming from as well. No question about it. As a gutter is that which develops here on the heels of a Chua open to 1.7 and defense from the Greek, from the big. He checks over, second pair. Bets 1.2, and the call is made as the pot grows further to seven million. The jack being the danger card for Alex, 
And uh, not so much the nine. You know, it depends on the bet size that Chua choose. If it goes check bet, Chua might not even bet this. I mean, Chua might decide to check this back here, especially with his stack size. It's a little dicey. It, it could end up cost. Yeah, this is this is not a good card. It could cost him something on the river. Well, let's see. He might he might still fold it though. He did check back. I mean, if it goes check bet, you're you're not. I don't think you're beating any value w with a nine. Can Alex ever lead as a block? He could, yeah, yeah. The, this is, I think, this is a spot you could block, and and kind of set the price. And and I think that's what he's thinking about. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes with it, but he, he decides check. Okay, no no value bet from Jack Ten. Shut down. And comfortably picking up this seven million is Adrian Chua. That's fair, the better hand one. <laughs> That's one of those spots where when you, ch you know, you can get value, it's also very, you know, you, if I could call you you've checked back the turn, your range is capped, you can get check raised pretty That's liberally as well. Might have to, I guess. I, I believe. Shua kind of gave us a glimpse into why it was he chose not to value, but he said, I don't know that I can call if you exactly. check shove. And obviously this is part of the calculus. Yeah, which is what I was just saying. Mm -hmm. And on and and really actually Jack Nine is is a hand that's pretty good to do that. Mm -hmm. Got a nice little straight blocker. Yeah, it, it's one of the class of hands that ends up like that ends up liking check raise bluffing there are hands that are just weak enough like that you don't really like to call, you're not beating any value, and but have pretty good blockers, those end up becoming some of your best check raise bluffs. So it, it could have been a spot where we, we could have actually seen that exact um, sequence play out had he value betted the river and uh, Alex decided to get gangster with it. It was definitely a good hand to do it with, in my opinion. Morning. Do suited. Jam and take from the button for Sergio. Most of the violence is the type that he hasn't really been involved in here very early on, obviously. Not suggesting thematics just yet. But this is a little annoying for Sergio that, you know, all of a sudden he's got both Theologius and Chua sitting 20 some odd. Mosbach, the clear fourth with 14. It's not just this one horse affair where he had broken quite free of a peloton. Yeah, he he dropped back a bit after after starting to break free, <coughs> but he's maintained a solid chip lead the whole time. Yeah. And now that the blinds went up and Thielo just dropped back a few chips, he's back to the open jam. Ooh, and... and I think the bigger stacks would not call not ace-10 off, on. but Mosbach, with only 14 blinds, is going to think about this one. This is this is a tough spot. I mean, he's actually performing. Here's the thing is a decent amount of the hands that have ace-10 off in trouble, Ido's going to be min-raising. So he likely does, performs decently against the jam range probably even plus ev but i guess you know mosbach is deciding not enough to be worth in it, the additional risk premium on the call but i think it's plus chip ev versus ido's jamming range doesn't take the spot though and leaves adrian chua to think about ace eight. Yeah, for even more chips and a worse hand, I, I, I think this is, I would say technically a, a fold. Ooh. 
But if he calls, he will be a favorite. And uh, sometimes Ooh. when you're not sure about things, getting in there and taking some risks isn't always the worst strategy, you know? Ace. But uh, I, I- Risk tolerance level's just different for different ten. folks. I like oh, wow. his fold, though. Yeah. I think he He's the fold's eight. the right play. Okay. Mario's hand, I'm not sure about. And I thought you had something, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's good thinking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now that's interesting. Maybe I can tweak your next time. <laughs> I'm not sure, sure. I'm supposed to go. After Mosbach kind of paused, oh. and this is a concept I've kind of always been curious about. I mean, said, I thought you had well, something. And if that yeah. something yeah. included an again. ace, now the value of that ace eight goes down considerably, perhaps. Uh, you know, although if that's where you place an ace now, there's two blockers to the opener having an ace, and maybe we look at it in that way. But all I'm saying is, Paying attention if maybe you assign a range to a player that tanks and folds. Not suggesting tank is the way to describe what happened with Mosbach, but you know, and you have to be dead right, obviously, to take the info kind of into account. But it, it you know, it's the kind of thing that, as you're always looking for tiny little. Well, it gives us a window into Chua's thought process, I right? think, more than anything. And the depth of it. Mosbach jam and take. And remember, yeah, by the way, that getting uh, through really these hands at a brisk pace isn't somehow going to afford these guys cheaper orbits. Fixed at 13 hands per level is what we will play four-handed and beyond. And then it goes to 12 hands per blind level. When we get to heads up, this is a specific format to the GG millions. <coughs> you have any feelings on on that particular kind of way to go about the blinds in, ter in terms of not having a clock and just, hey, we're going to play 14 hands per level, then oh. 12, then, you know? No, no, I haven't even, I don't know if I've ever even played a tournament with that before, so no, no thoughts on it. It seem, seems interesting, yeah, doing that instead of a clock. Definitely will prevent stalling so maybe it's good for that reason i think that's what it's designed to tackle as ido wants to tackle a chua open adrian with the a7 10 9 suited speculative it wants to play post flop it would appear oh my and i don't blame him trip tens not really much to speak of for chua though Promptly checked over. Check back from Adrian. Queen on the turn. So check, check here. I think if you're Ido, you put your opponent predominantly on no pair hands here. Definitely not. Like middle pairs, you know, does he check back aces specifically or something? But now we're getting into a small part of his range. So it's kind of like... Do I better check if I can bet twice, get value from a queen? You know, how much value is there trapping? Maybe he checks back some hands that now have equity, such as ace, jack, king, jack, etc. It's an interesting spot in the sense of you always, whenever you have big hands, you want to make sure you get the most you can because it's hard to make big hands. But good discipline there. From Adrian Chua, those paired flops a lot of times can leave us feeling like sprinkle and take it. But noting the flat from Ido and respecting a little bit of the ICM, he does get out of there and now sits toward the bottom of the pack, keeping Mosbach company, although the pack is condensed behind Ido. I gotta say, I've kind of liked what I've seen uh, from Adrian. I've never been able to do that thing he was doing there, by the way. You grab your chin, give it the, the neck crack, the yeah, self, self kind of Cairo. Yeah. yeah. And that's cost me a lot throughout the course of my <laughs> life. I did uh, head over to one of our uh, 
Latvian tech ops over here at Gatis the other day, and uh, he truly is the, like, the, I think the character Zangi from Street Fighter was based on him, but he, he lined me up real nice. I wouldn't say it was a professional chiropractic exchange, but, you know, we're feeling better on the back end. That's nice. I mean, that's some talent if he just can randomly do that despite being involved in tech. He could also Mortal Kombat the upper part of my torso away from the lower <laughs> half, and there have been occasions on which I've said the wrong thing, and he's, he's wanted to do that minutes. as well. He, you know, but an actual MMA fighter is got to Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Dude, I, you know, I'm, I'm in there. I just, I, I watched, I spent like, my what? I don't know. If you have given five a or six hours it. watching the whole, almost the whole card, UFC 299, a couple days ago. It was fire. That's like two minutes. Two minutes. It was, it was also day. fire for my bank account. What's going on here? Huh? Yeah. I don't. You should just leave that with him. <laughs> King three suited. And just no resistance. It's so beautiful if, when you're the chip leader and you just get to do this. And, oh, yeah. And I mean, no one has anything. Just yep. ship it. I mean, I, 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 isn't it? It's 4 8, right? So that's 2 million in the pot every hand. I mean, that's a lot of chips. Such a beautiful opportunity for him to continue to accumulate and put more and more distance between himself and the rest of the pack as we're going to a scheduled break here. He will have a 2 to 1 chip lead as we bring you back to the desk. Ali Najad alongside Brian Rast here at the Landing Casino. Third and final day of coverage of the 25K. GG Millions Live. We did see the departures of, uh, let's say, Timothy Adams and Daniel DeVoris in sixth and fifth. And now four remaining here. We're going to have about a 10-minute break. Let's go straight to the break, Rasty. When we come back, we'll talk about what things are shaping up to be here with four left back in Jeju. Stay close. See you in a few. Welcome to the Daily Dose of GTO Quiz of the Day. Do you know how to identify good range bet boards? Cut off versus button, three bet pot, 40 big blinds deep. Which of these flops should button C bet 100% of their range? Ace King King, Ace 7 3, King Jack 6, or 8 7 3? Find the answer in the Daily Dose of GTO, our free ebook designed to help you master GTO poker in just five minutes per day. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
just seize the wonder. Jeju Shinwa World. You're kind of crushing everything but aces. If you're Daniel Devoris as kings have surfaced five. once more here at this FT, first for Mosbach, now for Dan. 1.35 the open sizing. Ace into the bin on the button for Ida. Nonchalantly folds yeah. the ace five off. You know, let's just let it be known. And now Theologus with a very strong hand in the big blind, but 4.7 million only, a little bigger than 2x. Not comfortable. He is the shortest stack, though, and there's only one other short stack who just took the big blind. It's Timothy Adams to his right. Four back. So be uh, two, three, three, because five, of that, he decides he just can't pass up, pass up this chip EV. And I don't blame him. And kind of an interesting flop where Dvoris can't be too happy having kings. And Theolo just has a little bit of something. Gutter, no heart on board. The ace is pesky. Alex checks over. And Devorah's King of Diamonds also making things a little cozier. Will fire. 600,000. So, yeah, versus a bet this small with some implied odds to the, to the nuts. Will Alex feel like that's enough to continue in the pot? It seems... Like 3.9 back, investments have been made already and he's not ready to abandon them as he keeps the position open. Chasing a six and instead a double gutter but in diamond form. Rolling off on this turn, pot growing to 4.8, Devore is picking up the nut flush draw. But when we get check called in this spot, rasped by Alex, do we favor the pot control -y sort of Behavior, sub one SPR, 3.3 across the way, and of course the strength of that king of diamonds. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the hands if he bets that fold, he's crushing. And better hands don't don't really fold. A better hand being an ace. A lot of the better hands now, I mean, Alex makes a decent amount of flushes, something he definitely needs to be concerned with. It's a check back very reasonable. Ooh. Oh, Perhaps very unreasonable the way to regard runner, runner, jack high straight as the kings have been vanquished. And now Daniel, I would imagine Rast is going to have a little bit of a decision upon him. Unclear, though, if Alex just rips. Yeah, Alex has, in my opinion, a clear value bet here versus a check back. I mean, he has two-thirds pot at, in his stack, so there's... Sail it Daniel, in. the majority of his checkback range is a hand that, you know, the 10 didn't change much on the river, realistically speaking. I mean, it did give Alex a straight, but most hands didn't change in value, so he probably has a hand that wants to get to showdown. And we're beating those class with a straight here very clearly. So why check and just let those hands show down and get no value here? So seems like a very clear value bet to me, and uh, it's a gross spot for Daniel. Um... King of Diamonds is very relevant, especially against this type of sizing where he's, you know, I mean, not that it's big, but in the context of the tournament, it's kind of big, going all in. Three, two, you know, seven, five. Daniel does have to think, like, he's going to check back some good ace -X here. So, like, it, does Alex really value betting for a pretty large size at this point in the tournament with a hand like ace-8, ace-4, ace, ace, ace four? You're right. Those the are the types of aces him. that wouldn't play wouldn't have played back at him off of yes. that stack depth pre-flop. Yes. I mean, they definitely might not. So now he now he can maybe, I I don't know, but he might rule out some hands that are beating him from this value range. Maybe he's making it more two pair plus, a lot of flushes. Obviously nine eight, can't be king queen. He's blocking that anyways. The king of diamonds is a very relevant blocker against flushes. I mean, a lot of King X suited defend preflop. So this is this is a tough spot. You know, what's bluffing? Maybe some low straight draws that missed. 
maybe even like a five, right? A, f a five could definitely bluff here. It's just, it's one of Alex's worst hands and real realistically speaking has zero showdown value. Maybe even like a seven. So. Well, Devor is chewing on it for clear reasons as he's trying to construct the hands that fall to kings. And you see the lips in motion there as he works through it. Index finger. Like, Counting. it's possible that with the king of diamonds, this is like a better bluff catcher than like ace. Like if he had like ace, for sure like ace six of clubs. Because ace six of clubs actually blocks bluffs with the six. And I think the king of diamonds is a more relevant blocker than like an ace is. So, yeah, I, I mean, I know it looks like his hand isn't that strong, but I think it's like a pretty good bluff catcher actually. So, um... You know, it's it's totally reasonable that he's thinking about how this, and how many in my opinion, left? even if he calls, okay, just a tough so spot. Three left, right? Shredding time banks, but not chips in the form of a call, is Devoris thus far. I stick you in that seat, Rast. You click and call. I don't know, man. I'm probably doing the same thing as him. I'm working things out. I'm looking right. at my guy. I'm, I'm seeing if there's any reads throughout the pot. Did I feel like he was on a draw or not when he called me on the flop? You know, it's, it's that type of thing. Like, the thing with bluff catchers is, from an EV perspective, it sort of doesn't matter what he chooses. So what I do, it's like I, I can't give you an answer. I would be very tempted to call, but I, I might or might not, depending on, I don't know, feeling... <laughs>Welcome back to continuing coverage of the Triton Super High Roller Series from here in Jeju Island, South Korea. Ali Najad, Brian Rast with you. When we last left you about 10 minutes back, it was with four remaining here in the 25K GG Millions. And if you missed it or you're just joining us, let's dive right in and give you a look at the landscape just about two minutes removed from the resumption of play. Mario Mosbach, the shortest of all stacks. Adrian Chua right down there with him. 12 million and 10.6 respectively. Alex Theologis, center field, 18 bigs. And then you got the Sergio Ido show, dare I call it. 36 bigs, a two to one chip lead over the remainder of the field with the blinds going to 500 and 1,000 Rasty. The setup continues to be a good one for Sergio. Oh, certainly, yeah. And I think we're starting to get to the point where we can call it the Sergio Ido show. You know, I mean, it, it's got some internal rhyme. It flows. Let's go, Sergio. It's your time. It's your show. You know, I don't know. Let's let's ride with it. We'll 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 work it out. We're, there's kinks, but we're getting there. Rasty. Yeah. Did you just drop the very first ever freestyle rap at a Triton desk? I, I think you did it. You know, I try to work in completely random things that nobody's <laughs> expecting from time to time just so i just don't like to be pigeonholed you know yeah no listen i respect it my like, friend you know, will likes to call me the math guy but you know what there's there's more going on there's numbers and everything okay <laughs> i get around all right eight mile listen here we go uh you talk about things that we're going to expect caginess given that you and mosbach are down their level um yeah, you know, there is a lot of incentive for one of them to kind of let the other one go out at the same time, try to win chips. Like you said, it's this intricate dance where it, you, and a lot of it also is going to be based on your cards, right? Like, so, you know, what opportunities will my cards give me? What do I think about what other people are doing? Is there anything I can take advantage of? But yes, definitely there'll be some interplay there. Okay. So we dive right in. GG Poker, official chip counts. Payouts, by the way, 573,000 on lockup. 707,000, the jump if you can work your way into third. We're talking about $134,000. Not at all insignificant as you look at those payouts brought to you by betacr.eu. The chunkiest portion of the 7.6 we collected, of course, the only seven-figure payout, one and a half million up top for first. We're talking about, you know, $900,000 between here and there. In inspired by the music. Got that bass line. I mean, 
You I dropped a freestyle rest. Yeah. That was incredible. I don't know what's in those RAR bars, but, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and the coffee, and, you know, I'm just fully engaged in my lane, ready to go. Lather, uh, unbothered, yeah, lathered, lathered, what is it? <laughs> fully engaged in my lane. Yeah. King 5 offsuit here for Adrian. Ooh, and blinds have gone up. Yes. I mean, this is this is a hand that you might want to play now. It, this is a dicey way to play it here because <laughs> you raise it up, you give your opponent a chance to come along. In this particular case, I guess if he had jammed, he would have ran into some bad news yeah. and been in a bad spot. Of so course. it ended up saving him. The open was piled on by Ido's pair. Did you see Thomas Miller? <laughs> <laughs> on the rail, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> you guys had to try, you know? <laughs> yes. With a little bit of FT diplomacy here, uh, jockeying for it's immunity. A <laughs> bad spot for Chua. Yeah, when you get to this spot, you want to be able to like open jam when it's folded to you and you're small blind, but then you have the chip leader who can like call you for chips, you know, as opposed to one of these other guys who is going to call tighter and fold more because uh, they have the ICM pressure on calling that many chips. Yeah, so tough, sp tough spot that will just keep coming up for Adrian Chua. No. And again, Shane Ido, just no resistance. Yeah. Like no one has a hand ever. And he just gets to run o over. It's b it's kind of a thing of beauty. I mean, look, they might have hands. It would take such good hands, though, to really want to tussle with them here. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think. I think Theologus doesn't need too much of a hand to call there. He needs a hand. Pretty good hand, yeah. But maybe like top five percent. Me. Look, Alex isn't looking for excuses to play pots or take flops with Ido at present. If the deck forces him into it, I think obviously. Oh, certainly. You know, in it goes. But other than that, I think really he's looking at the difference between, let's say, fourth and second place money. Rast, yeah, look at the which side. if he can just warm yeah. attrition his way into it ahead of Mosbach oh, and Chua, <laughs> he would be happy to pick up. Instead, Chua, Jam, King-9 suited and take. Yeah, I think Ido is probably ripping like any two cards versus Theologus in that blind versus blind spot. I mean, you, you could try to make the strategy more diverse with maybe like 3xing some of your very best hands and some of your weak weakest hands but it's it's like in any two card pip spot i think and he said suited certainly worthy i don't think this is strong enough to like like min raise yeah just rip interesting because as we listen to those words, they feel strange. Not strong enough to min-raise. But the point here is the min-raise beckons action. Yeah. Whereas the all-in happens with the weaker part of the range that doesn't want to necessarily. Or in this case, just like most of his range is yeah. going to end up ripping. But yeah, he's going to take some of his very best stuff in min-raise and maybe some of his weakest of opens <laughs> and, and, I love it. <laughs> and you use that to balance. Uh, feeling card competition. Because, <laughs> like, he does want to, like, if he gets, if Sergio gets aces, kings, queens, ace, king suited, ace, king, you know, these type of hands, he actually wants someone to rip over his so open with, like, or he wants it's action, it's right? Yeah. And yeah. then, yeah. so that, then that no, drives, like, said, well, you need to have, like, something that you're balancing that with so that you're not just nutted or bladed every time you min raise. So then you take your very worst hands 13. that you hate getting called oh, with. Okay. Right. And balance it out there. Right. <clears throat> when you, when you, the, like your worst hands to open jam, rather. Queen Jack offsuit on Mozbox button. I'm all in. He's gonna open jam. 
Let's see if Ido is interested. No. Rail loves <laughs> it. Fist bumps here. These three guys surrounding Ido right now are in an involuntarily abusive relationship. <laughs> they can't leave. They just have to take the punishment from Ido as it stands. Yeah, that's a a bit a good analogy, a bit dark. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. You're right. But you're you're on. <laughs> yeah, you're spot on. It's a window into perhaps my romantic resume <laughs> throughout the years. Not as necessarily the issuer of these sorts of things, but you know, I've had anyway. Pocket tens. We'll we'll leave that one. <laughs> I'm on it. Mosbach. Happy to rip it. Ace nine, Chua. Glancing down undoubtedly at the Triton Poker Plus app for a real time glimpse at the chip counts. It's a pretty good hand, but I think with the risk premium, I think it's I think it's not one you want to gamble with here being the second one in calling. Sorry. Oh, I cannot look at the app during that. Oh, okay. Sorry. <clears throat> We've finished doing it. I think you. this is uh, a spot you, you want to yeah. pass. Yeah. If, yeah. if it was folded to yeah. him, he's ripping that himself. But not calling Mario in front okay. as the rip going all in from the cutoff. So we're going to play. Oh. Oh, Theologus wakes up with queens. Now he covers Whoa. both stacks. That's he says good. call. They're both all in already. Slightly on the side will be Mozbox tens against the Queens. <laughs> the bulk of everything uh, in baby. the middle. Okay, Chua I have for 28.4. Look what we have here. GG. <laughs> Theo just is pretty happy right now. I mean, he could punch a ticket to a heads up date I'm with Ido here. Unless <laughs> the tenor of the ace that is true, yeah. comes through. For the time being. And the flop. Jack, 8-6. Queens still in front, and the margin is wide. Let's see the impact of the turn. Oh, oh my goodness. A 10 rolling right off. Note, by the way, okay. that straight draws loom. Theologus wants the nine. Chua would take the seven or the queen. Obviously, blocker effects for both. What a card. The craziest turn card you could have picked. Lost box rail saying hold, yeah! and he has held. Yeah! Elated. High fives all around. Not to be overshadowed, though. The loss of Adrian Chua, who I think earned quite a bit of respect here as a Triton first-timer, working his way into the top four. Rasty, the payout for Adrian, not at all negligible. 573000 And look at the sportsmanship. Obviously, you know it's deflating. But you come over. Alex, not thrilled either. But he will fight on, whereas Adrian will not. Chua, notching one for the Singaporean delegation. 500, 73,000, and now 707,000 on lockup for the remaining three. That's true. And the shortest of stacks is what Alex Theologius yeah, will be left with. Stone cold turn there. Yeah, absolutely correct. Wow, and Mario's journey here is reminding me a little bit of David Peters. Just the David Peters in this last tournament was just short, short, surviving, surviving, and then eventually started to build up some chips and uh, ended up coming in second at the final table. Yes, now, slithered. Yeah, not as something up. as spectacular as this hand, I don't think happened with Peters. This hand was a, 
pretty spectacular occurrence. But yeah, no, just slithered short. Yep, and ended up second, like against all odds. And Mario not only it set you. came in as the short stack to the final not table. Came it. in today as the not short dark. stack. <laughs> <and> <laughs> it's done the same thing. Nice, mm -hmm. huh? Sure, it's fine. Thirty-two million. Guys, you're drawing dead. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that Alex can make light of the situation. Obviously, he knows this isn't the product of anything that he did wrong. The frustration is still something that's tough to dodge, but he's been at it long enough, not necessarily in the live streets, but in the online streets. He knows the cookie crumbles in this way, both in your favor and against it at times. Four big blinds, though, and let's see whether or not he can slither. As Ido wakes up to an ace on the button, we rage on three-handed. Upstairs he takes us. Pocket sixes for Alex. He'll jam. Just another one and three quarter million. Mosbach comfortably out of the way with the queen eight. Ido flicks in the call and we're off to the races. Advantage quite strong for Alex. Could there be a slight rebate in store? Yeah, another good spot for Alex. Just has to fade an ace, more or less. And he's done just that. I mean, pretty solid flop there. Jack 9-4 as the advantage grows to 85% for Theologus. King on the turn, and all he needs to do is fade Barry. That being an ace on the river. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, bro. The cheap roll. Just when I thought we were maybe putting that behind us here at Jeju 2024, Barry comes back and says, no, I, I'm not done. And he had a shower wand in hand on this occasion as Alex Theologis goes from Queens v. Tens versus Ace-9. Booked his date with Ido, then the nasty turn. Mosbach doubles, showers Chua, and now sixes against the Ace tray. Barry on the end. And it's down to heads up between Mario and Sergio. Obviously, it's been a wonderful Jeju stop thus far for Theologius. He is going to collect $707,000 for his efforts, and he will be adding that, of course, to the results that he's already notched here at this festival. Not at all negligible. His tally of 159000 he was three for four coming into this one. Now four for five has failed to make the money on only one occasion, clearly on form, but the deck hath chosen violence, Rasty. Yeah, I mean, you just can't stop running good. You know, I think I think he was the recipient of the big flip with Jax earlier uh, when I said that, what's his name? Yeah, Amiri lost. You know, Amiri had a, was a pretty big chip leader with a couple tables left. Um, you know, worked that up, made, played well. I mean, nothing wrong with anything. In fact, it seemed like he played great, made a lot of good decisions, but you just can't survive some of these beats and keep going. I mean, these guys don't have a lot of chips, so you got to win your all-ins. Yeah. And you definitely can't win, you can't lose the one where you're all in. Decent amount of chips, though, remaining for the two yep. guys that are going to find themselves heads up. 47 bigs for Sergio Ido, 30 bigs for Mario Mosbach, and when we return, it will be heads up between those two for the title in the 25K GG Millions. Keep it close. Back in a few. Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. 
Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all new betacr.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Just sees the wonder. Jeju Shinwa World. The metal of some goats, and when you first enter, kind of the the Triton Arena, it does stand alone in many respects, in terms of the cachet, the prestige, and oh, just the sheer buy difficulty. Size. Yeah, buy in size, oh. all of it. It can cause you potentially to question some things, you know, you break out first one, you come in, maybe you break out another and you're going, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. Yeah, I'm just saying these are natural sort of dark alleyways that we find ourselves in as Ido finds himself with pocket fives up against an Adams jam, blind versus blind, a call all in rather, forgive me. How will the ace eight perform? Well. Not great, Not but can enough. counterfeit the fives yeah. <laughs> on the king-10-10 ten, ten board. We add kings to the immediate outs. Now we add a jack okay. as well. Better. You see Adams. And a queen. Yes. Third ten, you not the me? one, though, as it takes a second, but... We realize that is not a counterfeiting development. Tens full of fives for it's Ido. One, and the board pair. Yeah. Is that yeah. mine? <laughs> End of the road. For yeah. Canada's Tim Adams. Yeah, well played, Tim. Uh, Triton legend. Yep. Cash for so much here. Yeah, you know, touching back on what you said, I think there's two. Well, hang on one oh. second. Just to give Tim his moment, 13 yeah. and a half million in career Triton earnings. This is 17th cash. Will not pick up his third title. as the second time he finds the money here in five attempts in Jeju. Obviously haven't seen the last of him. There's Adams 
can go no further and leaves behind five to do battle here in the 25K GG Millions Live. And Rasty, you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim O'Neill Ido, it's not going to be so easy this time. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to show you can weather the storm a little bit. So now a pot where the chip leaders folded and we get to see which of these remaining three gentlemen wants to pick up some chips. Theologus with a pretty weak hand, but he has the most chips of the remaining players and might view this as a spot to to try to chip up. Put some pressure on the two shortest stacks in the tournament. Jack four suited the responsible kit for the aggression from the button of a newly minted 15 million chip stack coming into this one for the Greek. Devoris. Clear call. Queen seven suited. Agreement. Just solid hand, good price. How about this flop? The jack connecting with Theologus, the diamonds with Devoris. Interest will be maintained by both parties in a 4.4 million chip exchange. Yeah, Theologus with a decision here if he wants to see bet or uh, check back. Kind of both have some merits. And he decides to come with tiny bet. And again, Devoris with another decision. It's not to fold. It's to decide whether or not to just call or to raise. And if he raises, does he do any one. sizing other than all in? Oh, yeah, he does come with the check raise. I think I started with It's a jam. 5. Alex asked for the count and then, you know, says, I think I'm calling just to kind of ensure that there isn't any unsavory takeaway. Yeah, you, you five, can't bet the five, flop. Five, eight, five, eight, seven, five. Oh, yeah. The call? Oh, yep. All right. Alex says call. Shows the jacks and the eights. Devoris draws to the queen or the diamond. No, I mean, of course you should ask for a count. It's a pretty fair fight. A pseudo flip. Six as we've coined it. Point three million chips. The coin weighted somewhat heavily toward Theologus. Four on the turn, and we remove the four of diamonds from Devoris's outs. Can he connect? Right, GG. No. Okay. A six on the river, and Double D gave it all he had. But in the end, left to claim fifth place here in the 25K GG Millions Live. That fifth place finish good will game. be good for 400. And 52,000 <laughs> as Alex ascending. Doubled Mosbach up and then hasn't looked back pretty much since. <laughs> and for divorce, that I don't get it. nearly <laughs> half a million chip payout will bring him up. Is it a new and over that $11 million, million dollars no, it's just, it's a in career go in Triton <laughs> earnings. So Denied you, his win. third title as the Canadians have both been ushered out of the arena. 31st cash, third here in Jeju. Certainly we've not seen the last of Dan Devoris. He plays them all. And he's gonna get some time to hang out. Maybe reset here. There's still plenty of events and opportunities left for Daniel on the docket. You're on. <laughs> yeah, you're spot on. It's a window into perhaps my romantic resume <laughs> throughout the years. Not as necessarily the issuer of these sorts of things, but, you know, I've had, anyway, pocket tens. We'll, we'll leave that one. <laughs> I'm on it. Mosbach. Happy to rip it. He's nine, Chua. Glancing down, undoubtedly, at the Triton Poker Plus app for a real-time glimpse at the chip counts. It's a pretty good hand, but 
I think with the risk premium, I think it's I think it's not one you want to gamble with here being the second one in calling. Oh, I cannot look at the app during that. Oh, okay. Sorry. We finished doing it. I think you. This is a spot you you want to pass. If if it was folded to him, he's ripping that himself. But not calling Mario in front as the rip going all in from the cutoff. So we're gonna play. Oh, oh Theologius oh. wakes up with queens. Now he covers both stacks. He says call, they're both all in already. Slightly on the side will be Mozbox tens against the queens. The bulk of everything in the middle. Chua for 28.4, look what we have here. GG. Theologius is pretty happy right now. I mean, he... Well, you, but well, I'm on the beatbox now. <laughs> okay, I thought you were going to freestyle. <laughs> Welcome back to continuing coverage of the Triton Super High Roller Series here from Jeju yeah. Island. I thought I was going to get you there, Rasty. Two players oh, remaining. Oh, I'm slippery. <laughs> from the They've six been trying for years. <laughs> that we began with. Uh, Timothy Adams, Dan DeVoris, Adrian Chua, Alex Theologis. The latter two, obviously, it was a bit of a savage situation that you saw unfold here. If you're just joining us, worth going back and taking a peek at. Obviously something I think those two would sooner forget. 10 on the turn, Mario Mosbach ascending up the leaderboard and now finding his way across the felt for all the marbles as we dive into the Triton Poker Plus app. 1.485 million up top, 944 on lockup right now. And you see the chip counts over there. Mosbach, all it's going to take is a pot or two and now all of a sudden we're playing level stack sit and go, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, you know... Doing a lot of these final tables, these guys are a little bit deeper than I'm, I'm used to recently, especially at least at Triton Jeju here. Uh, 30 big blinds minimum. I don't think I've seen a heads up in the ones I've done so far where they're as deep as this. You know, average stack, nearly 40 blinds. So, you know, it could take a while, especially if they're playing slow, doing a lot of limping, trying to play post flop, which has been a common theme, I feel like, in some of these heads up matches, you know. And uh, I think a lot of that was the product of the, as you alluded to, that, that crazy hand. I mean, three-way all-in, kind Queens, of bonkers. Tens, ace, nine. Yeah, and whew, I mean, what a turn card. Like, that turn card just came from space in order to make the river the most interesting possible. Now, all of a sudden, like, everybody can win, right? Yeah. Yeah. You ever watch one of those game shows where they have the big oversized playing cards? When turn cards like that roll off, I just kind of envision a massive tile just being delivered to like an oversized flop yep. board kind of situation. So then, just shy of 30 million chips is Mozbach. Blinds of 501 million, also worthy of note. We're gonna be playing a flat 12 hands per blind level. That's a phenomenon associated with the GG Millions live events in particular. So there is no, you know, slow it down, somehow force the shorter stack into larger blinds type of setup. I've just been handed something here, Rasty, and I don't know whether or not this changes anything, but a deal has been struck, apparently, during the break. You know, I'm not surprised about that because I, I thought right before we faded away, I'm pretty sure I saw Ido come up to Mosbach and, and it sound, my, my read, it looked, I almost felt like I heard something or read the lips that he was asking about a deal. So anyway, no, please continue. All right, button open 2.2, Ido defense, King Jack 6 board here. He shouldn't be interested. Mosbach with the gutter. Mario is going to lock up $1.131 million of the prize pool. Ido accepting $1.23, let's call it $8 million, and they're going to play for a 60K save. So obviously these guys content to just take this chunky top two payout and carve it up in accordance with, you know, the chip advantage for Ido. Not sure if it's fully ICM the distribution but nevertheless it's I, enough for both of them to be happy it, it isn't 
I don't know. I, I'm un, I'm unsure. It's Would 120 k advantage. I'll show you the the paper here. Well, I so there is no ICM with two players left. It would just be but a I mean chip, chip chop. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, chip chop. Okay, I mean he's getting a hundred thousand more, and he, you know, he has a significant chip. I, I, I have no idea. It, it looks like it's in the realm of being a chip chop. Right. I yeah. don't know if it was direct, but nevertheless, uh, it seems like both guys plan for sixty. Happy to yeah, just make it a sixty k sit and go from this point forward. Yeah, and uh, the kind of cool part. Two solid seven-figure scores for the for the boys, right? Yeah. Yeah. Playing for 60 dimes, not at all negligible. You know that they're still going to go hard. You know, and the Triton title, the trophy, the glory. Two trophies, Rast. Two trophies. And there's oh. a look at the second of them. I like that one, by the way. That's the kind that if you have, like, a big desk in your office, instead of, like, the nameplate, you just put the GG Millions thing in front of there, you know? You're yeah. Like, yeah. That's Mr. GG Millions to you. Hopefully nobody breaks that trophy, Rast. Those that might have missed it. Ras talked about his favorite trophy in his case, sustaining <laughs> yeah. some damages. Now then, damages could be what's in store for this 2.2 million chip open as Ido wakes up to 210. Seven million eight. Yeah, up Ooh. we go. Uncomfortable spot for a six offsuit here. I mean, it's it's just kind of around that range of a hand. Probably getting folded, but like could defend it. You could four bet it, but yeah, no, I think it's very reasonable fold. It, it's it's like annoying having a hand that good and then folding it, and but uh, ends up making a good fold. Well, now through the thirty-first. The folks over at GG are running World Series of Poker Super Circuit. Head on over and get involved. And for me personally, what I want to see you get involved in is the Triton Qualifiers. The only site where you can qualify for our Triton events officially is GG Poker. Plenty to sink your teeth into. Head on over and pay them a visit today. suited against 8-5, limp pot pre, Osbach, the bad end of the gutter, Sergio, the good end, best hand, backdoor spades, and an idea. I, I don't, this hand is just maybe a little bit too weak, like, Wow, call, okay. Disagreements from Mosbach, Rasty, surprisingly if so. Well, I think, I mean, he, yes, you can hit a 10, maybe make a pair. It, perhaps it's enough for a third pot's not too, too small, but I mean, he's going to end up having to bluff here quite a bit. Otherwise, like, you, you're not check calling this with ideas of, only getting there. Yeah, getting there somehow and, and, and making that work out. Like now, Ido has gotten there in the form of top pair here. Third club, though, and a four-liner on board, and he is still sprinkling. 1.5. Relieved, of course, to see the fold from Mosbach. Yeah, I w that's very likely going to be a bet turn check back river type of line with, with a board. You know, one card straight, flush available. If 
I had to guess, I would say Mosbach had a Lego set or two in his <laughs> youth. Just, you know, stack yeah. assembly. Yeah, and then the 5, 4, 3, well, doesn't quite have enough chips, but. He's working on it. Yeah. Give him time. Queen Jack played as a limp, dominating Queen Deuce. Three deuce and the domination is Ido's now as he connects with the side card and slips it to Mario. Wow. Trip deuces now for Sergio. Doesn't rate to be the kind of hand that Mosbox particularly interested in. So Mario checking this back means his range is going to be very weighted towards unpaired hands here. Probably doesn't check 8x very much and you know, 3s get get mixed quite a bit but prob probably leaning towards bet. So trying to get value here from like ace and king highs, maybe Obviously, diamonds is, is going to call. But maybe a pot size bet is a bit much for Queen Jack to want to go for the ride here. Yeah. Three million. Take it. Had so Mario good. checked back an eight or a three, it clearly. 26, you play now? I, he would not you play have like 26. It. Yeah, uh, yes. Well, had a chromosome going a different way, I would be Ali as opposed to Ali. You know, just hypotheticals. Yeah. Hypothetical. It's one of the f more enjoyable excursions for me in the booth. Not particularly attractive holdings for either here. And you sort of thought that maybe we would see the limpy pot control sort of. Yeah. Let's just play post flop. It seems approach. to be what a lot of these, th th the pros are choosing in these heads up spots. Is there a reason behind that that you are aware of? Is it something that's a recent development? Is it just a, a theme kind of uh, as trends come and go? I think it's more recent in the sense that limping in general preflop is is a bit more of a recent phenomenon okay. than it, than it used to be, and then because guys are are incorporating limping ranges more or more used to doing it, it seems like an uh, increased number are choosing in these heads up spots to do that in order to maybe just play post flop, kind of max like max increase the number of hands, lower the variance as much as you reasonably can. Eight high y you would to the turn bet. You would think that sometimes maybe only one player would want to do that and the other wouldn't, but it seems like it's something that quite often both players want to do, right? So like both players are, I want to play post-flop with the other guy, keep pot small, lower, lower pre-flop variants. Well, who is more inclined to want to do that? Right now, Ido with a near two to one chip lead over Mario. No, I, I, I'm Who, not. Uh, just in terms of, uh, yes, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But if I'm looking out here at this setup specifically, as we see the blinds going up to 600,000, 1.2 million, is it the shorter stack if there's a good gap between the two of them? Oh, that's I It's going to want to embrace the lower variance or is it I don't it think that matters. At all? No, what I think, no, because there's no ICM. I think what matters for this would be, you know, who thinks they play better post-flop, who's, who's better with ranges in that regard maybe more of a quote-unquote cash game player it would be an easy way to categorize it or just you know someone that's likes the post-flop streets as opposed to the the pre-flop decision making right but but 
I found pretty consistently. I mean, I don't know. You, you've seen this too. That yeah. in general, a lot of these guys are, are doing that. They are indeed. So, but we're not going to be doing that on this occasion, says Ido, as his dominant nine, alongside a suited ace, takes us upstairs to three point eight. No limping on his watch this time. And Mario will release the offsuit one gapper. In terms of Triton resumes between these two, Rast, it's four and a half million in earnings for Mosbach, who first joined us in Vietnam in 2023 in a very splashy manner. He went three for five, didn't find a final table, but deep runs. Tenth in the GG Super Millions, the event he's playing right now, made 81,000. Eleventh in the 30K 8 Max, made 100 dimes. Fourteenth in the 50K 8 Max, 111,000. And just kind of announced himself and then popped over to Cyprus and Monte Carlo, missed him in London. 0 for 4 coming into this one was Mario, who has one title. That came in Monte Carlo in the 40K Mystery Bounty, which is happening elsewhere in the room right now. This is his eighth cash. Ido limping the Queen 7, dominating once more. Dust for Mario. Who He's had a pretty good cash rate so far, it looks like. Yeah. Pretty solid. Ido, on the other hand, looking at his resume, 3.9 million roughly in career. Triton earnings eight caches, has not yet earned a title. He first joined us all the way back in the Philippines in 2016, where he notched two third place finishes in two attempts, then a fourth and a second in 2017 in the Philippines in two attempts. Final tables a plenty for Sergio but no title yet. Might this be the day? Yeah, I mean, he, in the first, he was four for four in his first four tournaments he played in Triton in the Philippines, looks and, like. And all six all of his first eight event caches yeah. were all FTs. All FTs, yeah, pretty wild, pretty strong. Not so strong is seven high on this run out here, which has been checked down, limped pretty. hand with no showdown, one of his weakest hands. He decides to bluff for pot and gets queen high to fold. So nice little move and shake by Mario there. Little smile. <laughs> Just happy he got away with one. Sure. And uh, fun little spot. Heads up. Neither has their Triton title playing for the first. If I was going to summarize it, it would maybe go something like this. On the left, we have Ido. On the right, our man Mario in the center. GG bringing its own trophy. And the real question is between these two, who's going to get that glory? I don't even know where I came with that from, but. Yeah, but thanks. No, it's. <laughs> I'm your man, Rasty. Jack three suited on the button, Osbach. Took us upstairs to 2.7. Ido maintained interest with Queen High Diamonds. Neither player connecting on the two spade, two seven, and a king texture. 6.6 .6 in the middle. Two 
says Mario as a follow-up act. Note the peel here from Sergio. This isn't simply on the might of Queen High and backdoor diamonds, of course, right. but rather fishing for future opportunities, maybe a window to open. No, I, I, I think it kind of is on, on the equity of just yeah, that. Yeah, just sheer raw power of that? Yeah, it, 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 listen. He connects with the four, by the way. Already had the best hand. Very wide ranges. Mm -hmm. Queen high might be good, and we got backdoor diamonds. I, I think it's just, you know, small bet size. You've got to defend pretty wide. You can't... So there, there's this concept in, in poker um, of called minimum defense frequency, mm -hmm. and the idea is that, 5 5. you know, given the size of your opponent's bet, you, you sort of need to defend enough hands and without getting into any technicalities of it, but just when the bet size is small and that, that bet size was as small as possible, like I believe it was less than quarter pot or something, right? Y you have to start digging down and queen high and backdoor diamonds, in my opinion, just kind of more than makes the cut. It w that, that would have been a bad fold. So j yeah, just on those properties. Wow. Mosbach second barrel of 5.5 in spite of a decent form of improvement for Ido convinces him to lay down. Yeah, now see, this is another spot there where what I would say is yes versus a pretty sizable turn barrel. Sergio is not really doing, he's, he's definitely behind any kind of value oriented hands, which would at that point be like King X or maybe trip sevens. Mm -hmm. He is still ahead of draws. Draws probably have a decent amount of equity versus him. Probably two overs plus maybe, you know, spades. Okay. All that said, again, if he's folding anything worse than a king himself, he's folding a lot there. Maybe he thinks Mario isn't that big of a bluffer, but so far it looks like Mario. Yeah. He likes his bluffing. Oh, I mean, we've basically seen him just bluff twice in a row. It's so. within him. Yeah, so I mean... Uh, and must be, by the way, to be a successful heads-up player, no yeah, doubt. No, sure. I, I'm i just saying that Sergio's fold there was a little bit on the tight side, I think. And, you know, maybe he doesn't think Mario 4. 8. barrels a lot or bluffs that much. Right. But clearly so far, Mario has been quite quite active, we can see. And, and this is an interesting contrast because Mario was very kind of uh, reserved, not getting out of line at all. Like, well-moisturized, balanced, <laughs> calm, staying in his lane the entire final <laughs> table. But now that they're heads up, he's kind of unleashed the inner animal. And maybe Sergio had enough there because he just limp-shoved the ace-5. You could very well be right about that. And yeah. I don't know about you, but when I'm holding that near 2-1 to one chip lead for a moment there, and all of a sudden it is the shorter stack who appears to be taking on the role of aggressor, it just sits with me. A little bit. That's what they're playing for. In addition to the 60K save here in the 25K GG Millions, which has minted not one but two millionaires, courtesy of a deal made between Sergio Ido and Mario Mosbach heading into heads up play. Ali Najad and Brian Rass joining you from the Landing Casino here at. Jeju Shinwa World, South Korea. These guys are 20 big blinds effective. Cause they're only as deep as Mario's stack. Just 20 blinds, and he comes with limp here. And uh, we'll see a flop. Sergio's hand is dominated. The queen would be bad news for him. Multiple occasions on which, in recent memory, these guys have shared a card, and obviously that makes for potentially bad outcomes for the dominated party. Not so much here as Jack Six Deuce is on Mosbach. This one he played as a limp, by the way. Yeah, but th these guys opened up a little bit. There's been some some raise. I, I feel like in some of the previous heads up matches there was li literally no raise getting played, but but these guys have deviated a little bit. So it looks like they're taking a mixed strategy. Sure. Wow. Now trips. For Mosbach as Ido tore one off. Yeah. And even though that card isn't isn't a bad one for Sergio, his hand is 
so weak. It's kind of one of the weakest defends on the flop that it is probably hard for him to continue versus a barrel here, which is very likely coming. Mario has a big hand. He would love to win a big pot, especially against about just about anything, but like a six, for example. But um, yeah, Ido, Ido's not going to be able to go farther with this. He's going to have a lot, a lot more strong hands to continue with on the turn. But in this case, it's good for him that he didn't have one of those. Six million turn back. Thank you. Yes. Mosbach winning a good chunk of the recent exchanges between these two. And we take a moment to remind you that our good folks over at PokerStake.com is where you can get in on the action as you're watching these Triton Super High Roller series. Why not pick a player to take a journey with all rake and transaction fee free with guaranteed winnings. Really no arguments against heading over to pokerstake.com and getting a taste. Some of our Triton regulars, by the way, they're over there on PokerStake selling action. Next event on the menu would have been the 50K. No limit. That'll be happening along with the 40K mystery bounty. You see 6-5 deuce. How about that flop? Mario. And a limped one pre. Pair in the flush draw. Slips it to Sergio. Yeah. Quick D check back. Now a gutter for Sergio on the turn. And this rates to be an interesting pot now with Mario. I mean, we can clearly see how strong his hand is and his equity lockdown here at 84%. But Sergio, with just enough to make some moves, get some designs on this pot, I mean, I, in my opinion, this is clearly a spot he's going to barrel. Um, 10 high, a gutter to the nuts, two overs to the flop. Yeah, this, this is like a mandatory bet. And uh, yeah, Mario is most certainly going nowhere. Um, this doesn't feel like a hand he's he's going to raise. Wouldn't be shocked. Sho I'd be mildly surprised, but not shocked. I mean, the thing is, this is just kind of a nice bluff catcher here. He can even just call River on the strength of his king five and the fact his opponent checked and little bit deceptive oh. and here's why it's deceptive because given the way he played this he doesn't have a ton of flushes a lot of his flushes would have bet or done something before this so this looked like an innocent two liter of diet coke and suddenly the river dropped a mento into the bottle and the eight of diamonds gives mosbach a king high flush 10 high straight for Sergio, 8.4 in the middle, and there will be blood, Rasty. I, I think Mario's going to check this and probably go for check raise. Okay, he's not. Interesting, but he's choosing a small sizing here. So this is an interesting spot for Sergio. When he goes like half pot, like Mario is hoping he gets raised, he can do this with some some, you know, eights up, nines up type hands, and definitely a seven, all of which Sergio's beating because he has 10 seven. So Sergio can find a class of hands that Mario's doing this for value with, which is the main class, not the traps. 10 million eight hundred. Yeah, and he's raising here to charge those hands. The unfortunate news is he's gonna find out at some point, we'll see if Mario does some time bank acting or whatever, that it's gonna be for all of Mario's chips. And, and this is that unfortunate spot where you're raising for value only to find out that you're now bluff catching when your opponent comes back over the top. Well, let's recreate things. It was a limp from Sergio preflop with the 10-7 off. Check, 10-7 off. Check back from Mario. 6-5 deuce. It went check, check. Turn. Sergio picked up the gutter. He was the betting party as Mario slipped it to him. 2.4 got check called by Mosbach. Now he leads for the 3.4. And Ido saying diamonds 
are not what I think I'm up against here, making it look like 10.8, and now it's just a matter of time before the full 20 million is unloaded. Yeah, I mean, I don't, Sergio, I, I don't think he's ruling out diamonds. It's just that his hand is strong enough that he's beating a large class of hands that Mario might be donking with there mm. for like not that big a size on the river. But now after this point, he no longer thinks he might not be up against the flush because Mario's really his only value hand at this point is a flush. So, and probably not a really small flush. So it, it's biggish flushes or a bluff. And there are bluffs. For example, a hand Mario could be bluffing with would be like, let's say he went for value with nine five off with the f nine of diamonds. Okay. And then he got raised to 10, to 10, mi 10 11 million. Yeah. That hand is not beating any value that Ido has. Right. And now he's like, well, I'm going to take a hand here that's no longer beating any value. I was value betting, but I'm not beating any value. I have the nice nine of diamonds blocker, and I'm going to rebluff with it. You know, stuff like that is all, like, when Sergio's thinking about the hands, like, that's what he's thinking about that he's beating. He doesn't think about it all that long, though, as he finds the right fold. And we always anticipate that this behavior from Mosbach is not in association with just a naked seven, Rast? Spicy. No, no. Oh, right. could, yeah, Mosbach no. could sometimes have a naked seven behaving that way. Never, right? No, I, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, maybe a. I don't think he does that with a seven. I mean, you could you could maybe come out with like ace seven with the ace of diamonds that he's to re, but he's rebluffing. Right. Right. Yeah. Just trying to make sure he doesn't chop against another nine high straight, and maybe as we saw, get a ten high straight to mug. Using the ace or like king of diamonds as, as like the blocker, and I don't even know. That's like kind of wild, but yeah, I mean, a seven is really pushing it in terms of value. Are there any diamond flushes? Even the smallest of diamond flushes could Sergio fold there? I, I think Sergio's calling all flushes. All flushes. Okay. Just because now that Mario's repping a flush. You have the best hand in terms of block blockers. You have right. two diamonds yourself. Right. You know, right. you know, even if it's a, let's say, a really really small flush, and you're like, well, I might not might not be ahead of value at this point, but, you know, you have great blockers. So I, I don't think a flush is getting folded. Jack eight three board here as we proceed with Mosbach in the chip lead for the first time, by about ten million. Limped again pre flop, and again the advantages for Mario are clear. That call of 1.2. Board pairing Jack on the turn, which gives Ido the backdoor flush draw, one of the things that he was seeking, and it's the dominant variety. But Mosbach currently still in the lead. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of an action card here because Sergio was taking this off with about a, as light of a hand as he could have on the flop. Just the queen backdoor clubs um and so he he's obviously going to be out without improving on pretty much any turn barrel we literally just saw a hand really just like this on the paired jack on the turn where he defended with queen eight off suit and then snap folded on the turn but now he's picked up a big draw and a club on the river is going to be fireworks ladies and, ladies and gentlemen there's not many left only seven 15 million in the middle after that four and a half was check called by Sergio. He comes up empty. Double check. paired now is the board. Queen high on its back as Mario checks back with no hesitation that 7-8. Yeah, and the reason why is because mm. he bet almost pot on the turn. And after betting that large a bet size, there's really no value with his hand in eight with a kicker a bad, you know, a small kicker. Right. At this point, it's like if we're ahead, my opponent might not call me. There's a lot of hands that are beating me, so we're just getting to showdown here. Yeah. So power of position because he gets to do that when it's checked to him.
at 33, it's right? It's really I don't know. come <laughs> undone for Sergio. A two to one chip dog I'm, now. And yeah, yeah. in the chat, notice some that were curious to observe how he responds 28. to no okay. longer having the chip lead. So, how are the stacks? Raise and take here. You had 25 stand before. Only? <laughs> By the way, you know, it's it's innocent little raise and take, but sometimes in terms of game flow, just something to disrupt the freight train effect, you know, the seeming onslaught from Mosbach, which has gone uninterrupted, can be centering. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he did it with, like, an interesting hand, like a, a pretty good hand, but one he would not have liked to see a three bet with, as opposed to doing it with more polar type hands. Jack eight of clubs. And another dominated situation in these limp pots. It's coming up quite a lot. I want to say Ido's been on the wrong side of it 3.8 more often. But here he is, three betting fight still from Sergio. Of course, you would expect nothing less. But what do we expect out of King Six offsuit for another 2.6? Well, definitely not all in. I wonder if he's thinking small four bet call. 8.5. Yeah. Oh, Rasty nails it on the head. There's the 8.5 declaration as he limp three bets. And this is again, a very deflating exchange. Yeah, again, it's it's one of these kind of uh, heuristics here where when you get these shortish stacks and someone has a pretty wide range, um, you know, Ido's going to raise that the limp there with a with a pretty wide range, including a somewhat polar range of junk hands. He's taking a hand that has a nice blocker in the king. It's kind of a little too weakish, uncomfortable calling, and you make it a four bet bluff. It's the same dynamic and heuristic as what the big blind does versus a button open off of like 25 bigs, where you get the ace x and king x stuff offsuit that three bets there. So a very similar dynamic. I suggested it was a three bet from Ido, of course. 4.5? No, it was a limp from Mosbach, raise, and then the limp three bet. And here he is raising the limp of Ido in turn. He's got it ace nine suited, and he is all over Sergio. Will defend with King Eight. And this is, this is a big pot here. We got a stack to pot ratio of less than two to one. Mm -hmm. Sergio with only 15 blinds behind. Oh, a nine in the window. Jack and a 10 with it though. Ido, the two way straight draw. And a queen, bottom pair for Mario. queen, not the dummy end, because he has a king, so it makes him a king high straight. Interesting flop, because Mario has kind of a weak showdown value type of hand, and he's out of position, and Ido has a reasonable draw with a hand with little to no showdown value in position. So this could be the type of hand where money gets put in the pot. Sure. The in-position player more or less semi-bluffing and the out-of-position player uh, calling and really hoping for bluffs and semi-bluffs. You know, he also has backdoor clubs. I mean, Mario's going nowhere. This is like a very easy call. And I don't think there's any other option at this point in the hand. Ido, 
2.7 the sizing. Mosbach calls another 5.4 into the middle oh. and the queen right away. But note that it comes in club form, Rasty. King high straight for Sergio. He's delighted exactly one is the stack to pot ratio for him from this point forward and how much of it is he going to stick in provided that he's the man that's left to act I we're on Mosbach if, though i wonder if mario is going to kind of like turn his hand into a bluff here yeah 3.6 i mean he has a reasonable hand to do it because a nine has zero showdown at this point if somehow your nine isn't good your opponent will bluff. And um, I mean, he has a lot of equity. Ace over card to make Broadway, as well as the nut club draw. And the nine, while it has no showdown block value, it is blocking two pair. OK, and Sergio just calls in position. You surprised by that? Um, no, not really. I mean, there's after calling, they have a half pot size bet left. Okay. so. He probably, he's he's going nowhere. The only card that would maybe make him would be a king. And then he might still call to, to win the chop. Board pair so. and a club don't do it? Yeah. Oh, no. my gosh. No. There is the club. He's calling. He has a king high straight, and he has a club himself. So Mario's just going to probably win the tournament is probably what's going to happen. 22.8 in the middle. They play 12 effective. No Mosbach. Has the nuts. Yeah, and I mean, he led turn. Gonna, I think, very likely lead river again. Why let my opponent off the hook with maybe queen X as something as light as one pair definitely two pair none of those hands are value betting his opponent will value bet a king high straight which we see he has but probably call five. that as well he doesn't oh, wow. go for the whole thing he bets just 3.5 rast are you surprised to see it i am a bit surprised to see that here is yes. this inadequately greedy i mean I'm not really sure. I mean, I think it's a spot where um, he has some value hands that might actually want to do this. Like, what if he had a king high straight himself? Like, that is a hand to me that makes more sense to do that. With the nut flush, I would just ask for it all. And you see the look on Mario's face as Ido calls rather quickly, shows the king high straight, and I think he realizes it could have been his. Yeah, it could be over. I mean, it would be over now if he bet it all. I don't think Sergio's holding uh, his hand. I, I, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's like extr like at one percent, you know, that he would fold that. I mean, he has a club too. Along, like he's chopping some. Even he could be like Mario might choose that bet sizing with a king high straight, but he might, you know, he might bet half pot all in or whatever too. I don't know. I just think if you happen to backdoor that flush there, you just ask for it all. You, you're going to have some bluffs, too, some, like, one pair or whatever goofball hands that can bluff. And just look at the plight of Sergio Ido. Like, to me, he had another pot just down. now, right, where he did have a flush, and he made that bet. But remember, that was a, they were deep enough at that point where... It went raise, and he re-raised back over the top, all in on the river. Like, that wasn't happening here. Like, Sergio could either call or fold call or go all in. But there was no three. Like, he had the nuts. There was no three bet. If it was flush over flush, you're not three betting. You know, like, yeah, your opponent will probably jam. But I don't know. I, I uh, This one time, I'm going to disagree with Mario on his bet size choice. Queen Jack suited, and just nothing seems to be going Ido's way as Mario gives him a walk. Still needs some time to gather in that last massive pot, which could have been the match ender. But it's, I mean, there's a big discrepancy in chips there. 68 million, 
67 million to 9 million. So. Call. Limping the king queen off is Sergio. Is he in the business of trying to find excuses to get all in pre now with sub 10? I mean, it's a hand that's pretty natural to shove, in my opinion. Um, and a hand that continues to hold the lead on the ace four five board, note Mosbach with the wheel draw. I mean, I think for, what is it, like six blinds or something? Like you're getting called by much weaker king and queen X hands and you deny equity to hands that would fold that are live, such as this, 10 deuce, et cetera. And uh, in general, I think I found the Silicon Overlord like likes shoving offsuit stuff. And if you were gonna trap here, I would like prefer to do it with a hand like pairs and stuff mm -hmm. that have the hands that fold versus a jam in really bad shape. Like how much worse of a shape is 10 deuce versus sevens than it is versus like king queen, for example. I don't know. King on the turn, giving Ido. Not a big deal. Second pair, as Mosbach did check call 1.2. Six in the middle. And Second check in front of Sergio, who's got a lot more hand now. And in comes Stack of Black with a little white cherry on top. 2.2. Take it, sir, says Mario. Not a big oh. deal, and I will admit that I'm like nine not blinds, super nine versed nine in <laughs> six big blind heads up play, so. It's because you, you know. never find yourself with six big blinds, Rasty. You always got the, <laughs> you know, you got, the, you got it by the throat. <laughs> I do want to take a moment to both thank those of you who are streaming us live, whether it be on the Triton Poker Plus app or the Triton YouTube channel, and remind you that we ask you to do nothing more than click the like button if you like what you see and how could you not. And while you're at it, click the subscribe button to allow us to continue to bring you the finest in streaming poker entertainment, all free of charge as Mosbach charges all of it and takes it from the button. Well, for you guys out there who, like me, are Bitcoin enthusiasts, I just want to say that there may have been some times in the last week where it flirted with the all-time high, arguably touched it or not, or I don't know, you know, what exchange, what price, but definitively in the last 30 minutes, Bitcoin has crossed and is now solidly over 70,000. So there it is. We, we're in, Think we've crossed the, the new all-time high, the only asset to ever go down 80% or more four times and then rebound to make an all-time high. It's now Bitcoin in a league of its own. Just want to let that be known, you know? Yeah. There might really be some Bitcoin enjoyers following the stream. Seems like a stable asset class is what you're trying to say. <laughs> 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 Not for the faint of heart, the crypto yeah, streets, but definitely. perhaps from here forward, who knows? Take the college savings and put it in. Who knows <laughs> what could go wrong? Well, Sergio was hoping for a little more volatility as it has been one big red candle for the better part of this heads up match with few green blips, if any. That is true. This has been red candle, green candle situation here. Yeah. Nine, five dominated. He's trying to avoid liquidation. <laughs> you can't lever uh, here, here in the Triton streets, but you can look over at disaster and that's what Sergio's doing chooses to dig in dominated king five against nine five and the rail bubbling mario on his feet why he sense this as the moment a lick of the lips 16 million in the middle burn down three off the top and there's oh. a nine as sergio wags his spanish finger across the way at the austrian <laughs> Agora no. Or rather, that was Portuguese. Agora no. Agora no. Yeah. There you go. Not right now, sir. 
Just needs to fade the king and does it. I, listen, Seven. I know Mario's hand's supposed to do better there, but let's be honest. Sergio was a bit due. He was. You know. This is this heads up has been one way traffic, so I mean it's it's nice to see that something went his went his way. I mean yeah. he's still at a big chip disadvantage, but okay. You know let's breathe in and out again. We you can stop holding your breath, Sergio. The something went your way, you've got a few chips back. Let's see if we can make something happen. Sergio gets to play off of 16 bigs to start this one. This might be the biggest level. I mean, I think we matched this level on the last 25K, but it might make it to 2 million. That would be just yeah. staggering, would it not? It's not an official. There's been no confirmation, I don't know. But given that these two were the largest Triton tourneys by quite a lot. And the final tables are going on for a while. I would not be surprised at all if, should they make it to the next level, it will now be the largest blind level played in one of these tournaments. I mean, two million. Oof. Story checks out, obviously, as you need to whittle down from 305 entries. One pair of eights becomes three eights for Mozbog as the show resumes in a 4.8 million chip pot. This one limped pre-knuckled in both camps. And here we are at the turn awaiting Mario's choice. I mean, Mario would choose to get a lot of chips in the middle, and unfortunately for him, Sergio has dust, so. Yeah, he's got a very different choice with Jack Deuce. And Remember when, when tower when, is really getting, I, I was just yeah. looking at the same thing. He hadn't completed that level, and then now he's got that one polished off. He's working on the pyramid completion here. Well, he's, he appears to have the the pyramid. Well, it's only horizontal. There's no ver there's no depth to it. But the horizontal pyramid. He needs one more without the spire. one on top. Yes, no, but the, you know maybe that's dangerous height restrictions, whatever. But then he's got the. The part in front. It's like the the people in front of the pyramid still doing work, no, the little this, market, whatever it is. This is a mixed-use development. We've got residential, yeah. a little bit of retail down low. But I do think that, that higher, even if it's a lightning rod, you know what I mean, one of those BS sort of additions to claim the title of tallest building in the city, yeah. like, throw it up there, Mario. <laughs> Are we focusing on the right stuff? <laughs> Jack know. 5 against 5-3. Again, Ooh. shared cards, but this time Advantage Ido. As the 9-5 prior to this was what he found the double off of. Not really rating to be one of interest thus far for Mario as Sergio slips it to him. And I wonder if Mario is going to take a look at that 5 of diamonds and start betting with it. No, he checks it back, which turns out to be quite good because he does not want to put any chips in this pot. Uh, drawing slim on the flop and dead now on the turn. And... Uh, the only way Sergio's getting more money is making a, a, I mean, making a unintuitive turn check here. No further interest from Mario as Sergio's 2.4 comes right back to him with friends. Look at shopping, get away. Look at shopping. <laughs> Couple of queen eights, spade variety from Osbach. All in. Sergio rips it. Can't flip. 
An account being requested by Mario. Would mm. he really want to spin against 10 bigs? Rasty with queen eight of spades? How much? Around 9.5 likes, I believe. Like 5, 15 million, I think. I Maybe think... More. I mean, I, I'm trying to think. I think with a big blind Annie, I think it's a queen. call for chips. Yeah. I think if you're folding this, it's because you think your opponent's jamming range is a bit tighter than... Because I think Queen of Spades is a call for chips with a big money for 10 points. It would appear that Mario Mosbach agrees as we play for 33 million and the title. If Queen of Spades could somehow improve, the window had the rail hyped up, but no further spade thus far. The rates to be a chop. But the deck always finds a way to keep things interesting. And now Mosbach a spade away from the victory as Fedor has joined the boys on the rail. Oh, right collar, wrong suit. As a board pairing ace puts Mario back in his seat. This particular deck of cards really is uh, its not an emotionally stable deck. No. Slightly skitzy, if I'm honest. <laughs> Just, But you know what? Those are the fun ones. And this has been a fun and spirited heads up match. Definitely more fun for Mario Again, than Sergio. Again, they share a card, Rast. This is deeply improbable, the frequency with which we've seen it. Uneventful on this occasion as Mario jams and takes. Now, Rast, I know you're happily married now, but there was a time back when you were in the single streets. You ever date a crazy girl? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish those of you at home could have seen the look on Rast's face as he arrived at that delightful one-syllable response that told me everything that I really wanted to know. Nothing further. And now, telling you what the landscape is here is this official chip count brought to you by BetACR.eu. Stratospheric blinds of 800 and 1.6 million. And it has been the Mosbach Show. Sitting with a massive five to one chip lead almost. And again, they share a card, Rast. Advantage Ido this time. Limping. Every hand. It's really something. King, Queen, seven. Eight of clubs, all that works for Mario. Top pair for Ido. <laughs> Bet and take it for Sergio. And Sergio seems a bit more committed to the limping. I mean, he's currently limping now off of 10 big blind, sub 10 big blind stack depths, whereas Mario is doing a bit more just open ripping. Like given that, I wouldn't be surprised to see the open shove here. I mean, it's a hand that's good enough to do it. Yeah. So Mario is uh, going to. Yeah, he's. It seems to be a bit larger part of his strategy. Like, you know, for example, Sergio just had King Eight of Diamonds hand definitely good enough to do it, and he came with limp. Did it previously off of like six blinds with like King Queen off. So some interesting kind of strategic pre-flop divergences between these two players. By the way, in the foreground, the back of El Conquistador, who looks on not from the rail, but just offset there. Compatriots with Sergio Ido, two of the best Spaniards to ever do it. 
unquestionably. A six suited now for Sergio. Colin. Jams. Humphrey. Queen three suited worthy of a count. Ah, pa contar, perdón. Wow, so a bit weaker than the queen eight suited last time. Considerably so as well, is it not? Rast? Yeah. Um, I think it's the same amount. I mean, maybe it's a blind less or something. How much? Thirteen, three fifty. Call. Call declared as the yeah. count comes back and is deemed Dame three. worthy of going up against I don't the favorite. Better than three to two. So Mario in the mood to gamble a little bit. Yeah. I'm not I'm not even saying this was necessarily a bad call, but it was definitely at the very least close. This is why I was saying I didn't think the Queen 8 suited was that close before. <laughs> and six is pretty grim at the moment. Queen only. Safe river is paint. Was a little bit of a heartbeat skipper. And that just devastated the residential part of his chip stack. <laughs> Pyram <laughs> Pyramid's no, still intact, retail, but retail's the retail, down low. retail, residential, you know, just that general area down there is There's really... There's still stores open. Yeah, but they're, they're a lot lighter than before. You're right. They're pillaged. That was a key pickup there for Ido. Yeah, we needed that one in order to make it to the two million chip blind level. Kings now, and could Ido find himself back in the chip lead? Obviously, this doesn't rate to be one where the chips all get toward the middle pre-flop, but 6-5 suited, worthy of play from the button of Mosbach. The Olymp. 48. Sergio takes us up. In position with a suited connector. Mosbach. Needs to decide. Oh. And he's coming, so. Here we go. 11.2 in the middle. Two to one stack to pot ratio. This is a big one. So Mario retained. Picks up a gut shot on the ace three deuce board. Obviously hate to see it when we have two kings. King of diamonds relevant. Yeah, we just saw kind of a similar situation. I feel like Dvoris had the two kings with the king of diamonds. The, 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 the gutter ran out the hard way to make a straight with the eight, nine of hearts. I mean, a lot of similarities between this hand and that one. Dvoris went in the tank on the river and ended up making the a fold that would allow, that was good given that his opponent would have taken a bunch of his chips. Mosbach going to peel here for this 2.2 price. So tempting. The turn, not so much. And now Sergio, having been called on the flop but having chosen a sizing that would retain a wide variety of hands, as we can see, six high in 
the equation. Yeah. But How does he approach this 15.6 with 19.7? I'll, I'll tell you what I think. I think that Mario doesn't have a ton of ASEX hands given his limp call on the button. And so because of that, he can feel more comfortable with this value betting. Five, yeah. Right? yeah, great point, Russ. So, you know, my opponent's going to have a lot of deuce X, 3, 3X, 4X, 5X, diamonds, maybe even just picked up backdoor spades. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to charge all those hands. And, you know, I could be beat, but my opponent has way less ace x than you'd think and you know pairs can't really have sets P probably doesn't play deuce three right like not not a ton of two pair hands with the ace on there so you know kings is stronger than you might think in that spot so um sergio seemed to agree and just and kept betting it Playing an ace is a limp on the button. Let's see if Mossberg gets frisky. Yes, he does. Now, was the limp with the intention of maybe inducing and getting even more in there? A6 offsuit? Well, they're about 20 blinds yes. deep. And yes. Snap fold for Mario as the fight. Now beginning to go Sergio's way. Sergio, I think, just took the chip lead now, and now it's that moment where you're like, wow, I think, you know, if you're Mario, it's like, I think this could be over. If I just... If I just would have jammed the clubs. Yeah, the you ace nine of clubs, and now I have less chips, actually. You're fighting to 33. 33. Okay, okay. It's my Wi-Fi. It's my one million, two million with a two million big blind Annie Rast. We did it. The roulette wheel is really an almost inescapable situation at this point. They played 21 bigs for Ido coming in, 17 for Mosbach. And we may want to change the spelling of Sergio to S-U-R-G-E-O as he has very much bounced off of his low point to reclaim this chip lead. I see what you did there. I like that. I mean, he's surging. Yeah. Yeah. Sergio is surging. Two hearts, two fours, and a five. As they both share a six, themes of that continue. Yeah, we no. can we can end this tournament now. We we got to the two million big blind level. It's okay, guys. <laughs> Let can, go. We can do it. It's time to get this over. Well, hang on. The turn is now given both parties the open ender advantage, Mosbach, with the queen high. Oh, well, not on this hand. This hand, it's I don't see how that happens. But just in general, I mean, you yes. know, in the next, like, five or six or something, we can, we can move it on along. Ido, first to speak. Ooh, a pot size bet, but I think with queen six, open ender, two overs, where, you know, they got the heads up ranges he's calling. Little does Mario know he has the best hand. I'm sure he thinks it's possible, but not very likely. But uh, you have to think Sergio probably bluffs this on the river if he misses, and oh no, maybe it would have worked against queen high, but that's a pretty big card for Mario, so... Oh, he gives up the bluff, and that is going to end up saving him because Mario's probably calling there, having just rivered that kind of kind of spectacular card. Is it the fact that it's the Queen of Hearts that further fuels the give up from Ido? You know, maybe Ido is thinking that he wants to bluff this river, yeah, with with his offsuit combos that have a heart, and maybe on like a non-heart river right. where he still has nine high he bluffs these offsuit combos that don't have a heart. Like, that would be my guess as to why he's just stone giving up here with a hand that is never winning. 
um, is, you know, he's just like, I'm not just bluffing every Bluffing's time right. I don't get there. I'm, you know, I'm heart or not heart based on having a flush or sorry. I'm bluffing, you know, with a heart when a heart comes and without a heart with no heart. So Mosbach barrels takes it. Yeah, w without evaluation, just what I'm guessing his thought process was. He's done very well to climb back into the match when it looked like the tidal wave that was Mario was going to engulf him. And to be fair, it was ill-timed mercy from Mosbach with that nut flush against the 10 high straight. King high straight. The king high straight, sorry. Oh, and he's, he's like changing, kind of taking down the pyramid a little bit. It's like maybe it's not very lucky, it's too high, you know, safety code. <laughs> King lurks for Ido. <laughs> Finger wag face of 8-5, which finds the muck after limping. Sergio, ace, king once more. This time suited. mosbach has got a couple of sixes across the way. Yeah, this this is going to find its way in preflop. Just two hands that are much too strong here. Heads up for, I mean, we're talking about like 16 blinds effective or something. Sergio plays it as a limp. All in declared by Mosbach. Ido practically beating him into the pot happily with the ace king suited, which is on the lean side of a coin flip. On his feet goes Mario. Sergio joining him here. This one is for the tournament, it would seem. Immediate for Mario, virtual for Sergio, who trails behind and needs this ace king to hold. Did you or rather Mario jump in front. Forgive took me. the scarf off to sweat this. Oh God, <laughs> you want to talk about sweat? This deck is out of its mind. Eight, seven, four. Six is in front with the gutter. Not flush drawn two overs for Ido, who actually is a 1% favorite with two to come. Now, advantage Mario. As the three fails to improve Ido, can the Spaniard find the double? and maybe the title right behind it. The river will tell. No! Let's go! Boom! Wow, Mario did it. He just short stacked for so long, just held on and uh, won that amazing three-way all in and turned it around. And after a tough heads up battle that with a lot of back and forth, Took it down. That he did. Obviously, not to be overlooked is the fight that Sergio brought to the party. Obviously, it was not his day. Deal was struck. Both parties earning seven figures plus. But in the end, the two trophies and a lot of heartfelt love from a very robust rail. Going to Mario Mosbach. His girlfriend loves to see it. She can exhale. 60K was what they played for after the deal was made. So actually, Sergio 
technically one more coming in second. Because, Take a look. There yeah. it is. 1.237 officially went to Ido. Just shy of 1.2 million for Mosbach as we reach the unfathomable 1 million, 2 million level. That final glimpse brought to you by Poker Stake. And wow, that was one that left us breathless on multiple occasions. As we bring you back to the desk, Ali and Brian with you. Delightful little six-handed FT that we had to go three days to crown a champ in that particular event, Rasty. But boy, I mean, if I planted you in, in Ido's seat... Not sure. Was there a world in which we could have got in, got it done? No, I mean I think Ido played great. Yeah, Seem, you know, I, it's not like there were any particular hands I remember where you know, oh this this was a big problem. I mean, listen, a lot of times in these spots, the the cards will kind of dictate who ends up winning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you need some luck and. Listen, coming in second place in a three hundred something person tournament and winning one point two million for a twenty five k buy in is pretty damn <laughs> solid. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, he doesn't get the Triton title kind of denied again, unfortunately for him, but like nothing to hang your head about at all, especially with the deal. No, no, vamos no. still, I vamos. think we can say for Sergio, but for Mario Mosbach, a second title here. And in just a second, we're gonna send you back down into the arena. Rast and I are actually going to sign off and pass the torch over to our very own Henry Kilbane, who found the money in this event. Granted, on just the right side of the bubble, he'll be joined by Will Jaffe, bringing you 40K mystery bounty coverage. But first, let's send it into the arena where Mario Mosbach stands by with our Marianella Pereira and Rast and I. We'll see you later. Mario, just 12 months ago, you started your Triton journey. And just a mere few months ago, you clinched your first title in Monte Carlo. Here you are. We were talking last night. You were quite literally surviving on fumes for I don't know how long, on crumbs. And you said to me, well, let's see. Let's see if I can spin it back up. And my exact words were, if anyone can do it, you can. Do you think you'd be standing here right now with this title? Uh, honestly, I did. It was just like I got so lucky last day and yesterday. And it's just uh, incredible. I couldn't believe that I was still on the final table and then got more and forward and forward and forward. And now I won it, and uh, yeah, it's just insane. <laughs> now, Fader mentioned last night, and he's rarely wrong. He's like, we're going to finish this final table tonight. It's going to be heads up, Mario and myself. He got a piece of that puzzle right. But wow, in 12 months, you've managed to clinch two titles. Don't get mad at me, Fader, but it's taken him <laughs> nine years to clinch four. Is, is Fader in trouble, or he's going to kill me? I could already feel the heat from the rail. <laughs> or is this, uh, you're just continuing the Austrian-German rivalry? <laughs> um, I think if Fedex uh, continues playing every stop, it's hard to catch him, but I will uh, do my best to get him eventually. <laughs> and tell us about this coin. I think with this coin, you'll be able to catch up to him quite quickly. This is a very special story. Yeah, it was uh, a friend gave me this one uh, in the Bahamas. We played the 50k, he busted. It was this lucky coin, and it was like, you should have it. And I had it since. I got second in the one drop. I played this one, it felt like I couldn't lose an all-in, so shout out to uh, JP, shout out to uh, JP's mom, and um, yeah. You'll be holding on to that coin, I take it. Uh, that's just like, uh, yeah. yeah, of course. Well, now here, let me hold on to the coin, just just temporarily, because <laughs> we've got a lot, of, a lot of trophies for you. So this is very special. Elke is here to present the GG Millions trophy. <laughs> Congrats, 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 bro. Well done. Amazing, amazing performance. So sick, so sick. Sweetie. Oh. <laughs> All right, and now without further ado, let's bring out tournament director Luca Vivaldi with that wonderful Triton hardware for you. you so <laughs> Ladies, there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, your 25K GG Millions champion, Mario Mosbeck. Husto Reich.
Welcome to the Daily Dose of GTO Quiz of the Day. Do you know how to identify good range bed boards? Cut off versus button, 3 bed pot, 40 big blinds deep. Which of these flops should button C bet 100% of their range? Ace King King, Ace 7 3, King Jack 6, or 8 7 3? Find the answer in the Daily Dose of GTO, our free ebook designed to help you master GTO poker in just five minutes per day. Introducing the all new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Just sees the wonder. Jeju Shinoa World. And is in his equity lockdown here at 84 percent. But Sergio, with just enough to make some moves, get some designs on this pot. I mean, I, in my opinion, this is clearly a spot he's going to barrel. Um, Ten high, a gutter to the nuts, two overs to the flop. Yeah, this this is like a mandatory bet. And uh, yeah, Mario is most certainly going nowhere. Um, this doesn't feel like a hand he's he's going to raise. Wouldn't be shocked. Sho I'd be mildly surprised, but not shocked. I mean, the thing is, this is just kind of a nice bluff catcher here. He can even just call River on the strength of his king five and the fact his opponent checked and a little bit deceptive. Oh. And here's why it's deceptive, because... Given the way he played this, he doesn't have a ton of flushes. A lot of his flushes would have bet or done something before this. So This looked like an innocent two liter of Diet Coke, and suddenly the river dropped a Mento into the bottle, and the eight of diamonds gives Mosbach a king high flush, 10 high straight for Sergio, 8.4 in the middle, and there will be blood, Rasty. I, I think Mario's going to check this and probably go for check raise. Okay, he's not. Interesting, but he's choosing a small sizing here. So this is an interesting spot for Sergio. When he goes like half pot, like Mario is hoping he gets raised, he can do this with some, some you know, eights up, nines up type hands and definitely a seven, all of which Sergio's beating because he has 10-7. 
So Sergio can find a class of hands that Mario's doing this for value with, which is the main class, not the traps. 10 million 800. Yeah, and he's raising here to charge those hands. The unfortunate news is he's gonna find out at some point, we'll see if Mario does some time bank acting or whatever, that it's gonna be for all of Mario's chips. And, and this is that unfortunate spot where you're raising for value only to find out that you're now bluff catching when your opponent comes back over the top. Well, let's recreate things. It was a limp from Sergio preflop with the 10-7 off. Check, 10-7 off. Check back from Mario. 6-5 deuce. It went check, check. Turn. Sergio picked up the gutter. He was the betting party as Mario slipped it to him. 2.4 got check called by Mosbach. Now he leads for the 3.4. And Ido saying diamonds are not what I think I'm up against here, making it look like 10.8, and now it's just a matter of time before the full 20 million is unloaded. Yeah, I mean, I don't, Sergio, I, I don't think he's ruling out diamonds. It's just that his hand is strong enough that he's beating a large class of hands that Mario might be donking with there mm. for like not that big a size on the river. But now after this point, he no longer thinks he might not be up against the flush. Because Mario's, really his only value hand at this point is a flush. So, and probably not a really small flush. So it, it's biggish flushes or a bluff. And there are bluffs. For example, a hand Mario could be bluffing with would be like, let's say he went for value with 9-5 off with the f 9 of diamonds. Okay. And then he got raised to 10 to ten mil. 10, 11 million. Yeah. That hand is not beating any value that Ido has. Right. And now he's like, well, I'm going to take a hand here that's no longer beating any value. I was value betting, but I'm not beating any value. I have the nice nine of diamonds blocker, and I'm going to rebluff with it. You know, stuff like that is all, like, when Sergio's thinking about the hands, like, that's what he's thinking about that he's beating. He doesn't think about it all that long, though, as he finds the right fold. And we always anticipate that this behavior from Mosbach is not in association with just a naked seven. Seems like a stable asset class is what you're trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> not for the faint of heart, the crypto yeah, streets, but definitely. perhaps from here forward, who knows? Take the college savings and put it in. Who knows what could go wrong? <laughs> well, Sergio was hoping for a little more volatility as it has been one big red candle for the better part of this heads up match with few green blips, if any. That is true. This has been red candle, green candle situation here. Yeah. 9-5 dominated. He's trying to avoid liquidation. <laughs> you can't lever uh, here, here in the Triton streets. But you can look over at disaster, and that's what Sergio's doing. Chooses to dig in, dominated. King-5 against 9-5, and the rail... Bubbling, Mario on his feet. Why he sense this as the moment. A lick of the lips, 16 million in the middle. Burn down, three off the top, and there's oh. a nine. As Sergio wags his Spanish finger across the way at the Austrian. <laughs> Agora no. Or rather, that was Portuguese. Aura, no. Aura, no. Yeah. There you go. Not right now, sir. Just needs to fade the king and does it. I, listen, Seven. I know Mario's hand is supposed to do better there, but let's be honest. Sergio was a... Couple of queen eights. Spade variety from Mosbach. Sergio rips it. Can't flip. An account being requested by Mario. Would <laughs> he really want to spin against 10 bigs? Rasty with Queen 8 of spades? How much? Around 9.5 likes, I believe. Like 5, 15 million, I think. I Maybe think. More. I mean, I, I'm trying to think. I think with a big blind Annie, I think it's a Queen. call for chips. Yeah. I think if you're folding this, it's because you think your opponent's jamming range is a bit tighter than... Because I think Queen of Spades is a call for chips. 
with a big right knee for 10 rounds. It would appear that Mario Mosbach agrees as we play for 33 million and the title. If Queen of Spades could somehow improve, the window had the rail hyped up, but no further spade thus far. The rates to be a chop. But the deck always finds a way to keep things interesting. And now Mosbach a spade away from the victory as Fedor has joined the boys on the rail. Oh, right collar, wrong suit. As board pairing ace puts Mario back in his seat. It's with Sergio Ido, two of the best Spaniards to ever do it, unquestionably. A six suited now for Sergio. All in. Jams. Complete. Queen three suited, worthy of a count. Wow, so a bit weaker than the Queen 8 suited last time. Considerably so as well, is it not? Rast? Yeah. Um, I think it's the same amount. I mean, maybe it's a blind less or something. How much? Thirteen, three fifty. Call. Call declared as the yeah. count comes back and is deemed Dame drei. worthy of going up against. I don't. The favorite, better than three to two. So Mario, in the mood to gamble a little bit. Yeah. I'm not not even saying this was necessarily a bad call, but it was definitely at the very least close. This is why I was saying I didn't think the Queen-8 suited was that close before. <laughs> Pair of sixes. Pretty grim at the moment. Queen only. Safe river as paint was a little bit of a heartbeat skipper. Sergio, ace king once more. This time suited. Mosbox got a couple of sixes across the way. Yeah, this this is gonna find its way in preflop. Just. Two hands that are much too strong here. Heads up for, I mean, we're talking about like 16 blinds effective or something. Sergio plays it as a limp. All in declared by Mosbach. Ido practically beating him into the pot happily with the ace king suited, which is on the lean side of a coin flip. His feet goes Mario. Sergio joining him here. This one is for the tournament, it would seem. Immediate for Mario, virtual for Sergio, who trails behind and needs this ace king to hold. Did you or rather, Mario jump in front. Forgive took me. the scarf off to sweat this. Oh God, look, <laughs> you want to talk about sweat? This deck is out of its mind. Eight, seven, four. Six is in front with the gutter. Not flush drawn, two overs for Ido who actually is a 1% favorite with two to come. Now, advantage Mario. As the three fails to improve Ido, can the Spaniard find the double and maybe the title right behind it? The river will tell. No! Let's go! Boom! Wow, Mario did it. He just short stacked for so long, just held on and uh, won that amazing three-way all in and turned it around. And after a tough heads up battle that with a lot of back and forth, took it down. That he did, obviously not to be overlooked is the fight that Sergio brought to the party. Obviously it was not his day.
deal was struck, both parties earning seven figures plus. But in the end, the two trophies and a lot of heartfelt love from a very robust rail. Going to Mario Mosbach, his girlfriend loves to see it. She can exhale. 60K was what they played for after the deal was made. So actually Sergio. Super Mario reigns supreme here at the Triton Super High Roller Series in Jeju, taking down the 25k GG Super Millions Live Edition. Henry Kilbane joined alongside Will Jaffe in the booth. Will, you've been uh, warming up the wheels, so to speak, over the last couple of days, keeping the seat hot and witnessing some uh, world-class poker so far this trip. Yeah, you could say that. We've been warming up the wheels. Warming I mean, up the wheels. Fedor won our first event. Uh, one of his uh, close friends, Roland, yeah. from Austria, won his second event. I joked, are they going to sweep? Yeah. Took two events off, but here they are, fifth event for Mario. Uh, great win. I mean, just he was short the whole way, really yeah. short, talking five big blinds, seven big blinds, sort of come all the way back to get the big score. Uh, just And just another day here at Triton, I guess. Really is, and to see him get his second title uh, of his career, last one coming in Monte Carlo in the Mystery Bounty, the event we're about to jump into. But yeah, to see him, like you said, come back from such a short stack, spin it up, and uh, just goes to show chip in a chair, my friend. Anything can uh, happen. And talking of anything happening, how about pulling top bounties? Top bounty in this one, 500k. We are going to be throwing it down shortly to the 40k Mystery Bounty, that top prize of 500k. So even if you don't make the money, but you claim a bounty, you can uh, walk home with some cash. Yeah, I'm curious to see how these super pros play this mystery bounty structure. I know I've played some in America. It's a very gambly type of feel, but I'm yeah. sure these guys have probably solved for it. I mean, I'd say they've solved, but the gambling seems to, I don't know, at the highest stakes. They, 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 I've seen some people going for it in spots that I've raised an eyebrow or two at. I saw Fedor was actually the bubble boy in this one, bowing out just before the money in 32nd place. Then it was Juan Pardo making a min cash. 800,000 plus up top in this one. Top bounty of 500K, min cash of 33.5. Everyone currently guaranteed 41,000 for their efforts. So pretty much securing a buy-in back. But of course, all eyes going to be on the shorter stacks and the bounties to be claimed. I guess we get a front row seat to some bounty hunting tutorials from some of the best in the world, see what kind of hands they're happy to square off with. I know producer James did the math, each bounty worth around, I wanna say 79K. So when you take that into consideration, when <coughs> putting in 10, 15, 20 bigs against the jam, you know, it's uh, some math that needs to be done, back of the napkin. Back of the napkin? Yeah, back of the napkin math, you know. Just quickly, quickly try and figure it out on the fly. The tails opening from early position. Yan flying out the small with the same hand. The players with an open ender. Adrian obviously gonna continue as the pre-flop aggressor. These are the boards, Will, that as a poker enthusiast and someone that just loves the game is watching these guys, the best in the world, navigate these monotone board textures. See Adrian continuing for a very small sizing. And Jan elected to take the, the aggressive line here, Will. It's so cool too, because how often do we get to see two players play the same hand? <laughs> <laughs> it's true, I mean, both with 10 high and an open ender. Both remain heartless. They have hearts, Henry. They do. It may not look like it. These guys are cold, but there's a beating red somewhere. In there. Yeah. No flushes, though. Wow. Mateos with the flop three bet. Just clicking it back to 350. Have some of that, David Yan. Why do I feel like this hand isn't over with yet? I and mean. I'm always curious in these spots, Henry, like, did these guys study for this? Or is this just, like, some street poker between two absolute crushers? This feels street, I must admit. 
I like, wonder if the reason Mateus is opting for three bet is because <clears throat> good things like this can happen. You can just get Jan to fold. Flat calling with the open ender remaining unimproved on the turn. You have to concede the part to Jan. So Mateus, fresh off that title, getting it done at this feature table and having the covering stack as well over Yan, Chong, now Ding. Plan is to play down to a champion today. It's Bulgaria's Yulian Bogdanov out in pole position, 98 big blinds. With Sean Winter in the mix, Chris Brewer, Roman Trabetz, Jao Vieira, Dimitar Danchev, Jonathan Jaffe, Victor Chong, Laszlo Boytash, so <coughs> Triton OGs. To walk away that top prize of 800,000 and change. Ding is covered. Does just pitch to King Jack. So you having a chat with Jan on break? Yeah, uh, we used to play online together um, way back in the day. I remember when I've been playing so long. I remember when he got into the game. Wow. Like two point four. How many years ago is this? I mean, when he got in, because he had the screen name Miss Oracle, and I just it's yeah, certain, certain screen names just remember. But it's kind of a blaster. I just someone five. who left a mark on you. It, it, this is like you know, well over ten years ago. <laughs> Kulev defending from the big, remains unimproved. Wang with the overpair, opening from under the gun. Mandatory seatbelt here, Will, or we, we can mix this spot on the 995? Yeah, I feel like you can go either way, but maybe more inclined to check back with the bigger pairs and bet the jacks. Definitely. Vincent agrees, as he does continue for 90k. And one of the themes I've noticed here so far is Vincent in our last event, I think he bubbled the final table. Yeah, he got 11th place, 101,000. And I'm just starting to see familiar faces. You see them make a run, and it just feels like there's like a some sort of magnetization or something. You know, they get stuck to the table. A lot of the same guys coming over and over again looking for these big scores. Yeah, a lot of these guys come to just grind and, and lock in for two weeks, 15, 16, 17 days. It's just back to back to back. No days off. No rest for the wicked. That's what they're playing for. Triton Trophy. And this guy, I mean, just being around him, I was around when he was at the final table of the tournament he won. And I don't want to talk down. These guys are all crushers, but there's just a different feel to Adrian when you physically around him, honestly. I agree. Yeah, there, there are a few people that come to mind that kind of similar energy. Steve O'Dwyer. His focus is, is just, it's always on, and it always seems intense, even when he's walking around, you know. Well, even when he's going to the bathroom, Henry. That's true. And Kulev, another guy, had the... Pleasure of meeting him. I got a 25k seat in the Bahamas this year. Okay. They said the tournament was going to be easy, Henry. And then you got this kid. And I got him, and early on, he puts me in this torturous spot where he overbets on the river for like half of my stack. And I tank forever and fold queens, and it was like a you know a 10 high board. Yeah. And he just goes, "You're the funny Twitter guy, right?" <laughs> and I just <laughs> I just knew it was not going to be a good trip for me. But uh, one of the best, I think, according to my sources, one of the best online tournament players right now out there. Yeah, I want to say was ranked number one online. It's either 2022 or 2023 on Pocket Fives. Kind of burst onto the Triton Super High Roller Series, I want to say, last year. And he's been a permanent fixture ever since. Also had the pleasure of playing with him yesterday in the 25k. Put me in a couple of tough spots. Yeah, so talk about that, Henry. You're the first of uh, the team back here that's actually been down there on the felt in battle. What was that like? <coughs> Honestly, it's just increased my level of respect for these guys. The fact that they do this for a living. Um, 
week in, week out, month in, month out on, on such a high level. It's tough, man. I mean, there are people like O'Dwyer, like Jason Kuhn, a couple of other guys that I got to play with that they're on you like saunas, man. Like, you know when you just walk in the sauna and the heat just doesn't leave you alone? Like, you think you're going to get a break. You open under the gun and Steve-O just starts staring you down from the cutoff. You're like, oh, okay, here we go again. Right, what's it going to be this time, pal? And when you're already thinking about that kind of pressure that these guys are going to apply, it, it really throws you off. I was really fortunate. Like, I had a really chilled day one. Um, you know those days where you just don't have any tough spots? It's just plain sailing. Smooth sailing. Really just smooth sailing throughout the day. And then yesterday I just get, you know, the table of death with, with JK and uh, Steve on my left. But had a ton of fun and obviously to um, to make some money. Uh, in my first Triton event, little cherry on top. Had zero expectations going in. Zero pressure on myself. Just wanted to enjoy the experience. And yeah, to, to get a cash. Uh, definitely going to be flicking in a few more. Hopefully the PLO streets. We'll see. <laughs> time, Mateos does cover. I assume we're going to see a lot more defending okay. out of the big, especially when we cover openers here with that bounty effect. But Tails coming up short, Kulev with top two. And I would think if 6-7 off is close with the bounty, it becomes mandatory to see a I'd flop. I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say so. I think we're, we're probably going to have some, uh, some defends that to us mere mortals, uh, like I said earlier on, ra raise an eyebrow or two. Uh, I'd say rest assured that a lot of these guys have uh, studied this, this format in particular, to the highest level. There's some uh, some LV bags on the on the rail there. Does that belong to the masseuse, maybe? I think that's Bao Dings. Guy's got a lot of drip, Henry. Or that fair. could be Wang's. Wang's also pretty that's, dripped that's out. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, you don't have any Louis bags, Henry? I can't say I do. No, <laughs> no, not not yet. Not yet. Although, and if if I was gonna buy one, I'd say <coughs> Louis is probably yeah the brand the brand to go for. And here we see this 10-8 of clubs for Wang with I, I'm assuming the biggest stack at the table. Obviously incentivizing a lot more hands, right? Like this, they can gamble, get in there, play for a bounty. Yeah, he is triply at the table. There's Joe Chong on seven bigs as well. And like you said, just getting in the mix with a hand like 10-8. I'll play the rest of the hand in position against Mateos. Dangerous bull to hunt, Henry. Energy at this table, a bit low for my liking, Will. Well, we're we weak in. We're getting, look, it's it's a grind here, Henry. I know you just got in, buddy, but some of us have been here for a week. That's true, that's true. You're out there under the bright lights, 12 hours straight, it's uh. We're working really hard here, Henry. It's tough. I've been here for at least three hours a day. Only three. <laughs> I think they like to, limit their uh, exposure, if you know what I'm saying. You, got, you guys got a good rotation. Shulman here. Rast, who, you know. <coughs> I, I don't know many people that love theory as much as Brian does. I mean, he's someone that I feel like I could just talk poker with for, for hours. And Have you seen The Matrix? <laughs> I have. You know the classic black screen with the green numbers? Yeah. That's just what he sees, like when he opens his eyes. Beautiful mind type stuff here, Henry. Rain Man level of poker math intelligence. Loving life at the moment as well, because obviously crypto's at an all-time high. So yeah, Rasty is just out here living his best life. Winning a MMA bets. The whole nine. Do you know who he had action on? Yeah, we sweated the whole fights together, so it was kind of cool because I just kind of rode him, you know what I mean? Took his side in the bets, and uh, most of them won. Nice. And then Showman had a big bet on Peter Yan, his only bet of the day, and that was a real sweat. Did Yan get it done in the end? He did. Okay. 
was going to say, that could have been a very tilted Shulman to deal with for a couple I ran days. well because I had to deal with him in the booth after, so. Yeah. That could have been, uh, could have been GG's. David Yan, though, with the 10s, and Vincent with an interesting spot. Yeah, it really is an interesting spot for Vincent. A hand that doesn't mind putting more chips in here. Isn't under the gun range, but happy to ISO. And probably more happy to gamble, right, with the bounty, knowing that that so. elimination could be worth up to half a million, right? I think we're about to, to have our first bounty hunt with the ace jack. 20 bigs. So what Jan comes with here, seven-handed, is one of the table captains. Ten's just going to be too strong against Wang. You always got to think, though, when you open from under the gun and you get three bet. Looks like David's going through the whole range. Seven Very good player. But he's going to rip it. 700. And maybe there's a pay jump going on or something? Curious why he wouldn't just put it all in there. Yeah. Vincent's obviously going to go with it. Keen eye, Will. We are on a pay jump. $4,000 ladder. Yes, yeah, so you see David, David that, I assume if, if there was no pay jump, he probably would have just put it in there. Here, gives himself a chance to get another player eliminated and make the pay jump. Yeah, that has to be it. I mean, unless there's some weird leveling by not putting all your chips in so that the bounty's not up for grabs. I don't know. <coughs> Look, I'm not best friends with David, but I don't think he's playing those type of games. Vincent, who got 11th in our last event, in a great spot, all things considered, right, with the ace jack, going bounty hunting. Yeah, flipping for a bounty, like you said, that top bounty worth half a million. The EV of each bounty is worth 79k, so these 4k ladders are still pretty insignificant compared to the size of the bounties up for grabs. Time banks, Jan wants to burn through here. He's going to get to see the relative good news that he's flipping. I believe both these guys are from New Zealand, Henry. I believe you're right. So this one and three more? Vincent, just come on, man. Let's get it. Let's get this over with. Let's flip. Let's see what we got to do. Yeah, Vincent's made his move. Bit of a smirk on the ant's face. The way he shuffles those chips, man. I mean, aggressive. He's an aggressive player, Henry. That is true. Is he gonna burn through all of them? I mean, dude, what if you win the hand and you get put in a tough spot? Yeah, interesting that he's willing to go with all the time banks here, Henry, right? Like, just assuming if he wins that he'll act quickly going forward. And if he loses, obviously not an issue he'll have to worry about. Joey Chung taking a little nap. The baby getting some sleep there, Henry. Good time for it, no? Hey, listen, man, whatever they give you. You know what? You I'm going to take, take, take a sec here, too. <laughs> just close my eyes in the booth. A little 30-second power nap. Join us in chat. Take a little. This is the time. Close your eyes because we got a long night ahead of us. Or morning. Let us know where you're watching from. Played all the way down to a champion today. And the bounty draw tomorrow. Here we go. Spin time. Tables the tens. Wang, happy to see. He's not up against ace king, aces, kings, ace queen. So 
so far so good for Nyan. Always well, nice to have a little life though, right? The backdoor hearts, the, back the door jack. Bangkok, yeah, you know. Backdoor what? The backdoor Bangkok. One card to come. Nyan needs to fade an ace. Nice call there, Henry. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I don't know why, I just felt like the tens were holding and Lisa Clubs, corner pocket, Wang up to 3.7 million. Second in chips overall, 20 left. And gets that all important bounty of David Yan. Yeah, at least one pull tomorrow when uh, I assume Arlene Nishard is going to be hosting the mystery bounty draw. Everyone now guaranteed 45,000 for all their efforts. The departure of David Yan in 21st. And a cool dynamic, Henry, right? Normally, David Yan busts, Vincent get these chips, but there's no other money transactions here, right? That's the end of it. That's it, finito. Official timekeeper once more. Jacob and Co. Official timekeeper of the Triton Poker Series. Continuing to make these incredible timepieces. You've seen plenty of them on display over the last year and a half, two years, on the wrists of many poker players, including main event champions such as Jason Kuhn, Stephen Chidwick, Henrik Hecklin. Now, Astronomy Casino with that functioning roulette inside the piece. You can check it out during the break. And of course, we will be awarding a special collaboration timepiece to be won by the Triton No Limit Hold'em main event champ. 140. Good of getting to work from early position. Tails looks interested. King Jacko. And again, it'll be a theme, but the covering stack always making it a lot more enticing to enter the pot here knowing if you eliminate them, you could get up to $500,000 on top of whatever else you win. 100%, man. I think you're going to see a lot more flatting with these types of hands rather than three betting in normal formats. Makes sense. Trying to catch a good flop in position. Nope, the ace 10 hitting the mark. Discipline fault there. Joey, the, Joey the baby with. Really not many chips left. Now that is a consideration as well. Kulev opening into the short stack of Joe. Would certainly think Joey's big makes it much more enticing for these guys to splash around. Yeah, 100% I mean he's playing, what, five bigs? And these are the type of hands, I think, that are so informational when you watch these streams. Yeah, when you get a cooler, Henry, when you flop a set, you know what to do, right? But what do you do here? How do both players proceed? I think Kulev's going into check call mode. Mateus with an interesting one. Jack of diamonds, some back doors. Nice one to start. Yeah, Apply one, pressure with. One of these spots, I would think, he knows his hand is rarely good, but he blocks a lot of the good hands that he would be worried about Kulev having. Jacks, kings, even a hand like potentially king nine of spades. King nine of spades, ace jack of diamonds. Nice to just fold out some ace highs here. Have relevant suits as well. Blocking hands like king queen of spades, ace king of spades. Potentially float nine thirty in the middle. Note the SPR immediately gets awkward. For Kulev, all does pair. Really good turn for him, though, I would think. Hard for Mateos to have many eights. Kulev is a very thoughtful player. Really one of these guys, Henry, I just feel like it's really difficult to predict what they're going to do at any point in time. 180. about the turn probe for 20% pot. I mean, this guy's just an animal, Henry. Look at him. We're just we're just on a safari right now. 
Wait, which one? Kulev or Mateos or both? Mateos. El Matador squaring off against number one on Bulgaria's all-time money list. Mateos, 40 million in winnings, Henry. That's pretty wild. 29 years old. Burst onto the scene at 18 years of age with a bang and hasn't really looked back ever since. Year out, title after title. Finally getting his maiden Triton trophy here in Jeju. With so many near misses. Yeah, could get another one here, Henry. That's the chips. Now the caliber to do it. Trying to sniff out this lead. Adrian navigates these spots extremely well. He, I was going to say, he has an aggression button, Henry, and a feel that I, I feel like really few other players have. I've just seen this so many times. He just knows, man. That's pretty absurd to find the raise there. Conquist the door. Go live with the snap fold. And this is kind of what I've gotten used to, right? A week here. It, this is every day. Every other hand you see just incredible play from the best players in the world. Yeah, I guess uh, Mateusz just not giving Kulev credit for overpairs. And also going back to the blockers, right? He's blocking a lot of them. He's blocking a lot of the good hands that Kulev has there. He also knows Kulev doesn't have a lot of eights, right? So. Just a really nice read. See what Ding wants to do here. Does have Joe in the small blind on short stack duties. Yeah, suited King looks like he's going to take it upstairs. And this has been another theme here, Henry. The suited kings. The apparently the silicone overlord, the solver master, loves them. The silicone overlord. That's what Rask calls it. <laughs> I need to. You need to get a little bit. I know you've been playing. I know you've been making runs. And Joey the Baby's all in here, taking a stand. And Kulev, wow. Okay. Can and I get this is going to be really interesting, Henry, because <laughs> Bao covers both players. So he can go. You think he's going to go for both bounties? 15 bigs? It's 15 bigs, Henry. One of those guys could be worth $500,000 if he busts them and pulls the right ticket. Someone could do the back of napkin math and figure out how many bigs a bounty's worth at the moment. Oh, it would help me solve it on the fly. I'm If I'm Bao here, I'm calling, but I'm also a big part of me Seven. just gambling because these guys are so much better than me. But I feel like he's getting a... It's obviously not the hand you want, right? You could just be completely smashed. But Joe only has two big blinds, right? Joe has two... Sorry, Joe has uh, four. Kulev could be re-jamming hands like Jack-10, Queen-Jack, Queen-10. You're really hoping for a situation like this, which is not fantastic, but... Another problem, though, is if you call and lose, you're crippled now. It's a lot to think about. Ding has taken down a mystery bounty before. Also pulled out the top bounty prize, if I'm not mistaken. Knows how to get it done. Yeah, first place in the 30k mystery bounty here in Cyprus. At the Triton <laughs> series. Oh, that does pitch it. Pained by... The two bounty spot. Probably one of those hands he's going to have to review later on when he gets back to the PC. For now we're going to have to just live with his decision. 680 out there. Nice little overlay for Joe if he can find an ace. King high flop will. Does have the spade working? 
Joey got fourth in the 25k silver main here for 200, sorry, for 560,000, Henry, but he's going to need an ace here. He's going to be out. No Barry this time. As Joe Chong departs in 18th. Looking up another cash, as Will mentioned, this series. 45,000 for his efforts. And with that, another ladder. 17 left, 50,500 guaranteed for the final 17. It is Sean Winter leading the field way out in front, by the way, 94 bigs. Wow, that's a lot of chips. Sean Winter, normally the man on short stack duties. Sean, he knows how to get it done with a big stack. Very interested in that King 5 spot for Ding. What was it? It was a 17 big blind regem from the big from Alex. Feels a little light, right? We should have so many better hands there. But I don't know. Let me see what the chat is saying. Maybe someone can can figure out. I'm assuming the, the bounties are worth like... Mm, starting stacks 200k. Bounties are worth like four bigs. There's like eight bigs in there. Chat, let me know. <coughs> Bearing in mind that the uh, the bounties are worth 79k a piece. Vincent here with Queen 10 facing the limp. Yeah, really nice hand to kind of check back, keeping all of the Queen X, 10X that we dominate. It would fold to a raise. Ulev flops a gut shot straight draw. I do think just from a solver perspective, Henry, the massage is a very good strategy at the table. Especially that masseuse. Uh, I I got a massage from her for like a good hour and a half yesterday and uh, she, she fixed my back right up. Like in, in a scary way as well, like I didn't know my back could uh, crack that much. So you'd say she's GTO? She is, yeah. Really action turn here. Now Kulev is open-ended, but Vincent has top pair. You see Kulev extremely methodical. 180. What size bet from the Bulgarian on the turn? A lot of really good Bulgarian players here. Yulian Bogdanov in one of our outer tables already has had a big Triton. 16th place in the opening event. Third place in the 30K, eight-handed for 557,000. Yeah. And this is the theme I talk about. These guys, I feel like they start to get momentum they're sitting in the chair, right? They're getting more and more comfortable, and we see them more and more. And how does Vincent want to play this? I think just call feels kind of mandatory, right? Oh, we're never going anywhere with turn top pair. Question is, what do we do on Rivers? 540 out there. See if Kulev wants to give up on bricks. As, as bricky as it gets, three of diamonds. Always an interesting spot, Henry, when we're here at the bottom of our range. We know we can only win if we bet. We don't have a spade, though. We don't block any of the pairs on board. These blockers seem pretty bad here. See if Kulev agrees. He may want to go for something, just try and fold out, like, one spade type holdings. He goes big. This guy has no quit in him, Henry. And this is not by any means an easy call for Vincent. There are plenty of hands Kulev could be trapping with here. The 10, obviously with the queen kicker, a very strong bluff catcher, but we'll have a lot better ones. We'll have spades in our hand some of the time. Very interested to see what he does. Some slow play trips as well. Yeah, it's a lot easier when we're in here, seeing the whole cards. 
being out there. And this is the beauty of Cool Love's bed. It's a very large size, which is targeting a hand like this, right? If Kulev bets a much smaller size, you know, he could have a five sometimes, potentially. He could have a worse ten. But here, this is always a better hand if Kulev has value. And Vincent's trying to debate that. A real polarizing <laughs> spot here. Wow, as Vincent does let it go. Kulev getting it done, dude. I'm telling you, man, this guy's unreal. Like, th that's one of those spots on the turn. You're watching. You're just like, I know how this is going to go, right? The river's a brick. He bets. He calls. Kulev is, is just pure aggression, man. Really a machine. I felt like the micro expressions and reaction from Vincent were just out of respect for Kulev before, you know, flicking in the call, but does end up pitching the Queen 10. As you mentioned, he's going to have better hands to call with. Some spades, some slow play trips. Kulev, up to 1.8 million now. 30 bigs in a dream. Seventeen left. Forty K mystery bounty. Wang gonna go hunting in. The conquistador now looking to do the hunting with the pocket nines in the big blind. Wang Yi, already a couple caches here in the first two events, 21st and 36th place. So just the theme, I know I won't beat it to death, Henry, but here with an interesting spot and obviously not a good hand with queen high, but when you raise from under the gun and you get the king 6-3 flop, you have to bet. Blocking yeah, well. king 10, king queen, even some queens and tens that might seek value. Seventeen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bubble again. Let's see bubble again. Look at that. Twelve. How about that for an action turn card? Yeah. It's even more reason for Huang to continue firing, picking up a gut shot, queen high with not much showdown, try and shake off some six X, some three X that defend from the big. Disastrous card for Huang, Henry. I mean, really the worst in the deck. Gives him equity to barrel while giving Mateos a set. And again, Henry, when we raise the Queen 10 off, we have to keep betting here. Huang is going to do exactly that. And this just makes so much sense, right? Let's get him off a 6. Let's get him off a 3. Let's, let's get these hands out of there and take down the pot. And if we are called, we have plenty of ways to win still. Unfortunately for Wang, <laughs> this man lies lurking with a set. How does he want to play it? Tails does cover. Looks like he's going to take the aggressive route, which is very understandable considering his image. Upstairs we go to 7-7-5. Seven, seven, Teos wants all of it by the river. Wang with a bit of posturing. Knows he's been caught. His hand in the cookie jar. Yeah, and this raise seems really mandatory for Mateos. Not only are there a lot of draws out there, but the board is wet enough that we don't want to risk getting checked back by, you know, decent hands like queens or tens on the river, or even a hand like king ten when the board runs out certain ways. And nothing Wang can do there. I couldn't agree more. Unblocking top pairs. We have cooled hands like ace king, aces. We want to get all the chips in by the river. Look how smooth that is, Henry. Just like, you know, he's done it thousands of times, stacking those chips. Now, I wonder how many hours of live poker he's played. He really came on, uh, for the younger guys, he came right on live. Usually they take a little time, they, they get their hours in. He came straight to the live scene. He's got quite the online resume behind him as well. Amadi. It's a screen name. Also, 
Winamax Pro, they do an amazing series you guys should check out on YouTube called Inside of the Mind of a Pro. Really one of the best, kind of like in the States, slip more slept on, you know, not really known about poker series out there. And now, Mateos, does he cover here, Henry? Not quite. I don't think so. But obviously very playable. King, queen off versus the button raise, and I'm interested to see how he proceeds. And you know what's really nice about this, Henry? If Bao does wake up with a hand in the big blind and shoves, we're going bounty hunting. We have to call, which isn't great, but it's much better than when there's no bounty, right? And these ace offsuit hands oftentimes become very appealing bluffing candidates, but Vincent not going to mess around. Just so annoying hands for Vincent. It's just so effortless, isn't it, for him? It feels like it. It really does. When he's just in the zone, dialed in, running well, playing well. Slowly working his way up the chip counts. New table captain. And the best players, Henry, do make it look easy. You know what it's like down there in the streets. I'd say that there are a few people, like Stephen Chidwick comes to mind as well, someone that just seems to get it done and makes it look easy. Obviously, we know what goes on behind the scenes is hours and hours of study and work. And Kulev, just a little glimpse right into the aggression here, Henry. I don't know how much you've seen him play, but it's a theme with him. Very relentless. And it looks like he's covering Wang now. So a little bit of a sneaky, right? He's covering Wang and Ding in the blinds. Clearly incentivizing him to get in there more and hunt those bounties. Nothing Wang can do. 6-3 hitting the mark. Nice little pick up. So nice. not many hands, right, so far, Henry, but already a ton of kind of really fascinating plays from Kulev and Mateos. There's a bit of a pressure cooker out there at the moment. Just need a, a match to ignite an explosion between a couple of these bigger stacks. Especially when you throw in the short stacks and the bounties. It's very easy to get caught in the crossfire by mistake. So several three-way all-ins on the bubble. Fedor Holtz actually falling victim in the stone bubble to one of those three-way affairs. Speaking of bubbles, the tournament that Mario won, the last event, Fedor bubbled the final table. He did, yeah. Lost a very big hand. Sergio put him in the sort of ICM spot with Jack-10 suited. Fedor called correctly with ace-queen off, couldn't get, couldn't hold. And if he wins that pot, Henry, he's the chip leader going into that final table. So big swing for Fedor. Yeah, yeah. Tournament players are just sick, man. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I think there has to be some sort of screws loose with these guys, <laughs> Henry. <laughs> got so much respect for, for these guys, because not, not only are they playing, you know, the highest stakes available when it comes to tournament poker, but also just competing against the best of the best. Super high variance, especially in these slightly turbo-y, smaller field kind of structures. We've spoken about it at previous stops, but some of the best in the world that go on these dry spells of like 20 tournaments, 25 tournaments can be really demoralizing, man. I mean, how, how do you stay mentally strong and not doubt your capabilities and strengths, you know? If I brick 25 tournaments, I'm gonna be like, okay, maybe this isn't for me. Yeah, these guys are just built different. This one, interesting. Both players probably pretty happy to get the showdown with their king highs here. Kulev actually winning. Going to pick up another pot. 
Very good start for Alex. And one of the things for all poker players, really, Henry, it's not about the session, it's not about the week, it's not about the month, it's about the long term. And Alex, getting all these hours in online, now starting to hit these live spots, he's given himself a chance to accumulate not only a mass of winnings, but a wealth of experience, which has been on display so far. Kalev with 800,000 in Triton earnings. But really just burst on the scene this year, I believe, Henry. Has not been playing a lot of live poker. Adrian gonna get involved from the hijack with the suited Queen-8. Looking to go bounty hunting. Adrian. Being more interested in scrolling Instagram reels, perhaps? Yeah, maybe checking the crypto markets, who knows? True, true. Have seen a few charts pulled up around the tables. Morale seems to be at an all-time high, as does the price of Bitcoin. Perhaps a byproduct of these large fields here. Well, as uh, these record-breaking fields, Bitcoin at was it 68k? It's up there. Certainly not random. Poker players, some of the first, you know, com one of the first communities to really go all in on Bitcoin and reap the rewards. Always felt really tilted about the timing of that, Henry, because in poker, you know, being in poker for almost 20 years, if people told you about some new idea, you know, some new investment at the poker table, the first thing that sprung to mind was not usually, oh my God, this is gonna be some incredible asymmetrical upside, life-changing money. It was more like this is probably a scam. Yeah. I remember, I, I wanna say it was Cole South? Yep. That, that shared a two plus two thread that he was exposed to back in like, I want to say 2011, 2012. Uh, I think it was Dan O'Brien that actually showed it to me. And uh, yeah, man, just like reading it from back then and, and all of the poker players that were in that thread uh, when it was kind of first exposed is pretty insane. Look at this, Mateos again with 9-3 of clubs, but his resolve is going to be tested more here with Vincent having the king six of clubs. I think this is just a pure give up now. Yeah, you Mateos. would always think just one and done, but with Mateos, I always feel like there's a little bit more room for insanity. Burning for a time bank. This turn spot. I think trying to figure out if Vincent has a king here, because if he does, obviously, this just feels like a clear surrender, but obviously Mateos is thinking on a much higher level than me. Eight hundred on the turn. This is what I mean, Henry. Ooh, we've been here for what, like 30 minutes? <laughs> Mateos just showing us a little glimpse into the mind. 160% pot with just nine high. Really putting Vincent in just a terrible spot. In a lot of ways also because this feels like you're playing for your tournament here, Henry, even though it's not your whole stack. Well, that's exactly what Adrian's doing, yeah. He's, he's like, hey, listen, pal, are you ready to play for all of it, you know? And that's the beauty of the bet. 
it's when when a player like Adrian bets this much, do you really feel like when you call that he's going to check the river? You know what I mean? <laughs> what a grim spot for Vincent. Just folded top pair incorrectly and against Kulev. Sandwiched between two legends right here, but he's going to make the right decision here. Very nice call from Vincent. Not as easy as it looks, Henry. 800,000 is a lot. Notice the math there, Henry. Adrian setting up a perfect stack to pot ratio of one for Vincent on the river. Really just leveraging all of Huang's stack. I mean, you're saying there's a chance. Does it ever run out? Two point one out there. Two point one back. Does Mateos go for the one, two, three? And empty the clip on the King Six. The Conquistador Henry, forty million in lifetime earnings at twenty nine years old. Just won a Triton here. This would be so sick if he does this. Does he do it with King Deuce? Does he do it with King Seven? Seven Deuce. It's tough. I feel like he's only repping like Deuces and Sevens. Maybe some King Tens. It's a formality at this point, Henry. You know it's coming. The Matador. It's just unreal to watch, man. And Vincent is going to be sick. This is such a grim spot. Basically bubbled the final table in the last event. Has a big stack. Does he want to call it off here with just a king and no kicker? Just pure, relentless aggression. Look at this. Come on, Henry. <laughs> Come on, man. One and done, my ass. All three for the Matador. A little glimpse. Jesus. I mean, if that isn't it's the 90 second reel of why these Triton Super High Roller Series are so tough to play. A spot that you think would be over and done with on the flop when Vincent stabs out with the top pair. Adrian just finds a window of opportunity to get Vincent to put in a, a million in chips and then fold river. Up to 4.5 million. Absolutely brilliant from Adrian Mateos. Absolute savage. Who does that? Who looks down at 9-3 there and goes, you know what? I'm going to raise this. Then I'm going to overbet turn. Then I'm going to jam river. I really think, Henry, it was the turnover bet. That's where the creativity comes in. I, I, a lot of players may <coughs> consider double barreling. I don't know how many go with overbet there. Just completely pressuring a hand just like that too, right? Not just sevens, but kings now. And I mean... That was something special. Confidence perhaps peaking fresh off that title. After so many crossbars over the years. Second in chips, with 17 left. Flopping best on the king four tray. But it's not really the crossbars, Henry. Even though he doesn't have those goals here at Triton, he's cut them everywhere else, right? When you keep winning and winning, the amount of self-belief and just fearlessness, you can see it on his face. Thank you. Oh, but Will, People in the chat are saying easy call. So, showers, Vincent. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, also terrible bluff, Adrian. Terrible bluff, Adrian. And Sorry, easy. guys. Sorry, guys. Thank you for updating us on that, that's, Henry. That's Adrian's fault. Quick look at the chip counts here. Try and poke series, Jeju. Adrian Mateos out in front. Blinds going up to 40,000, 80,000. Ding Piao on short stack duties. And 13 bigs. So I'll look to spin the wheel. 
sooner rather than later. And he knows the shorter he gets, the wider he's going to get called as the rest of this table going to go bounty hunting each bounty, uh, each bounties, EV rather, figured out by producer James Dempsey, $79,000, top bounty prize of 500k. James using some of those math skills that uh, made him rich as a tournament poker player back in the day himself in his past life, Henry. In his past life, I'd love to see James sat down with Mateo. So you always see James fold in top <coughs> pair there, man. Can we, yeah, can we get producer James in one of these? But the action cannot stop. Vincent. 400. And Adrian with the beautiful ace jack of clubs on the button. And there are some dynamics building here, Henry. If you're Vincent now, frustration is starting to set in. 100%, man. Yeah, These yeah. guys are human. Look, they're great players. But you just got put in the torture chamber by Kulev and then Mateos. But he wisely gets out of there. And this is not about Vincent being bad. It's not, I know we're joking about the chat. This is about Adrian being insanely good. <laughs> That's what you're seeing here. It's very easy to fall into that trap and, and think that you're the one getting picked on it. And in this case, it's I mean, also let's, let's be honest, he was getting picked on. It's so much easier when we see the cards. That king six at the table is a completely different feeling there. Bao Ding now getting a massage, holding on to 13 bigs, getting that head rub, Henry. Just the brain, right? The most powerful muscle. Depends. For some of us, I guess. For some of us, I was about to say, you know. <coughs> <laughs> Depends who you're asking. Ask the chat, I mean. I knew you were going to go there. Vincent, back in the action. And I notice Adrian does this thing. I, this is not unintentional. This is this is a little bit of, I'm just going to F with you here, Henry. The, the posturing. I'm yeah, telling yeah. you, a lot of people would just fold here. They're not 5-4 off. He also may just play it, Henry. I don't know. But th I don't think that is unintentional. Even Making if he has no sweat. plans on playing yeah. the hand, he's going to make Vincent sweat. And so is Bao here. Waited patiently, picks up the nines. Can't think of any other move than all in. What does he come with? Oh. Love that watch from Bao, Henry. And that's probably like what? Like a couple hundred dollars, that plastic, the blue? Sheesh. Maybe in the store here, a couple hundred thousand? I was gonna and say Vincent, a couple, couple hundred thousand, dude. Vincent snaps him, and he's going to go bounty hunting. We're going to get a lot of those oh, chips oh, back. He just lost to Adrian. <laughs> well, we did say it's go time for Ding. Going to need to spin the wheel. Nine's in good shape. Empires have been built on smaller edges than 10%, but Ace of Hearts in the mm. window, followed by a nine in the kitchen. And it's just going from bad to worse for Vincent. Does pick up an ace out now, though, Henry. Barry Greenstein, is there one left? This would be a dirty way to do it. Nice double for Bao. Brutal turn of events there for Vincent. Just got put in the meat grinder by Kulev, then Mateos, then doubles up, and now is going to be one of the short stacks himself. Yeah, just looking at his graph. He's played very. 3.7. Yeah. He's played very well, Vincent, but 11th in the last event, Henry. Now this turn of events after being one of the chip leaders, his resolve is being tested here in a big way. Yeah, just 12 hands ago, it was up to 3.7 million now. A short stack himself at this table. Let us know who you got in chat. Who do you like here? I mean, if I was a betting man, Will. It's tough to bet against Adrian, right? It is. It really is. Especially after what you've seen today so far, Henry. Just the abuse. Vincent. The abused, but still alive, Henry. Chip Life, right? Chair. Twelve um, big blinds, sure. more than a chip in a chair. For sure. We yeah. saw Mosbach come back and ship the 25k, being down to five bigs, six-handed, I believe. Yeah, David Peters in the event that Adrian won, nursed that nub all the way into second place. Mateos now with the king-queen off.
Ding, picking up some playable hands here, Henry. How does he want to play this ace five of hearts? Just folds. Can't blame him. The matador lurking. Yeah, fresh off that double. There are also just some players where you know these marginal spots that maybe, you know, if it was me opening, it's like, yeah, we'll flick in the ace five, take it to the streets against Henry. But when it's Mateos, dude. You know these guys were salivating to play with you, Henry, which I is know. sick because you're no slouch yourself. I mean, I, I've been It's not like you're a whale, though. I mean, you haven't really seen me play. I'm, I'm out here gifting back where I can. What I do like about that ding watch, and I know seeing it a little closer, but at first sight it feels like it could be maybe 50 bucks or yeah. half a million. Definitely closer to half a million. And what do you do, Henry? You're playing a cash game, you have money, you just put that on the table, right? Sometimes you have to. A guy wants to to bet more than he's got yeah. in his stack. You know, okay, let's, let's play I mean, my watching. Camry car keys have gone in the middle more times than many, but unfortunately nobody really wants to play for those, Henry. Yeah, my swatch has been thrown in a few times as well, you know? Kulev, not a watch guy, though. Makes it 200. Notice him sizing up a little here. This is interesting on Adrian's big blind and Vincent with the pocket 10s, a spot he's been waiting for. Man, if Vincent busts here, which he could, it's going to be uh, it's a long old walk back to the hotel room after a very, very frustrating 13, 14 hands. 10s against Ace Jack. 15% favorite with five to come. Kulev will have a healthy amount of chips if he can spike here. 0.7 in the middle as it does come. King, Jack, seven, and kind of feels like we could, just knew it was coming. You just could feel it, right? Yeah. Needs a nine or a ten here, but it just feels so grim for Vincent, and it's felt that way. Can he hit? This just felt almost predestined, right? The way the last hands kind of played out. That's honestly one of the the roughest kind of downfalls I, I've seen in, in quite some time, Will. I mean, from 3.7 million, third in chips with 17 left. The morale at an all-time high to then out in 17th. And the last tournament, Henry, he was one of the chip leaders with about two tables left as well and went out in 11th. So he's cashing for a lot of money, Henry, but that's going to be a long walk back. It really is indeed. Hopefully see more of Vincent running deep here at the Triton Super High Roller Series in Jeju. Kulev climbing up to sixth. 15 left out of 190 of 800K for first. These top bounties of course, going to be pulled tomorrow as we welcome you back to the booth. We'll Jeff alongside myself, Henry Kilman. Uh, Will, I think the talking point, the very obvious one, was the Adrian Mateo show just then. Yeah, I didn't really get to see his final table performance. They only bring me in for, you know, the, you know. I, I know how it feels. It's my first time. But we're getting a full display. I mean, just absolute carnage. Complete aggression, and I'm sorry, you can't put that in your solver and calculate for it. That is just pure that human heart. Three hand. Yeah, it's gonna make the highlight real for sure. We're gonna be taking a quick 10 minute break, but then when we come back, really get into the business end of this 40k mystery bounties, we'll be working our way down to the FT. We'll see you guys very shortly. Welcome to the Daily Dose of GTO Quiz of the Day. Do you know how to identify good range bet boards? Cutoff versus button, 3 bet pot, 40 big blinds deep. Which of these flops should button C bet 100% of their range? 
Ace King King, Ace Seven Three, King Jack Six, or Eight Seven Three. Find the answer in the Daily Dose of GTO, our free ebook designed to help you master GTO poker in just five minutes per day. Introducing the all new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Just sees the wonder. Jeju Shinwa World. With the ace jack, 20 bigs. So what Yan comes with here, seven handed, is one of the table captains. Ten's just going to be too strong. Against Wang. You always got to think, though, when you open from under the gun and you get three bet. Looks like David's going through the whole range. Very good thousand. player, but he's going to rip it. 700. And maybe there's a pay jump going on or something? Curious why he wouldn't just put it all in there. Yeah. Vincent's obviously going to go with it. Keen eye, Will. We are on a pay jump. $4,000 ladder. Yes, yeah, so you see David. David, that, I assume if, if there was no pay jump, he probably would have just put it in there. Here, gives himself a chance to get another player eliminated and make the pay jump. Yeah, that has to be it. I mean, unless there's some weird leveling by not putting all your chips in so that the bounty's not up for grabs? I don't know. <coughs> Look, I'm not best friends with David, but I don't think he's playing those type of games. And Vincent, who got 11th in our last event, in a great spot, all things considered, right, with the ace-jack going bounty hunting. Yeah, flipping for a bounty, like you said. That top bounty worth half a million. The EV of each bounty is worth 79k, so these 4k ladders are still pretty insignificant compared to the size of the bounties up for grabs. So 
See how many time banks Jan wants to burn through here. He's going to get to see the relative good news that he's flipping. I believe both these guys are from New Zealand, Henry. I believe you're right. So this one and three more? Vincent, just come on, man. Let's get it. Let's get this over with. Let's flip. Let's see what we got to do. Yeah, Vincent's made his move. Bit of a smirk on the ant's face. The way he shuffles those chips, man. I mean, aggressive. He's an aggressive player, Henry. That is true. Is he going to burn through all of them? I mean, dude, what if you win the hand and you get put in a tough spot? Yeah, interesting that he's willing to go with all the time banks here, Henry, right? Like, just assuming if he wins that he'll act quickly going forward. And if he loses, obviously not an issue he'll have to worry about. Joey Chung taking a little nap. The baby getting some sleep there, Henry. Good time for it, no? Hey, listen, man, whatever they give you. You know what? You I'm going to take, take, take a sec here, too. <laughs> just close my eyes in the booth. A little 30-second power nap. Join us in chat. Take a little. This is the time. Close your eyes because we got a long night ahead of us. Or morning. Let us know where you're watching from. Play all the way down to a champion today. And the bounty draw tomorrow. Here we go. Spin time. Tables the tens. Wang, happy to see. It's not up against ace king, aces, kings, ace queen. So far, so good for Yan. Always nice to have a little life, though, right? The backdoor hearts, the, back the door jack. Bangkok, yeah, you know. Backdoor what? The backdoor Bangkok. One card to come. Yan needs to fade an ace. Nice call there, Henry. Okay. Ah, yeah. I don't know why. I just felt like the tens were holding, and piece of clubs, corner pocket, Wang up to 3.7 million. Second in chips overall, with 20 left, and gets that all important. Even Kulev have credit for overpairs, and also going back to the blockers, right? He's blocking a lot of them. He's blocking a lot of the good hands that Kulev has there. He also knows Kulev doesn't have a lot of eights, right? So. Just a really nice read. See what Ding wants to do here. Does have Joe in the small blind on short stack duties. Yeah, suited King looks like he's going to take it upstairs. And this has been another theme here, Henry. The suited kings. The apparently the silicone overlord, the solver master, loves them. The silicone overlord. That's what Rask calls it. <laughs> I need to. You need to get a little bit. I know you've been playing. I know you've been making runs. And Joey the Baby's all in here, taking a stand. And Kulev, wow. Okay. Can and this is going to be really interesting, Henry, because <laughs> Bao covers both players. So he can go. You think he's going to go for both bounties? 15 bigs? It's 15 bigs, Henry. Continuing coverage of the 40k mystery bounty here at the Triton Super High Roller Series in Jeju. It does turn out that there was a double elimination on the outer table. So we're down to 14 as Lazo Boytash bowed out in 15th for 56,000 to final two tables of seven. And it is none other than America's Sean Winter out in pole position. Someone that will we joke about here at the Triton Series. We're used to seeing him nurse a short stack, but he's actually got... I want to say 109 bigs. Really? 109. Is that? Look at him. That's not a typo? It's not a typo. Wow. That's 100 more than we're normally well, used to seeing Sean have. In his defense, he usually nurses the nub in non-bounty tournaments, Henry. That's true. And he normally gets it done as well. One of the best at laddering. He's going to be joined by Mateos, Vieira, Ding, Jaffe, and then over on Winter's table. He's got the Bulgarians 
One, two, and three. Tatchev, Kulev, and Bogdanov hey, on his Look at this. Left. Dimitar also made a final table earlier. The Bulgarians are making some noise here. They've been showing up in force since Monte Carlo. I know they got quite a few results out there. Adrian Mateus, as we touched on before the break, just getting it done. I mean, from two million up to five million, second in chips. Uh, good news for Mateus. Obviously, he doesn't have the chip leader, Sean Winter, on his table, so he's going to be covering everyone over on table two. You expect now players to think more about making that final table rather than going bounty hunting as lightly as we have seen them? Uh, the bounty bubbles are just bigger than the final table bubbles at this That's point. True. I think the players are going to be still really keen to get those big, you know, juicy potential bounties out there. I mean, if you know you can eliminate one player, Henry, and potentially get half a million dollars from it, that would be my main focus. 100%. Couldn't agree more. I mean, the next ladder is worth 6K, not to turn our nose up at 6K here between 14th and 13th. But those min bounties being worth 40K a pop and a bounty EV being worth 79,000, as Will mentioned, top bounty of half a million. Expect to see some lighter cooldowns than normal. We've got Dong Chen on just two bigs over on the blue feature table. But Henry, Dong, another one of these players. First event, 22nd place. Second event, 17th place for 88,000. Player I didn't know about coming in, but got to see him make some crazy bluffs. That's pretty wild. First time coming to a Triton Super High Roller Series, cashing two of the three events he's played. Now picking up his third cash here. Exactly. He's all in one. here. A four stall in. And Henry, that is not a roadside police officer in Milwaukee. That's Sean Winter with a mountain. Looking to go bounty hunting here with King Jack off. And that's Dimitar Danchev, one of these OGs Bulgarians. He's been around forever, Henry. Yeah. Won the PCA way back when. 11 years ago. Yeah. Just started playing poker. And there's his countryman. Julian, I did not get to see Julian play a lot in the tournament he had that big final table in, but talk to Rasty a little bit about it. He was going for it in every spot. See what Julian wants to do here in the cutoff. The suited oh. king. Looks like he wants to try and see three. Yeah, this guy likes to be in there, Henry. <laughs> and another familiar face. I'm sorry, I know it gets old, but Peter Arts. Ayers? Can you get the pronunciation on that one, Henry? Yeah, uh, let's go with Ayers. We could just ask him off air. Does have... N ninth in the first event, 22nd in the second, and then 29th in the third event. I'm fairly sure he picked up a title during his first what trip was the out Annie? to try and stop as well. 80? <laughs> Short winter. Did he have full 80? Okay. Dong looking to really spin this nub up here, Henry. He's pretty live. I mean, look, 26% equity, four ways. We'll take it. All these players trying to get that bounty. <coughs> and how about this? Dong Chen in an incredible spot to quadruple up. <laughs> you can't even contain the smirk. No, I know. When you have s when you have so little chips, Henry, you can let the poker face down for a little bit. Actually, Peter that flops best out of the other three. There is a side pot, 255k. Is this, I, is this Jack Reacher? No, 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 no. no. You need to get. You need to do a little touch up on your American stuff, Henry. I can tell you're out of the loop. I mean, it looks like he, it's like a pilot from Top Gun Maverick or something. I mean, Julian now, and again, Henry. I'm just gonna. I get the feeling this guy does not like folding. You think he's gonna? Okay, no, but go. I, he's gonna think about it. Peter now with an interesting spot. You defend the 10-3-0, looking to go bounty hunting. Next thing you know, you got Winter blasting this flop. Really awkward spot. Can't fold now, though. Too much in there, and the bounty looms. See Chris Brewer in the background. Dong, making sure that pot is right. Always when you flop trips yeah, in No yeah, Limit, Henry, like 
you want to make sure you get the full <coughs> amount. Uh, it's like, is that mine? That's mine over there, right? Interesting card here because there is a side pop between Peter and Sean. Sizable one as well, 5-2-5. Five, five. And if you're Sean, really enticing to try to get hands like this to fold here because, Henry, you sometimes still will beat Dong's hand. Yeah, with ki with King Jack, 100%, man. I mean, you're up against 100% range, right? He could have anything. On the big hunt. Yeah, I think uh, sometimes we go for this, and he does. The size of 350. And this again, Henry, like we saw with Adrian, he's not betting 1.1 million, which Peter has, but he's really putting him to the test for it, right? This how bet on the turn, yeah. How often are you going to call here and then expect... E Sean to check back the river. So he's making him think twice, setting the price, as they say, and Dong looking on intently. He's going to be very happy when these cards are eventually turned over. And also, does Peter want to be the one at risk taking a stand with the 10 3 with his own bounty on the line? You see, he hasn't folded yet, though, and this is the weird spot where you just don't have much, Henry, but you also don't necessarily think your opponent has much either. Yeah, there's Sean Winter from under the gun with the chip lead and <coughs> a player out of the big four stall in with a bounty on the line. Yeah, see, you see the frustration. He knows, but he can't do anything about it, and that's the beauty of Sean's bet. Whoa! Oh, nice. I can't <laughs> breathe. I'm a person, bro. I know. Was that a non-look from Chen? Winter really wanted that bounty, Henry. He's breathless right now. <laughs> Did he the really not look? Did you look? <laughs> I no look. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> the no look from Dong Chen pays off. I, I don't know if I believe that. He he seemed too happy. No, I believed it, Henry. <laughs> the non-look <laughs> flop strips. Shake of the head from Peter there as well, folding the best hand against Sean. Big old yawn for a brewer. It's making me tired. I guess, what, six days in to the series? I know, it, it feels like it's been a month, Henry. It does, it does. I, I can really sympathize with you on that one. Well, I also don't say that at all in a complaining type of way. Look, my job is really hard, Henry. Sitting back here, watching these guys play poker and talking a lot. Dong Chen now quadruples up to five BBs, Henry. What a feeling. I mean, give me a price. Give me a price on, on Chen shipping this. Someone in the chat. Lay me some odds. Do you, want on, do you want odds or even money? Well, on five big blinds. I'll, I'll take some odds. 112. I, 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 and look, Winter actually chipped up that pot, Henry. It did. Managed to squeeze out some money from Julian Bogdanov and the Belgian, Peter Eertz. Julian with fours. The type of spot we're much more likely to get involved, but One, six, three, Julian one, six, just, I, 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 this was a theme with Rast. He takes every spot, Henry. He does. Does need to be mindful, though. But yeah, here's the, the thing, this is big. why this is a good spot. Peter and Dong with very short stacks can easily, well, Peter not so much, but Dong, he's happy to call off both of their shoves. I do think this gets pitched in a regular tournament, Henry. Let's go, Dong, come on, back to back hands. Let's just spin the wheel. It's Queen time, Jack, and it it's goes. time to spin it up, man. It really is, right? We just, we just got it in. We gotta be hot. The deck's hot. Deck reads are a big thing here. That's a next level solver That's kind of true. thing I've learned. Knowing what cards will come out is really important. <coughs> Mulling over all of his options here. Peter still seems pretty frustrated by that. He's still shaking his head in the song. And this makes a lot of sense, Henry. We know he's calling if we shove. 
<laughs> Sean might call too. Why not gander at three <laughs> and then decide? Call. Call. I actually really like this play from Dong. I've seen him maneuver in interesting ways. Let's get the little overlay from Winter. Is that Five a check? 60 out there. <laughs> I, 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 okay. I, just, I thought you just... I think it's go time. Yeah, but look at this, Henry. Winter with the best hand. Definitely go time, though, for Dong. We don't call here with this little all cheese in. behind and not all go in. all in. Sean Call and Bogdan on folds. What does Sean fold and Bogdan on folds, I mean? Big spot for Dong. It was just down to 75,000 when he went all in, Henry. This is the start of a real spin if he can win here. Blind all in as well. It was forced all in, out of the big. Anti first. It wasn't even a full big blind. 14 left in the 40k. And Henry, when you're speeding home on the highway, trying to get home, there are a lot of officers that'll cut you some slack. But this is not the state trooper you want walking up to your window, is it? Are there officers that, that cut slack? For sure. Yeah? Yeah, can you say that on there? Yeah, there's, yeah, some good, yeah. there's some good apples out there. They'll just be like, yeah, no worries, sir. Yeah. Interesting here, notice Sean going for protection. Raising the bet, trying to isolate Dong and get that bounty. Nothing Yulian can do. And Sean in a great spot with the 7-5-0 here to go bounty, I think. But Dong also in a nice spot to be over a million. I'm, I'm rooting for the Dong spin here. I mean, come on. Hard not to. Get back up to a milli. Little Dong spin. Yeah, what a player. You just have to spin the Dong. King 10-7 looking for an ace, queen, jack, or a nine. There it is, Henry. Oh, just, he has it on the turn. Let's go. At this point, you just need to say ace and it'll come out, right? Winter, <laughs> two shots now to get the bounty. 0 for 2. And you can see it. He's a little steamed, Henry. Dong Chen, up to 12 and a half bigs. Again, a player I'd never seen play before, Henry, but we saw him pull off a sick bluff deep in one of these tournaments. Dong Chen, ladies and gentlemen. No longer the shortest stack. And we are no longer nursing the nub, Henry. We're spinning the dong. Someone in the chat says Jaffe wishes he came up with that. You're damn right I do. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Wait, sorry. <laughs> came up with which part? I did neither. Spin, spin. <laughs> Sean Winter, though, still with a pile. But he's going to be hunting Make that Dong Ch left. Chen bounty all night, Henry. This might be personal for him now. I want to see him get heads up at this point. I mean. Brutal. <laughs> and really, Henry, when I think of, like, rags to riches poker tournament stories, Chris Brewer comes to mind. I don't know if you were in the booth for it, but he cried tears after busting one of these I've events. I've cried tears. Real tears. And then he just went on a tear. Didn't quit. He's back, and look at this, Henry. Are we about to be spinning the dong again? I feel bad about this one, Will, I'll be honest with you. You don't feel good? No, you know, the 10-9, the, the, the queen-jack, I felt good. The ace-jack feels like almost too good of a hand. Your deck reads have been on point today. There he goes, though. I, I feel like the six is sure. coming up against the six. Six is a hot. We saw Mario oh, Moss back win. Yeah, I'm just gonna get a count to make sure. Is that the hand he won the last tournament yeah. with? He won mm. won the tournament against uh, Ido with <coughs> sixes. I mean, uh, yeah, but Sergio Ido is nine, not Dong Chen. Ten. Okay. Brewer getting a count. He's not. He's not folding. And Dong now, 2.2 million in here, Henry. Just two hands ago, down to 75k. Flicks it in the middle. Now a chance to be pretty like healthy. Three three in a row feels feels tough. Well, I don't know how I feel about this one. I feel good. You feel good? Okay. Keep spinning the dong. Get back up to 2.2 .2 mil. Oh, there we go. Jack in the window. What was I even concerned about? Jack 9-3. Ding dong. 
we're going from 75k to 2.2 million in, in three hands unless Brewer can find a six. Let's just boat up on the river. Just, just to, to be safe, just right? Just to like really make a statement. Henry, what and what? And what I mean, I get it. You haven't been here, right? You're a little rusty. That's you're jet lagged. True. It's forgivable. But what happened there, man, with that deck read? I mean, I was I was way off. I, you, you're probably still just feeling the the shock from playing with these guys, huh? I feel like a little, there's that. You need a little more time in the booth, my friend. There's definitely that, and also just underestimating Dong Chen, which is just a massive, a huge error, massive. Uh, Slip up on my end. Won't happen again. He's moved up to sixth in chips in the space of three hands, up to 28 bigs. And here, I do want to clarify, that's not my younger brother, but he's all in. JJ. Jonathan Jaffe, one of the best. And Wang has had a miserable day, Henry. Nothing has, you know, it's not like he's done anything wrong either. Remember, Mateos turned a set against him on the perfect barrel card. Yeah. Now a rough. suited ace in the hijack and just misery. And, and this is not just a clear fold, by the way, against John Jaffe. I really don't think it is. I'm not saying it's a good spot, but John is a maniac. Is it 19 bigs hijack. Well, what important. Dong is trying to figure out is are there these offsuit aces, right? Is, is, is John doing this with the ace four off? How wide is he doing it? The ace seven does feel... Light, but Dong doesn't have a lot of chips behind. Sorry, Wang. Can't stop thinking about Dong. I'm telling you. There it goes, Henry. Really nice call, too, by Wang. And he's in a good spot to double here. Jaffe looking to go bounty hunting. That's a pretty bold call there from Wang, just correctly... Recognizing that JJ is going to have all the suited broadways, and as Will mentioned, the weaker Ace X. Again, Wang, first Triton, right? Cash the first two events here in the money again. In a great spot to double, or at least chop this pot. A lot of chop opportunities here, but. A lot. Well, you take like seven spades. And yeah, this is. Uh, looking for a seven now. Chop it up, gents. One for JJ to take note of, though. That Wang's not afraid. The table, too, to as well. 19 bigs. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of these guys have played with Jonathan over the last couple of years at Triton events. Know that he's going to be re-jamming correctly there. Nice call from Wang. Okay. Joe Vieira there at this table as well. Fresh off a of final table. Did he final table that one Mateos one, or was that a different event? Or up to this hand, or up to this level? This level. Yeah. I think I've seen Jonathan with the final table pitch. You might be right. No, I meant uh, Joa Fiera, I believe. The event that Mateos won was the 30K. I believe Joa final tabled that. Yes, he did fifth place in that event. And look at this start for Vieira. 40th in the 25K silver main, and again, 34th in the 20K. Just a repeated theme. John gonna raise the button. And this is Daniel Paulson, Henry. To my knowledge, the only poker player from Iceland. A cool story here at Triton. Won a package, has played a few events, right? You know, you win a package here, Henry. You got some buy-ins. How about this? 13th place in the 20K No Limit Hold'em for 68,000. 47th place in the 25K No oh, Limit Hold'em. Oh, a little Hold cash like me, okay. How about a parlay into this, Henry? Let's do it. Now still in, and that is Orpin. I'm gonna let Henry deal with his last name. Kisachikoglu. You could have tried though, Will, look. I did try the other time on stream, it's really bad. Give it a spin. Won't make the viewers deal with that. And for me, Henry, this is the poster boy of businessman, quotation mark. No. Amateur, no. Recreational, no. Yeah, nah. Killer, yes. Savage, 
bougie. John Jaffe savage. picking up the snowmen, Henry. And can you explain why these are called the snowmen? Uh, I can't, actually. Neither can I. I don't know. Because snowmen have three balls. Bottom, mm -hmm. base, middle, and head. The eights only have two. So, just confusing. And Dan now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, there, you never made a snowman before? You roll yeah, up no, the snow? I, I, I see it now. Okay. I see it's just the... The I've just been struggling with that so far. The innuendo in the booth is... Uh, no, well, there's, it's just... <laughs> you don't have snow where you grew up, did you? Uh, we used to get quite a lot. So you we never did. made a snowman? We did, yeah. yeah and you did. roll up one, right? Yeah. And then you roll up another? Yeah. And then you put one on top for the yeah, head? Yeah, never really got that far. You never finished the head? No. Was <laughs> never. Not enough snow? Rough childhood, Henry? Yeah. Okay, let's, you know, let's... Yeah. Uh, Let's get back to the poker. Warping. It's cold, long winters. Warping's seen a few cold, long winters, hasn't he? Has that look about him? And I feel like if we're happy to throw some chips in with the Ace Five suited in a regular event, we're definitely happy to in the bounty. And this is interesting, though. The limp, Henry. Don't see this too often. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised by this. What if this is a byproduct of having Mateus on the button? Mateus with the king jack off. We saw him bluff his way to a win with the same hand earlier. I think same suits Henry against uh, Alex, if you remember, deciding how he wants to play this on the button. Wouldn't have expected anything less. And Wang now with an ace 10 off in the big. And obviously, Henry, it's really tough playing with Adrian, but if there's one thing you feel like you can use against him, it's his aggression. Oh, Wang agrees with you. That's all you can eat for 1.5 million. He's actually going to be in pretty great shape against Adrian. We've already seen one king hit the mark. It's assuming that Adrian calls, which I think he will. I the think Orpin just be. making sure the stack size here, right? You don't want to fold if the guy has somehow 600,000. Yeah. A lot of math coming into play at this stage of the tournament. Ladders, bounties up for grabs, ICM. And Adrian not loving his hand but getting a really good price. Obviously, if you could see the equity, he'd call Henry, but... Wang can have ace-king, ace-jack, jacks. That's why it's such a good shove. He's putting Adrian in a tough spot. Really good read by Wang. Yeah, not often that you see Adrian pained by a decision. And you know one of the beauties of being all in, Henry? You cannot be bluffed. That's true. They've tried doing that to me before and it didn't work. I think Adrian's going to pitch this, you know. That's a pretty huge pickup for Wang. Up to two million. Nice answer. Contested. Very nice. And the cool thing about this, right, we get to see Adrian. We get to see Alex Kulev. But we also get to see players like Wang that we haven't seen before. A little peek into the way that they're doing this in another hand here between Chris and Dimitar. And these are the type of holdings, Henry, with 20 big blind stacks, things can get a little out of hand. Let's cut off the big blinds. 700k in the middle. SPR less than two going to the turn. And what a turn for Chris. Backdoor flush draw now to go with his gut shot. Dimitar Danchev and Chris Brewer. Dimitar does cover slightly. Three fifty. Chris may be thinking about a shove now, Henry. <laughs> After Dimitar bets three fifty. It's the type of hand we should have a lot of equity no matter what when we're called, and it just feels like such a massive win if we can get the shove through. 
Yeah, it does still have some fold equity, although I'm not sure against half pot. Well, we're getting bluffs to fold out, but those bluffs oftentimes beat our actual hand. Let's see what the Brewdog comes with. Like you said, if we jam, a lot of good things can happen. Just take the pot right here, right now. If we do get called, even up against the hand like King Queen, we still have 27% equity. But to your point, I think in the bounty structure, calling makes a lot more sense because we just don't have the same fold equity. Uh, bro seems to agree with you. Going to a river now. Big river for both, not to state the obvious. Yeah, the Sprewer drills the Nine of Hearts River. River's the Queen High straight. 1.4 million out there. Brutal river for Dimitar. That's grim because on so many turn cards, Brewer's just going to have to fold. But that three of spades is giving him enough to stick around. And Brewer's basically going to shove. Really gross spot for Dimitar now. By the way, third in the first event here, 375,000, Henry. 28th in the 25K after that for 54,000. 19th in the 30K for 65,000. And then live here with 14 left for Dimitar. But again, it's going to be too close if he can't find this fold. Really good player. Can he sniff this out? The problem is, Henry... What does Chris do with an eight here, right? It, does he turn eights into bluffs? Yeah, it, it's there's just not a lot of bluffs. Really good fold from Dimitar. Terrible river. Big pot for Chris, though. Yeah, with that pot, Brewer back up to around average. Danchev down to 12th in chips. 11 big blinds and a dream. A rough couple of orbits for Bogdanov and Danchev. Kulev. The Bulgarian out in front of 29. Sean Winter still in pole position with 87 bigs. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake. Blinds will be going up to 50,000, 100,000. It's the Sean Winter affairs. We welcome you back to the break desk. Will Jaffe alongside myself, Henry Kilbane. A really short stint there at the tables, Will. We are headed to a scheduled break. I think the story of that has to be the, uh, the Dong Chen spin. Spin in the dong. Spin in the dong from uh, sub one big back up to 21 bigs. Currently seventh in chips. And uh, yeah, going to step away for 10 minutes. We'll return playing down to the final table of the 40k mystery bounty here at the Triton Super High Royal Series in Jeju. We'll see you very shortly. Welcome to the Daily Dose of GTO Quiz of the Day. Do you know how to identify good range bet boards? Cutoff versus button, 3 bet pot, 40 big blinds deep. Which of these flops should button C bet 100% of their range? Ace King King, Ace 7 3, King Jack 6, or 8 7 3? Find the answer in the Daily Dose of GTO, our free ebook designed to help you master GTO poker in just 5 minutes per day. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
Just Seize the Wonder. 제주 신화 월드. Our last event. In a great spot, all things considered, right? With the ace jack. Going bounty hunting. Yeah, flipping for a bounty, like you said. That top bounty worth half a million. The EV of each bounty is worth 79k. So these 4k ladders are still pretty insignificant compared to the size of the bounties up for grabs. See how many time banks Yan wants to burn through here. He's going to get to see the relative good news that he's flipping. I believe both these guys are from New Zealand, Henry. I believe you're right. So I have this one and, and three more? Uh, this is the third one that they're doing, yeah. Vincent, just come on, man. Let's get, it, let's get this over with. Let's flip. Let's see what we got to do. Yeah, Vincent's made his move. Bit of a smirk. On the Ant's face, the way he shuffles those ships, man, I mean. Aggressive. He's an aggressive player, Henry. That is true. Is he going to burn through all of them? I mean, dude, what if you win the hand and you get put in a tough spot? Yeah, interesting that he's willing to go with all the time banks here, Henry, right? Like, just assuming if he wins that he'll act quickly going forward. And if he loses, obviously not an issue he'll have to worry about. Joey Chung taking a little nap. The baby getting some sleep there, Henry. Good time for it, no? Hey, listen, man. Whatever they give you. You know what? You I'm gonna take. take. I'm gonna take a sec here too. <laughs> Just close my eyes in the booth. A little 30 second power nap. Join us in chat. Take a little. This is the time. Close your eyes because we got a long night ahead of us. Or morning. Let us know where you're watching from. Playing all the way down to a champion today. And the bounty draw tomorrow. Here we go. Spin time. Tables the tens. Wang happy to see. He's not up against ace king, aces, kings, ace queen. So far so good for Yan. Always nice to have a little life, though, right? The backdoor hearts, the, back the door jack. Bangkok, yeah, you know. Backdoor what? The backdoor Bangkok. One card to come. Yan needs to fade an ace. Nice call there, Henry. Again. Ah, yeah. I don't know why. I just felt like the tens were holding, and ace of clubs, corner pocket, Wang up to 3.7 million. Second in chips overall, with 20 left. And gets that all important. Even Kulev cool credit for overpairs. And also going back to the blockers, right? He's blocking a lot of them. He's blocking a lot of the good hands that Kulev cool has there. He also knows Kulev cool doesn't have a lot of eights, right? So just a really nice read. See what Ding wants to do here. He does have Joe in the small blind on short stack duties. A suited king looks like he's going to take it upstairs. And this has been another theme here, Henry. The suited kings. The apparently the silicone overlord, the solver master, loves them. The silicone overlord. That's what Rask calls it. <laughs> I need to. You need to get a little bit. I know you've been playing. I know you've been making runs. And Joey the baby's all in here, taking a stand. And oh. Kulev, wow. Okay. Can and I get this is going to be really interesting, Henry, because <laughs> Bao covers both players. So he can go... You think he's going to go for both bounties? 15 bigs? It's 15 bigs, Henry. One of those guys could be worth $500,000 if he busts them and pulls the right ticket. Uh, someone could do the back of napkin math and figure out how many bigs a bounty's worth at the moment. Oh, it would help me solve it on the fly. I'm If I'm bow here, I'm calling, but I'm also a big part of me Seven. just gambling because these guys are so much better than me. But I feel like he's getting a... It's obviously not the hand you want, right? You could just be 
completely smashed. But Joe only has two big blinds, right? Joe has two. Sorry, Joe has uh, four. Kulev could be re-jamming hands like Jack-10, Queen-Jack, Queen-10. You're really hoping for a situation like this, which is not fantastic, but... Another problem, though, is if you call and lose, you're crippled now. It's a lot to think about. Ding has taken down a mystery bounty before. Also pulled out the top bounty prize, if I'm not mistaken. Knows how to get it done. Yeah, first place in the 30k mystery bounty here in Cyprus. The Triton <laughs> series. pitch it pained by the two bounty spot probably one of those hands he's gonna have to review later on when he gets back to the PC For now I'm gonna have to just live with his decision 680 out there nice little overlay for Joe if he can find an ace King high flop will does have the spade working Joey got fourth in the 25k silver main here for 200, sorry, for 560,000, Henry, but he's going to need an ace here. He's going to be out. No Barry this time. As Joe Chong departs in 18th. Locking up another cash, as Will mentioned, this series. 45,000 for his powerful muscle. Depends. For some of us, I guess. For some of us, I was about to say, you know. <coughs> <laughs> Depends who you're asking. Ask the chat, I mean. I knew you were going to go there. Vincent, back in the action. And I notice Adrian does this thing. I, this is not unintentional. This is this is a little bit of, I'm just going to F with you here, Henry. The, the, the posturing. I'm yeah, telling yeah. you, a lot of people would just fold here. They're not 5-4 off. He also may just play it, Henry. I don't know. But th I don't think that is unintentional. Even Making if he has sweat. no plans on playing yeah. the hand, he's going to make Vincent sweat. And so is Bao here. Waited patiently, picks up the nines. Can't think of any other move than all in. What does he come with? Oh. Love that watch from Bao, Henry. And that's probably like what? Like a couple hundred dollars, that plastic, the blue? She. Maybe in the store here? A couple hundred thousand? Say and Vincent. A couple hundred thousand, dude. Vincent snaps him, and he's going to go bounty hunting. Look at get a lot of those oh, chips back. He just lost problem. to Adrian. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, we did say it's go time for Ding. Going to need to spin the wheel. Nine's in good shape. Empires have been built on smaller edges than 10% but Ace of Hearts in the mm. window followed by a 9 in the kitchen and it's just getting from bad to worse for Vincent does pick up an ace out now though Henry Barry Greenstein is there one left this would be a dirty way to do it nice double for Bao brutal turn of events there for Vincent just got put in the meat grinder by Kulev A warm welcome back to the Triton Super High Roller Series here in Jeju. Will Jaffe alongside myself, Henry Kilman, as we work our way down to the final table of the 40k mystery bounty. Will, I don't want to state the obvious, but it really is getting to the business end of this tournament. I was just looking on the app. We have nine stacks with less than average, and I feel like this frame here, these next couple of levels... Uh, we're going to see a potential bloodbath. I mean, people are going to have to start going for some of these bounties. Yeah, and then we've got the double kind of whammy of you not only have to navigate the bounties, final table ICM coming ICM. up. 800K up top there, you know. So it's going to be interesting to see how these players navigate. You never know with the speed with these things, Henry. It could be a bloodbath. It could be a slog. It really just comes down to a lot how the players want to play, but also how the cards are distributed. But... I mean, I'm just hoping to see some more Mateos action because 
it's been crazy. I, I was about to say, you know, you, you're talking about it potentially being a bloodbath. When you throw in people like Mateos, like Kulev, like Jonathan Jaffe, you know, all of these guys in the top five, these are guys that are not afraid to play big parts with marginal holdings and just really apply the pressure. Yeah, it's it's not going to be a fold to the final table type of scenario. For I'm sure. pretty sure about that. Um, it's going to be a uh, here's Johnny, Jack Nicholson in The Shining type of, you know, he's coming through the door covered in blood with an axe. Uh, and that's what we're here for at Triton, right? Those it type of things? It really is. I mean, table two is where I'm really paying attention to because over on table one, you've just got the Sean Winter show. Then everyone else has less than average. You've got a couple of short stacks out there. We know Winter's going to be going to work, look to, looking to claim some bounties. But table two, you've got Mateos, Jaffe, Kulev, all top five, uh, as well as Orpin, sorry, I should say. So four of the top five stacks. And that's where we could really see like a massive collision for the chip lead. Yeah. Blue table you see is Sean's table right yep. now. Uh, but the red table, much more up for grabs. And those are three very aggressive players at the top of the pile. Yeah, Winter going to be looking to hand out some speed in tickets over on the blue table. But my attention. On the red table, Mateos, Jaffe, Kisichagoglu, all battling it out for table captain. Daniel Palson on short stack duties with six big blinds. Going to look to spin in Dong Chen's style. I mean, Dong was down to less than a big blind, was forced all in. Won three hands in a row to then spin it up to 21 bigs. He's very comfortable now, middle of the pack. And Daniel Paulson. Go time. Yeah. All in. Touched on it earlier, but the only player I know from Iceland that plays poker won a package, parlayed it with a couple of big caches here, now another, but looking for that first final table. Yeah, confidence must be I already have the bounty through here, so. the roof. For Daniel, as Will mentioned, getting a few caches, parlaying it into another cache here in the, the mystery bounty. I think Vieira. This just right. feels too good, yeah. It, we have hands we dominate. And Orpin now. This is really interesting, Henry. Two bounties for him and Jack-10 suited. And uh, yeah, I just That's don't know how one, you one, three, don't gamble here, honestly. One, two, five, zero. One, two, five. Joe shove only for 12 bigs. Yeah, this just feels mandatory. And Orpin, Orp the Turk, in a great spot to take two bounties. Obviously, he's not ahead, but it's essentially even three ways. Daniel is ahead. Huge spot for him. It doesn't like. You have a good spot. As long as the chips is coming this way, then we're all good. We're all a good spot. Everyone live, not to state the obvious. Yeah, everyone is happy with the holding. <laughs> With mine. Yeah. Always rooting for the underdogs. Daniel venturing out for the first time. Be nice to see him hold here. Oh. Ace in the window. Oh, smooth. Yeah, that's about Andre, as clean as it guy, comes, Henry. 95% now yeah, for Daniel. <laughs> but it's never over, is it? And a really bad card for Vieira because he now needs to catch to stay in the tournament or Orp will take him out. Oh, that's true. Didn't think of that. Yeah. Disastrous run for Vieira. That's brutal. Yeah. Well spotted, Will. Yeah, so Daniel obviously gets the triple, but the 10 on the turn, Orpin did cover Jao. So it's Jao that's actually out in 14th. Daniel gets the triple, and Orpin gets the bounty. Yeah, huge triple for Daniel Paulson. Again, 13th place yeah, yeah. in the 20K here for 68,000. Then in the last and event, 47th place for 43,000. So many accolades. This is the yeah. biggest triple this of is my life. life. And, you know, and it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, every, now every head will be an accolade. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Here hmm? from the man himself. Biggest triple up of his huh. life. 13 left in the biggest buy-in tournament of his career. Did you? Yeah, I saw him early on, I believe before he had cashed anything, Henry, and we just had a brief chat. He told me about, he was from Iceland, he won a package. I said, how long are you staying? He said, probably not long, Henry, it's pretty expensive here. <laughs> I said, but what, what about if you make some runs? And he said, yeah, we'll see, parlay it. Orpin, though, 
Great result for him to get the bounty there, Henry. I don't even think he cares about losing the pot to Daniel. No, I want it. I want it. Right? And he made yeah, money on the side pot. Yes. Yeah, like five, it. Seven, five to him, and then this to me. And I gave, yeah, I want it. That could be 500,000 too, Henry, if he gets the right bounty card. Hey, listen, Orpen's been known to, to pull out top bounties before in Vietnam. Very first bounty edition of the Triumph Stop. Didn't make the money, but did claim one bounty. Pulls the 250k. I have three. Warp the Turk. Six and a half million in Triton winnings. Two titles. Looking for another one here. And they don't need to be on the table, right? They're in my pocket. Number one on yeah. Turkey's all-time I mean, money list. Jaffe can raise it up with the nines under the gun. And an ace for Daniel. What up? other card does he have there? Looks interested. Does indeed. I'm gonna pitch it. Live reads from the booth, not on point. How do I have 4.6? Orp though with King Queen off here. Always interested to see how these guys navigate these spots. Interesting. I would see on here, I guess. King Queen, interesting hand because, it, yeah, it call feels most comfortable here. Deep with Jaffe. Also, this brings in Bao, right, for his potential bounty. Going to a flop. Two animals saw a flop, Henry. What do you think happens? Is this the bloodpath we've been waiting for? Maybe not. Maybe a path to victory here for Orpen. Certainly so. Okay out there. Two overs to JJ's nines. John with the weird spot. Just going to check. Here's the king for Orp. Yeah, obviously the range of hands that flat out the small of some concern to Jonathan. Hence the flop check back. Does allow Orpin to improve to the best hand on the King of Clubs turn. Still an awkward spot. Check, check to the river. Another king. Great run out for Orp. Yeah, Orpin going to be playing. At least five million at the end of this hand. See if he can extract some value from the nines. Seems unlikely, but you never know with JJ. Might want to put on his cape. Should he face a bet? Here comes. How much does he want to go for? Very thin, very light, charging, kind of targeting exactly a hand like this. Knows John probably doesn't have much, also blocks a lot himself. Just hoping to get called by this, or Henry, potentially induce the animal that is Jonathan Jaffe. Ah, nice pitch. Always easy to fall into the trap that Orpin's just at it, making a disciplined fold. But like you said from the small blind right, not a lot of bluffs there for Orpin on that run out. I have to agree with you on that one. And we did confirm, Henry, that is Diao Bing's bag, not Wang's. Wang is gone, bag is still there. Yellow Louis Vuitton bag. Talking of bags, talking of merchandise and fashion, how about the Triton Super High Roller Series exclusive Triton merch giveaway? Scan the QR code on your screens. Get involved. Seen a lot of the fresh merchandise on display by a lot of the players and some of us here in the booth as well. Why not? It's a giveaway. Exclamation mark giveaway in the chat. And talking to the chat, Dana saying congratulations, Henry, on your cash. Thank you, Donna.
appreciate it. Would have preferred to, you know, last an extra half hour or so inside the money, but I'm not going to turn my nose up. And cash in the 25k. Daniel now with ace jack off, going to raise it up. Nice for Daniel to cover Ding. Not so nice for him to have John Jaffe in the big, though, with a very pretty Jack-10 of hearts. And these are interesting spots, because obviously very comfy defend, but also type of hand John might get some ideas about. Certainly a rejammable type of hand. There we go. All you can eat. <coughs> and goes for the jam. <laughs> And Daniel doesn't know it, but he hasn't dominated. Well, because you know my average buy, and I have to call. He calls. Wow, great call from Daniel for his tournament life. He's way ahead here. Not long ago, Henry, he was down to about 600,000. Can spin it up to almost 4 million if he can hold here. I'm always rooting for the underdogs, man. I just heard Daniel say, look, Jonathan, you know what my average buy normally is. Zero love ever played. Have to make the call here. In great shape to get a huge double. Ace in the window again for Daniel. Some sweaty turn cards, though. Eight of hearts for a good sweat, right? I like this guy. Yeah, yeah. I do too. How about the eight of clubs? It's not sweaty enough. It's all good. Some, some, little. Oh, yeah, that felt like an extra pump. Nobody, but. Hope we didn't see it. <laughs> Clean run out for Daniel. Up to 3.9 million, 62,000 <laughs> guaranteed for these final 13. Andre, did I, I just and he's up I to like fourth in chips. I I love you. <laughs> I mean, really just zero. enjoying the moment. In the yeah, like zero. I mean, because of the big Came bank back from break, shortest stack yeah. with six bigs. We're just seeing One these back. spins zero in this mystery bounty. Talking of spins, Peter <coughs> now looking for one of his own. Shortest stack with nine bigs. We we're just going to pitch the ace nine from under the gun. And look at this the spin master, ace king off. 11 bigs. Quite a dream scenario. Morning. I like the jam with the bounties in play. No action behind, unfortunately, for Dong. But does pick it up, up to 1.4, 14 bigs. Bit of breathing room to try to newcomer. Alex Kula, cool, very healthy stack there for the extremely dangerous Bulgarian player. And it's cool because, like, we've, s we've all seen Adrian Mateos, right? We've seen Dan Smith. But how much of us have seen Alex Kulev, right? We get a mix here of guys we've seen, a lot of newcomers, a lot of the best, really all of the best here at Triton. Old school <laughs> against new school. I don't think Mateos went to school, Henry. There's no way they teach that there, right? Which part? Poker. What other part is there? There, I mean, <coughs> in the UK, I know there oh. are loads of, um, what do they call them? So like I would like po to point poker you? clubs? Uh, like one like one. U uni poker? Uni. I never clubs. understood that. Yeah, poker societies. Alex going to raise the button with a six off, and Chris in the big with pocket queens. <coughs> and again, uh, one thing I will say is, like, you don't want to play with Alex Kulev. You don't want to play with Adrian Mateos. But the one 
kind of saving grace is you know these guys are aggressive, Henry, and you can sometimes get them to trip over that. With the queens here, this is a spot where I think Chris is really going to want to... Yeah, you, you do this right because you want to in give them rope. You want to give them a chance. You don't want to take away their option to use that aggression against themselves. I really like the injuries here from Brewer. 21 bigs. Knows that he's going to have some three bet folds, especially out of the big against the button open. And Kulev with the type of hand that can get into trouble. Having the ace here is always kind of an out. How bad can you really be? And you can also take this down when Chris is bluffing. Kulev looks really interested. Type of player who's capable of anything. Wisely lets it go though. Good read there. Very quick table. Strong man. Powerful. And the queen's just a little too Pick weak to slow play there, Henry, I think. Maybe kings or aces would be really appealing. Ace two off. <laughs> it feels like a mandatory three, but that's what they're playing for, by the way. <laughs> king Beautiful <laughs> trade. Maybe <laughs> king just off. <laughs> <laughs> Age yourself, we're making 900,000. <laughs> what? We make it 900,000. Ooh, spicy. <laughs> it is. <laughs> right, I'll just snap call. Oh, yeah, the king six. <laughs> Folds around to Alex. And I didn't notice this, Henry, but this is kind of a Bulgarian table here. Yeah, seats one, two, and three. We've got the Bulgarian Armada. Peter, eight, four of clubs. Against the min, it's, it's a defend. It's very comfortable. After just try and realize that they're stacked up, see a flop. You go for a stop and go, Let's try and flop a piece. Spin the wheel, right? We've seen it time and time again. So far in this event, seems to be the theme. <coughs> Short stack spinning. Interesting though, because this is not really the piece you wanted, but we don't have a lot of cheese behind. King Jack four, no club in sight. Just a naked bottom pair against a C-bet. Very aggressive. Kulev with the open ender, actually a equity favorite will. 53%. Yeah, that's the gross part about the four here is even when it's good, so many bad cards that can come. Kulev did raise the cutoff here though. Having a covering stack. All in? Yeah, and I'm not surprised to see this Henry, honestly. Kulev gonna call and be ahead, but pretty great spot for Peter to double up, all things considered. 50-50. I actually really like the check jam from Not Peter rather than going with the stop <laughs> and go. The reason being is you get Kulev to just like C bet with 8 7, 9 8. Oh, look at that. Just instant delivery. But Kulev going to be playing 4.2 million now. 12 left. Another deep run for Peter, though. Obviously, uh, yes. wanted to stay in. 22 is my idea This is already his fourth cash this series. Good young players. The Germans, Henry. So far, it's been the Germans and the Austrians here. First title for Fader Holz, Second title for the young Austrian Roland. Yeah. Mosbeck, the Austrian, takes down the last one. Yeah, they've really been stepping up their game over the last few stops. Put Suka in the chat, ask it a bit of a weird question, Will, if I'm being honest, <laughs> saying, do you no, speak Bulgarian? No, like, um, I think it was Armada, that's Bulgarian, right, that word you <coughs> used? I think Armada's Spanish. Producer James? Yeah? Weird to ask me if I speak Bulgarian, though. No more than the casual chair. Yeah, Kuvora Bulgarski, da. 
Uspek na bogarite. Is it like I want a meatball or something? Yeah, I asked for a Greek salad and uh, some french fries with sparkling water on the side. Nice order. Thanks, man. Is that your go-to as well? Or well, the thing I Tuesdays? love is when we would go to fast food, you always get the the soda, the bubbles. Yeah. With the french fries, the burger, so you can keep going. <laughs> the recharger. Winter now. Going to get a little out of line with the suited king, but Henry, it's bounty hunting time. You're telling me that man is not a bounty <laughs> hunter? Come <laughs> on, that's man. what he is. <laughs> this dude is just iconic. And Brewer, just going to call the button. Interesting here, Henry. Awkward stack size, but also maybe trying to trap Dong. Yes, and Dong's, Dong's tough to trap. He really is. Going to see a flop here, though. Price is too good. Twelve remained. King, ten, five a little. Something for everyone. Top pair for Winter. Bottom for Dong. Brewer with the Broadway gutty. And overcard. 700k out there. <coughs> Obviously great to flop top pair, but a dicey spot with Brewer having a lot of hands connecting with this flop. And Brewer does have one. It's kind of one of the ones that's incentivized to start bluffing, isn't it, Henry? Feels like it. Brewer agrees. Comes out firing 200 into 7. In a weird way, it's close to the bottom of his range, but it has a lot of properties. And, and the beauty of the Jack of Clubs is... Future Streets, right? A club on the turn. Winter obviously going nowhere. Gotta respect the fold from Chen there, by the way. Just correctly realizing that even if we have the best hand currently, it's gonna be really difficult to realize across turns and rivers and get the pair of fives to show down. Just preserving that 11 big blind stack. 10 pairing on the turn does bring in the backdoor diamond draw. Kind of an awful card for Brewer because Winter will be check calling plenty of tens. On the flip side, Ace Jack, sorry, he blocks Ace Ten of Hearts. Just feels like Ace Jack has showdown. <coughs> it has a little, yeah, for sure. Winter now in an interesting spot. All options on the table. Block, check, and induce. Yeah, and Brewer now. Really interesting spot. We do have short on value, but it's not... <laughs> it's not a ton, Henry. King three is good, my friend. Sean Winter continues his climb. Top of the chip counts with 8.9 million. Kind of burst onto the Triton scene halfway through last year. Hmm? Came fourth in the 50K, 488,000. Came fourth in the 200K Invitational for 1.6 million. Then cashed the main event. Came sixth in that one, one of the most star-studded main event final tables of Triton history. I believe that was the one that Jason Kuhn took down. Had a bit of a dry spell in London. Back here in Jeju. 0 for 5 so far, but in great shape to pick up his first Triton title here in the 40K. Mystery bounty. 804,000 for first. The top bounty prize of 500,000. Kulev going to get back in the action. And we've seen these shorter stacks navigate, Henry. It looks like it's time for the bigger stacks to go to war here. 
Queen seven of diamonds suited in the big winter, obviously going nowhere. Very interesting flop. Top pair for winter, but a double belly buster straight draw for Kulev. Nine or a king gives him a straight. And the type of flop after you raise, barrels tend to go in. Yeah, this could be a really fun one. Strap yourselves in. Kulev continuing for half pot and immediately gets uncomfortable for Sean on the queen jacket, even with top pair. That jacket diamonds, though, will offer in some relief in the form of a backdoor flush. Always nice to have a little backup when you're out there on the highway and the person you've pulled over is getting a little feisty, Henry. <laughs> I, lo I love this bit, man. Wow, but look at this. It. Wow. A lot of respect for Kulev there, Henry. Mm -hmm. King 10. It <laughs> Close. King 9. It's almost like he felt the barrels coming, <laughs> you know? Against the half pot sizing, it's like, okay, look, this is going to get really uncomfortable. I think this is kind of Kulev's sort of image and reputation and feel at the table there. Don't think Sean would have folded that to anyone. Really surprised to see that. Oh, Kulev getting away with a speeding ticket there. Sean Winter just folding top pair. Significant drop off. Brewer and Dimitar Danchev both nursing around 20 bigs and an even bigger drop off to Yulian Bogdanov. 12 bigs, Dong Chen on short stack duties, but we've already seen he knows how to spin up a stack. 12 remain, 40k mystery bounty, 804,000 up top. We will be playing down to a champion today, 62,000 guaranteed. We are on a $7,500 pay jump. King Queen. Between 12th and 11th. People saying they give way too much respect to Kulev. It's, look, it's so much easier when you can see, right? When you're down there at the table, it's a different animal, Henry. You know this. Dude, I, I made the most disrespectful call against Kulev <coughs> out of love the other day, like to the point where uh, some eyebrows were, were raised. Um, and it's, it's n nothing but love for Kulev. And he's so aggressive. I just called with second pair with four diamonds on board. And look at this. This is really interesting. Winter putting Dimitar all in. And Dimitar's in a great spot to double here, Henry. It says run it. One of the OG Bulgarians. 18 bigs, blind v blind. Bit of a cold deck for Sean, ace v ace. Chop it up. Not greedy, asking for a chop. Queen six five, gonna be tough. King. Chop on this one. Jack. <laughs> Nine. There's the jack you asked for. Five. He wants the Six. chop here, Henry. He's not greedy. There's the board pair, but nope. not the one that he was looking for. And a Dim kicker plays. Dimitar Danchev, Henry. Again, third in the opening event, 375,000. 28th in the 25K for 54,000. 19th in the 30K for 65,000. Is this the one? He's been looking for a breakthrough. It's been a long time since he had a big win. Wang gonna raise the cutoff with ace four diamonds and fork the Turk, not giving up that button. And look at this. Jaffe with the beautiful ace queen of hearts in the big. Yeah. Trying to see if he covers yeah. Wang here. Yeah, 1.95. 1 Work double checking. Uh, Open was trying to see a flop in position with the queen nine suited. Not going to be able to, as one would assume. Jaffe is going to announce himself here. Yeah, what does John come with? All in. Oh, you can eat. Call. This one's going to get through. I mean, Wang's going to ask for a count, but 
Don't see him calling off with the ace four of diamonds here. JJ going to be back up to 2.5 million. Wang just wants to go bounty hunting. Oh. Surely not. Last pitch hit. One line fifty. This feels like a few bigs too many for Orpin to spin the wheel. ICM. That preservation stuff as well. I'm just trying to do the math before making the decision. He's going to gamble. Deep in the tank on this one. Feels close. Surely Queen Nine hits the mark. Queen 10, maybe. We roll the dice. There we go. Queen 9 pitches it. Painful fold for Orpin, but does ultimately make the right decision. Sevens. Played against okay. Alex. Did indeed. He got to play against Dimitar as well. Ace Jack. Jaffy. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> the re through. Happy to just you pick up the chips. Up to 25 get? bigs. Uh, hell uh, Queen Jack. The Conquistador. Now gets the jack ten of hearts. The same hand that got Jaffe in trouble earlier, under the gun. Going to raise it up. Or with ace queen off. Interesting spot against Adrian. Yeah, I feel like with a hand like this, Henry, it's time to take a stand. In position, covering the opener. I don't think this hand's over and done with, though, Will. Absolutely not, Henry. Just getting started. Little three bet pot. Number one on Spain's all-time money list, squaring off against number one on Turkey's all-time money list. 12 left in the 40K mystery bounty. And with Mateos, I really have come into the habit of, I just don't try to predict what he does, Henry. Because I don't know, ever. My grandfather used to say to assume is to make an ass out of you and me. And I think uh, some some solid wisdom there when it comes to, to Mateos. That that 9-3 hand a couple of hours ago. If you'd asked me to bet on every street what I'd expect Mateos to do, I, I would have lost a, a lot of money. May find a path to victory here on the King-7 tray. A couple of hearts. Open with just ace high. Yeah, and this is a really gross feeling, Henry. We three bet the ace queen. We know we're doing very well against Mateos' range. But now we have to deal with this. It's really tricky. I don't blame him. It's 
a small continue. And he's trying to set the price here, Henry. No, will 15 percent. Will it work, though? Adrian consistently makes his opponent's life hell. It always feels like he knows the right lever to press, but this is a really good bet from Orpen, in my opinion. Because if he checks, Adrian gets to set the price on the turn, right? And when you up against Adrian as well, and you just know that he's going to be applying pressure with a ton of hands that we beat as well. What I mean by this is see how Adrian has to check here on the turn. Yeah. If we check now, this can be 800,000, like it was 100%. against Vincent. 100%. We set the price, and if we want to now, we can come check back if we want to. We can also bet, but we're setting the price, and we've seen that throughout these tournaments. Rasty alerted me to this. I didn't know this before I came here, Henry. I'm not going to lie. But Brian Rast, Poker Hall of Famer, school me to the game. There's a lot of stuff you can learn from Rast in the booth, that's for sure. Does check through. But see the comfortability here? Instead of facing a big bet here, now we check back and we play a river. What do we do on this river? Well, I'm pretty sure I know what Mateos is going to do, Henry. Because when Mateos gets here with Jack High, a bet is coming. And what we've seen from him is the bet is usually very big. Two point four million. This guy is just so sick, man. How relentless. Orp's thinking about this, by the way. Orp actually has an insanely good bluff catcher because he does, he does not block hearts and he does not block ace king or king queen. He knows this. This is a straight up sicko on sicko spot, Henry. This is a really good bluff catcher for him. As far as no pair goes, as far as, like... Blocks king, queen of spades. Pretty relevant. Unblocks hearts, as Will mentioned. Adrian Mateos just bet 2.4 million into, what was the pot there? 1.65. And Orp is thinking about calling him with ace high here. Uh -huh. B150 on the river. Why does it feel I've like seen Orp make calls like this many times over the years, by the way. Like, this isn't posturing. This isn't like, let's get a bit of TV time, try and make myself look good. Like, this is a genuine tank from Orpen. And he may just put on the cape. Especially, especially against Mateos. Pocket nines, okay, well, no. Does pitch it, Mateos gets away with another one. Come on, Henry. I don't Henry. have time, man, so could you? You don't? No, not, not now. <laughs> it's oh, I just, I mean, <laughs> 2.4 million there, yeah, man. The That's why I don't predict. <laughs> I just watch. <laughs> it's a yeah, negative anyway. free roll. <laughs> yeah, because Guys. this is spots are new all the time, so. Adrian Mateos, 40 million in live earnings. 29 years old, you get a peek at Y. And Orpin, nothing he could do there, Henry, because we will have a lot of better hands than just ace yeah. high to call with. And that is a healthy bet. Exactly. Sadly, get that one. It's, it's either that or pocket nines. You put me in one combo only? Oh, pocket nines. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't call. <laughs> the most, See most the Widow Max team in the YouTube chat saying, Vamos, Adri. Mateus, fresh off no. his first <laughs> title. <laughs> Putting on an absolute clinic today. Yeah, and if there's one thing, Henry, you better be willing to do if you play these Tritons, it's bluff. Don't come out here if you're not ready to fire some shells, man. Poor woman. We'll put on the cape. Jaffe with How the many ducks. Are we? How many are we? Yeah, I don't blame him for this. How many are we? Awkward spot. Paulson now with 3.9 million. I'd love to go. Post -block with and this is the respect, right? Look at this. Just pure respect. Queen deuce off. He's not folding that to everyone, Henry, but he is folding it to Mateos in a heartbeat. Oh, 
Daniel being very transparent about how big of a spot this is for him. Love in life. And Adrian just strikes a level of fear into you, Henry, that few players do. I'm scared, and so we're in, in the booth. Minutes, it's just not a TV. In 30 Are minutes, you not afraid? Against Adrian. He's, I, I he's crazy, I, I, man. I get afraid just being in the same vicinity as him, to be honest with you. And and I'm not just saying that you're right about his like energy, but even away from the table, the dude's intimidating. It's intense. His energy carries all over the place. Are we sure this isn't the masseuse ladies' bag, Will? We're, we're on a different table oh, now. Oh, yeah. Like Possible, Henry. I think it's his, though. Really card dead, but still hanging around Ding, and that's the beauty of these things, Henry. If you're in, you could win. Note the limp from Orpin, by the way. Not the first time we've seen him limp in with these types of hands. Daniel with ace-king off on the butt. The Icelander gonna shoot it up here. And look at this. Only min raises. Mateos with the ducks. Anything is on the table with this guy, Henry. And Orpin limping under the gun, inducing some potential multi-way action here, Henry. Yeah, the min raise from Daniel certainly going to allow Orpin a chance to peel one off here. It's also going to allow him a chance to get some chips back from Mateos with a very pretty hand. Three ways to the flop. Ace again. Yahtzee for Paulson. Loves these aces in the window. Ace king, and now the only question is, do we start to get value or do we trap? Two very aggressive players here, Henry, and this is what I talked about. These guys put you in spots. You have to use that against them. Is there a million out there? Surely this hand's over and done with should Daniel fire out a but Can he find the check? And it's not necessarily over and done, Henry, because he could bet very small here. Small he goes, 2-2-5. Two, two, the only reason it's not done is just Orpin has a backdoor flush draw, right? He Six, blocks. 60% of a straight flush, bro. He blocks ace nine of diamonds and ace seven of diamonds. He can eat an eight of diamonds on the turn, Henry. And there's 1.2 million in the pot. So that's the only reason Orpin hasn't released yet. But his sense is, yeah, it, this is really scary. The, the min raise pre, really nice pot, though, for the Icelander. Wanted more action there. You didn't see his raise. He let him Ah, there we go. Daniel didn't see that open and limped yeah, yeah. in. I saw that you didn't see, but that was not 100%. Ah, I was yeah. wondering. Hey, you had a hell of a spot, Adrian. <laughs> Whatever you yeah. Wow, wow. So you yeah, I guess me too. Yeah, yeah you yeah, have yeah. super yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Did you didn't realize? Oh. Or you limped. Uh, I thought you raised. Oh, yeah, yeah I raised. Yeah, but because you didn't look surprised after all. I don't know, like, I, oh, like. Yeah, I tried not oh, maybe to. I missed it. You thought it was a real. I tried yeah. not to give it I away. I just thought so. like he just like. <laughs> oh, no, raised no. for some reason. I don't know. Uh. enjoy having these lesser known players in the mix just enjoying the moment 
Cash four of the five events well, that, that he's played here. <laughs> For he's everyone, a good yeah. tricky spot. He, yeah, yeah. He's got a tricky spot. He's got a tricky spot. Yeah, actually, post. then I thought like, once, okay. Yeah, once yeah. he calls, you're like, oh fuck, this uh, is Mateos interesting. Mateos continues oh, yeah. the aggression, raises also, the button with king I, six off, if, and if Orpin with ace then, ten then in the big. I was hoping that they would realize. And, and, yeah, but really yeah. awkward for him yeah, because we for know sure. we have the best hand a lot, but we're pretty deep, out of position. It's like these things don't give us enough to think about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Add another layer. How many blocks? <laughs> yeah, I don't blame Orp at all for calling. Thank you told me, yeah. Yes. Disguises the strength of our hand, too. How many pros would you guess are there in Iceland? Um, it's hard to know. Um, I don't really, I don't really know how the live scene is, mm -hmm. but there are, are some mm -hmm. there. Um, but yeah, I just have no clue how the live scene is anymore. But um, I think there are like three or four that make like decent money playing online. Mm -hmm. Many of them. Yeah, I know some. That and have a what I know from like Brian Rast is that yeah. this is the type of flop, Henry, and the type of two hands yeah, where we yeah. might see these guys play some poker. Because they don't have anything. Are there are casinos legal in Iceland? No. Okay. Yeah, I feel like today we've seen bigger hand, uh, bigger pots with complete air than we have with legit hands. That's how these guys play, and that is a Which really is interesting turn. Weird, this is one tourist attraction. Gives Mateos <laughs> we have a straight draw and Orpin a flush draw and a straight draw, but and, uh, the low end. Why not have a casino for? <laughs> for the tourists, I, yeah, I it makes sense. Yeah. Could do the the way that like the Bahamas. Look at that stare down. Locals, yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or considering a lead like here. Yeah. It's not like Iceland attracts the unsavory element anyway. I don't know. Checks though, and now <laughs> but Mateos. Also at the same time, it might be like one of the least successful tourist places for casino because it is so say so like <laughs> nature people are not like the biggest yeah, gamblers. Like, oh yeah, they are. The, yeah, it's true. It's true. Doing what he's so doing all day, in the betting. So I just don't get it. Why? Three hundred and fifty thousand. Everybody's greedy. Keeps so barreling yeah. into orb. Oh, okay. Back over to Dong Chen. Little Spinsky. Button against big blind. Danchev gonna make the call with the ace. I mean, Dong's been spinning hard today. Can he spin once more? Does he have one more spin in him, Henry? Just shy of three million out there. We will cut back out to the outer table by the ace, eight, six ball, perhaps. The final spin of the wheel for Chen with the trays. Two outs once to stay alive. Otherwise, we're down to 11. Nine of diamonds completes the run out. Danchev picks up a bounty as the Bulgarians 65. continue to climb here in the 40k mystery bounty. Look, look at this, man. I mean, he's got bet on the turn from Mateos. Orpin makes the call. River's second pair. And another <coughs> huge bet from Mateos 1.5 into 1.8. Good luck calling with the ace 10. Or is this the one that Orpin puts on the cape against Adrian and says enough is enough? Some nice blockers here. Again, 10 of diamonds blocking the flush draw, ace blocking the wheel. I mean, Henry, is Adrian going to get away with this again? Five hours of He's been getting away with it yeah. all day. Yet to see someone call him down correctly. Already put open in the blender. He made the call. It's a call. Wow. Yeah. What a call from Orpin. And this is what you have to do, Henry. You cannot just oh. wait for the nuts against guys like this. Orpin calls off and is correct. 4.8 million chip pot going up the Turks way. Moves up to second in chips. Mateos finally caught speeding.
11 remain in this 40k mystery bounty on the Triton Super High Roller Series here in Jeju. Shout out to another one of our sponsors, betacr.eu. You can elevate your sports engagement experience, exclusive action, prediction options on Triton events with 15% free play. A little bonus up to $250 on your first top up. You can join now, start engaging with the sporting world today. Get involved, ladies and gents. Fire to bet. Is cool? <laughs> The bet that I would choose would be overs on how many overbets from Adrian I mean, Mateus I'm, I'm you will see in one day. Yeah, yeah those. I, I just cannot fold it. I didn't look at the action, yeah, but your hand looks pretty on. fucking good. Huh? I didn't watch the action, but your hand looked pretty fucking good. Yeah, just check cold three times. Guy coming off a tournament win, looking for another. Got it. Hold in. Oh, hello. Wang says run it on the button. Orp the Turk, Henry. Kind of quietly hung around today. Now in a position to go bounty hunting. There it is. There's the call. And it gets worse for Wang. This is fold. <laughs> Ding folding one of his outs. What is it? But still, plenty of yeah, so outs here for Wang. Yeah, and this yeah. is why we shove this hand, Henry. We want to take our equity. We're always in fine shape. Time to gamble for Wang. And Orp looking to take a bounty after heroing Adrian Mateos. Oh, nine in the window, though. Finds one of the two yeah, remaining nines to flop top pair. <laughs> Three million out there. And well, just finds finds the case nine as well on the turn. Trip nines. Needle from the deck on the river. <laughs> what are you doing, Bia? Should have known, bro. You should have known. Yeah, yeah. 11 remain. And Wang going to double up. Again, I talked about these players having success. We haven't seen them before, but the first event, 21st place for 44,000, Henry. Second event, 36th place for 48,000. Here he is, doubling up, gambling with the 10 9 of diamonds and getting paid, Henry. That's a good feeling. I love the gamble, you know. Really Has to take the time. spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you stop this time, but it's not anymore. Sean Winter, by the way, down to 5.7 million, was cruising along at high altitude with about 8.9 at peak. Because we just finished the long hand. <clears throat> Giving some back on the other table. No longer the chip leader. Leaving some room for the Icelander to move into that spot. Daniel has been fearless. Picks up Queen Jack of Diamonds under the gun. And Wang with sevens. Two players, Henry, we've had no idea about before this series, right? But we're getting a glimpse at both two caches already looking for more. Wang just going to call. Makes sense. And Jaffe has Ace off in the big. An interesting spot, Henry. This is really uncomfortable, right? In a, even Ace-5, Ace-4, right? But Ace-8... It just feels like so many negative implied odds. I know it seems like we should flick in, but do we just want to avoid? Yeah, not John. It's too strong. Gonna take it to the streets. Confident in his post-flop navigating skills. It's the sevens of Wang out in front on the six-three deuce. Nine-two-five out there. Daniel does cover both. Let's see how he wants to proceed with this one. Great flop for Wang, but still a tricky spot. What does Daniel come with? Just checks. 
spot is not as straightforward as you think it is, but you'd have to think with three undercards here, Jaffe not with a lot of chips, the preflop raise are checking to us. It's time to bet. And I like this from Wang, but it's 300. Jaffe now. Thinking about it, but wisely folds. And Paulson, hand is not over. Backdoor diamonds, blocking queens and jacks with the under the gun raise in our range against a small bet. But don't blame him for just giving it up. Wang gonna take another pot. Yeah, gotta respect the discipline there from Daniel. Playing a very comfortable 35 bigs. Doesn't need to get himself into these kind of marginal spots where he's playing a bit of a guessing game on turns and rivers. Much rather cool with like ace of diamonds. So at least we're drawing to nut back doors. Let us know where you're watching from. What time is it? Watching us play down to the final table here. Having a great time with Henry Kilbane in the booth. And like Fedor, right, came into the game, won all the money. You came into the commentary <laughs> game. Jesus, dude. Won all the money, then retired. Retired at 29, eh? Love to see it. Wang not retired, though, is he? I, I think Wang's retired. He's got a mountain now. And he's got ace four off, and Wang is a very creative player, Henry. Wang's just out here living his best life, flicking in 40Ks, bounty hunting. And Jaffe with the sixes. Interesting spot. Wonder how much Jaffe knows about Wang, Henry. All right. Looks like he knows enough. Does make the shove. And look at this, Henry. The snowman. Click call, Daniel. For and Daniel you are Paulson. Potentially the chip leader of the tournament if he can find this call. The qualifier from Iceland with the tournament defining moment. This would be so sick. If he calls and holds here. Be tournament chip leader with 10 left. Covers both players, Henry. Can he find this? It's sick with Wang behind, playing 3.6 million. Ayah, pitches it. Oh, you hate to see it, Henry. Yeah, and he's gonna hate to see the snap fold from Wang as well. And we hate to see it in the booth. You hate to see it out there, but he is really going to hate to see that, Henry, when he watches that. And John Jaffe stays alive. I look forward to seeing this one. What's that? No, you don't, buddy. You hear that, Henry? I said, what's no, that? you don't. I, I look forward to seeing this one. <laughs> he was a bit too big for me. Maybe that was a good thing. Maybe not. Ooh, so close, Henry. Just click the call. If Wang doesn't get out of line, by the way, with that wide oh, open. Yeah, Wang blind saved feet, him there. Yeah, yeah. Blind feet blind is just going in. We talked about this with Rast, right? Butterfly effect. Yeah. Orp now with ace four off, Henry. And these guys like these aces. Jonathan Jaffe evading death there, Henry. I don't know if I flash that. Daniel, still thinking about that eights. That was 100% oh. the limp, right? <laughs> and Orpin limped again here, Henry. Interesting. 
so we're going three ways again with a bunch of raggedy hands. Jack, nine, three, rainbow flop. Mateos with middle pair. Quickly checks it, giving Orp a little rope. Yeah, I'm really curious to maybe try and pick Orpen's mind, get an idea of these limps, these types of holdings. Six on the turn, awful card for Paulson. Who, Henry, we see the butterfly effect. He's on the other side of that. Jonathan survives. Does he die yeah. here, Henry, because of this crazy? And Mateos now going to look for some value. No, keeps trapping, actually. I think he knows he has the best hand a lot, but also just a hand you don't really want to put chips in anyway with, so might as well pot control. Warp does have the ace of spades. Going to check for it. And hands like ace four spades make sense to limp here, Henry, right? That's true. So if we have ace four spades, we'll bet this turn a lot. And because of that, we want to best the turn when we also have just the ace of spades and the four of another card. And sets up a lot more interesting action because Daniel, with the six, knows Orp and check behind on the flop, is very curious. Nice fold, though, here. This is saving death so far. That could have been very bad for him. And now Adrian with the pretty easy call. I thought we were about to see two calls there out of the blinds, but discipline fold from Daniel. Warp looking for a spade to bluff or an ace for the win as the ace of clubs just finds its way to the river. And disaster now for Adrian. Does not have a lot of chips behind and still has a very strong bluff catcher. now surely you gotta go for some value here all the draws breaking oh, and look so at sick. this henry all day mateos has been the one i love this this is really cool how fitting that it's now orp putting mateos to the test but he has it here it's one of those river cards as well where you'd expect orpin to go polar. An obvious scare card. All the draws miss. Spades, queen 10, 7, 8. Seven. Adrian says no. Oh, getting busy up to 5.8. He's been Adrian's kryptonite so far, Henry. And look at this, the Bulgarian table over here. Look at those three gentlemen next to each other, Henry. Dimitar Danchev in third, Alex Kulev in fifth, Julian Bogdanov in seventh. Joined by Brewer and Sean Winter, who has regained the chip lead, but only just. And look at this for Brewer, Henry. Pocket aces. The dream. Uh oh. This could be trouble for Winter. It's been a rough frame for him at this feature table. A couple of key pots not going his way, folding that top pair incorrectly. Tokulov is just going to flat. Is that with Kulev? Tens in the big, wow. That's a cold deck, five-handed. Aces against ace 10 against tens. And Kulev is an incredibly aggressive player. Just maniacal, there it is, all in. And what a sight for Chris Brewer. And you've seen rounders, right, Henry? I have. All in. I was a little worried play. about that, but I mean, you, you weren't. 
You must have something. <laughs> Tens against aces. I had that and I had that. And what a huge Fair spot fun. for Brewer. <laughs> and also Kulev, who we haven't seen much so of, has played you're great. For a flush. Club flush. We should just get Winter to do a commentary, you know. Just mic him up whenever he's at the table. <laughs> we don't need to be in the booth. 4.3 out there. Could have looking for the case 10. Will be a one outer, Chris. <laughs> Shit, sorry. One out once for number one on Bulgaria's all time money list. Doesn't find it. Brewer with the double up to 4.3 million. You said 1950? Yeah. I don't say anything. Oh, okay. What's going on over here? Open limping in. Jaffe with the ISO from the cutoff. Adrian waking up with the goods out the small, and JJ says run it. Price thin. Bounty time. Got a call, got a gamble. Needs to get lucky with the suited king to knock out Adrian. Yeah, or he'll be crippled boy. himself. Dirty man. Dirty dog. <laughs> that was like an American accent. <laughs> I'm trying to do my best. Oh, oh hello. Little A6 tray from I three outs to 12 for JJ. That's stereotypes. <laughs> give, me a, give me a more traditional Midwest. Heart or a king needed to shower Mateo Slate in day one of the 40K. Finds the hold back up to 3.4 million. Been a real swingy frame and a half for Mateos was chip leader up to 5.5 and dropped down to 1.5. A couple of unsuccessful bluffs. We want to get fresky, we can do it from Scotland. But oh, that's pretty good. Oh, thank you. We got accents going on at the table here, Will? I don't know, but what did you say on break? Did you say it was going to be a bloodbath? Was that what most you said? From Iceland, yeah. like, a, like a really, really thick, uh, uh, give thick us, accent. Give us your so best. British accent, um, if you will. No, come on. Ah, I'm not going to do that. You're not going to sucker me into that. Ah, come on. As much as possible, but um, but it does. We have these strong like tea. Oh, we got, we got Daniel here doing an American accent. Come on, Henry. They put me in some tough spots. Don't do this. I can't get rid of that completely. The chat asks why you're ignoring them. Anyone in particular? John Jaffe now with Ace King of Diamonds. Redemption time, Henry. And have you seen the movie Rounders? I have, Will. Seen it a few times. Is there a reason you ask? No, just great movie. Adrian with the ace nine off. Interesting spot on the button. Very tempted to just go for this bounty with what is often the best hand. John does not have a lot of big blinds. But Adrian, can he use his spite? Oh, no. Nope. Just going to rip it. I can get out of the way, see if Orpin wakes up with a hand. Nine, seven of spades, surely not enough. So JJ now the player at risk, but with the best of it. One nine already in the muck. Adrian again. It's been an absolute bloodbath as we predicted. <laughs> Overall, I like that. <laughs> Johnson to get back up to 2.5 million. So far, so good on the 7-4-4. Opportunities for Adrian. Five of diamonds removing one of Mateus's immediate outs. 7-5 for a chop. How about the five clubs? Corner pocket to keep Jonathan Jaffe on short stack duties. 11 players remain here in this 40k mystery bounty 804,000 for first all guaranteed 69,500 could have very well been down to the final table will it's been uh it's been a swingy frame
Absolute roller coaster for Adrian Mateos, huh? Adrian for Orb, for Sean, I mean. Oh, look. What's going on here? We got a civil war in play, Henry. Some Bulgarian on Bulgarian violence. Not what you want to see. 1.4 million out there. Lachev just finding the ten of clubs on the river. Beautiful sight for him. I feel very comfortable. Finding a bet here. Question is how much is he going to put on request from his fellow countrymen? One. Dimitar gonna bet big. And Yulian with a pretty decent bluff catcher here. Yeah, facing around 80% bet on the river. Knows his countryman well. Knows that he's capable of having bluffs here. As Will said, decent bluff catcher with the King Six. Bogdanov want to be a hero. We don't know what history these guys have, Henry. I'm assuming they have a decent amount. Does make the call, get shown the bad news. And Danchev scoops a 3.6 million chip pot. And in fact, heading into dinner break, as tournament chip leader with 11 left. Danchev, as you mentioned, it's been a while since he's had a big score, but things looking pretty good for the Bulgarian here. Second on Bulgaria's all-time money list, going into set dinner break as chip leader with 50 bigs. Chip counts brought to you by GG Poker. A couple of stacks out there. Gonna look to spin the wheel sooner rather than later when they get back from that dinner break. And obviously, as always, just a little warning for the viewers at home. We do have the power of technology here at the Triton series. So that 45 minute dinner break gonna be spliced down to just a 10 minute break. When am I gonna step aside for 10 minutes? So don't go too far when we return. We'll be playing down to the final table of the 40K mystery bounty. Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
Just Seize the Wonder. Jeju Shinwa World. Vincent Sweat. And so is Bao here. Waited patiently, picks up the nines. Can't think of any other move than all in. What does he come with? Oh. Love that watch from Bao, Henry. And that's probably like what? Like a couple hundred dollars, that plastic, the blue? She. Maybe in the store here? A couple hundred thousand? And Vincent. A couple hundred thousand, dude. Vincent snaps him, and he's going to go bounty hunting. We're going to get a lot of those oh, chips oh, back. He just lost to Adrian. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. We did say it's go time for Ding. Gonna need to spin the wheel. Nine's in good shape. Empires have been built on smaller edges than 10%, but Ace of Hearts in the mm. window, followed by a nine in the kitchen. And it's just going from bad to worse for Vincent. Does pick up an ace out now, though, Henry. Barry Greenstein, is there one left? This would be a dirty way to do it. Nice double for Bao. Brutal turn of events there for Vincent. Just got put in the meat grinder by Kulev, then Mateos, then doubles up, and now is going to be one of the short stacks himself. Yeah, just looking at his graph. He's played very... 3.7. Yeah. He's played very well, Vincent, but 11th in the last event, Henry. Now this turn of events after... You have to. A guy wants to to bet more than he's got yeah. in his stack. You know, okay, that's, that's I mean, my watching. Camry car keys have gone in the middle more times than many, but unfortunately nobody really wants to play for those, Henry. Yeah, my Swatch has been thrown in a few times as well, you know. Kulev, not a watch guy, though. Makes it 200. Notice him sizing up a little here. This is interesting on Adrian's big blind and Vincent with the pocket tens, the spot he's been waiting for. Man, if Vincent busts here, which he could, it's going to be uh, it's been a long old walk back to the hotel room after a very, very frustrating 13, 14 hands. Tens against Ace Jack. He's a 15% favorite with five to come. Kulev will have a healthy amount of chips if he can spike here. 0.7 in the middle as it does come. King, Jack, 7, and you kind could, of feels like we could, just knew it was coming. You just could feel it, right? Yeah. N needs a 9 or a 10 here, but it just feels so grim for Vincent, and it's felt that way. Can he hit? This just felt almost predestined, right, the way the last hands kind of played out. That's honestly one of the the roughest kind of downfalls I, I've seen in, in quite some time, Will. I mean, from 3.7 million, third in chips with 17 left. I want to see him get heads up at this point. I mean, brutal. <coughs> and really, Henry, when I think of like rags to riches poker tournament stories, Chris Brewer comes to mind. I don't know if you were in the booth for it, but he cried tears after busting one of these I've events. I've cried tears. Real tears. And then he just went on a tear. Didn't quit. He's back. And look at this, Henry. Are we about to be spinning the dong again? I feel bad about this one, Will. I'll be honest with you. You don't feel good? No, you know, the 10-9, the, the, the queen jack, I felt good. The ace jack feels like almost too good of a hand. Your deck reads have been on point today. There he goes, though. I feel like That's the good, six no, is sure. coming up against the six. Six is a hot. We saw Marion oh, Mossback win. Yeah, I'm just going to get a count to make sure. Is that the hand he won the last tournament yeah. with? He won mm. won the tournament against uh, <coughs> Ido with sixes, I mean. Uh, yeah, but Sergio Ido is nine, not Dong Chen. Okay. Brewer getting a count. He's not, he's not folding. And Dong now, 2.2 million in here, Henry. Just two mm. hands ago down to 75K. Flicks it in the middle. Now a chance to be pretty like healthy. Three three in a row. Feels feels tough, Will. I don't know how I feel about this one. I feel good. You feel good? Okay. You keep spinning the dong. Get back up to 2.2 .2 mil. Oh, there we go. Jack in the window. What was I even concerned about? Jack 9-3. Ding dong. <laughs> We're going from 75k to 2.2 .2 mil. 
to 2.2 million in, in three hands unless Brewer can find a six. Let's just boat up on the river. Just, just to, to be safe, just right? Just to like really make a statement. Henry, what and what? And what I mean, I get it. You haven't been here, right? You're a little rusty. That's you're jet lagged. True. It's forgivable. But what happened there, man, with that deck read? I mean, I was I was way off. I, you, you're probably still just feeling the the shock from playing with these guys, huh? I feel like a little, there's that. You need a little more time in the booth, my friend. There's definitely that, and also just underestimating Dong Chen, which is just a massive, a huge error, massive. Uh, Slip up on my end. Won't happen again. He's moved up to sixth in chips in the space of three hands, up to 28 bigs. And here, I do want to clarify, that's not my younger brother, but he's all in. JJ. Jonathan Jaffe, one of the best. And Wang has had a miserable day, Henry. Nothing has, you know, it's not like he's done anything wrong either. Remember, Mateos turned a set against him on the perfect barrel card. Yeah. Now a rough. suited ace in the hijack and just misery. And, and this is not just a clear fold, by the way, against John Jaffe. I really don't think it is. I'm not saying it's a good spot. But John is a maniac. Is it 19 bigs hijack. Well, what Dong playing. is trying to figure out is are there these offsuit aces, right? Is, is, is John doing this with the ace four off? How wide is he doing it? The ace seven does feel... Light, but Dong doesn't have a lot of chips behind. Sorry, Wang. Can't stop thinking about Dong. I'm telling you. There it goes, Henry. Really nice call, too, by Wang. And he's in a good spot to double here. Jaffe looking to go bounty hunting. That's a pretty bold call there from Wang. Just correctly... Recognizing that JJ is going to have all the suited broadways and, as Will mentioned, the weaker ASEX. Again, Wang, first Triton, right? Cash the first two events here in the money again. In a great spot to double or at least chop this pot. A lot of chop opportunities here, but... A lot. Well, you can take, like, seven spades. And, yeah, this is... Uh, looking for a seven now. Chop it up, gents. One for JJ to take note of, though. That Wang's not afraid. The table, too, to put as in well. 19 bigs. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of these guys have played with Jonathan Dio. I mean, Dong was down to less than a big blind, was forced all in, won three hands in a row to then spin it up to 21 bigs. He's very comfortable now, middle of the pack. And Daniel Paulson. Go time. Yeah. Touched on it earlier, but the only player I know from Iceland that plays poker won a package, parlayed it with a couple of big caches here, now another, but looking for that first final table. That confidence must be I already have the bounty through here, so the yeah. roof. For Daniel, as Will mentioned, getting a few caches, parlaying it into another cache here in the, the mystery bounty. I think Vieira. It, this All just in. feels too good, yeah. It, we have hands we dominate. And Orpin now. This is really interesting, Henry. Two bounties for him and Jack-10 suited. And I, yeah, I just don't know how you don't gamble here, honestly. One, two, five, zero. One, two, five. Joe shove only for 12 bigs. Yeah, this just feels uh, yeah, mandatory. And Orpin, okay. Orp the Turk. In a great spot to take two bounties. Obviously, he's not ahead, but it's essentially even three ways. Daniel is ahead. Huge spot for him. It doesn't like. You have a good spot. As long as the chips is coming this way, then we're all good. We're all in a good spot. Everyone live, not to state the obvious. Yeah, everyone is happy with the holding. Always rooting for the underdogs. Daniel venturing out for the first time. Be nice to see him hold here. Oh. Ace in the window. Oh, smooth. Yeah, that's about as clean as it comes, Henry. 95% now for Daniel. But it's never over, is it? And a really bad card for Vieira because he now needs to catch to stay in the tournament. Or Orp will take him out. Oh, that's true. 
Didn't think of that. Yeah. Disastrous run for Vieira. That's brutal. Yeah. Well spotted, Will. Yeah, so Daniel obviously gets the triple, but the 10 on the turn, Orpin did cover Jao. So it's Jao that's actually out in 14th. Daniel gets the triple, and Orpin gets the bounty. Henry on your cash. Thank you, Dana. Appreciate it. Would have preferred to, you know, last an extra half hour or so inside the money, but I'm not going to turn my nose up. And cash in the 25k. Welcome back to the break desk. Will Jaffe alongside myself, Henry Kilman, as we work our way down to the final table of the 40k mystery bounty here at the Triton Super High World Series in Jeju. Uh, Will, at this stage of the tournament, would have expected us to have reached the final table already. That last frame, as we predicted, an absolute bloodbath. But the fact that the short stacks kept spinning it up, kept surviving, uh, leads us coming back with 11. And just looking at the app, I mean, look at that. Five bigs for Ding, eight bigs for Jaffe, 10 for Bogdanov, 12 for Kulev. Surely this frame we get to the final table. One would think, Henry. I mean, it's been a bloodbath. Adrian Mateos leading the way. But the Bulgarian delegation, Henry, three Bulgarians, very good players, all of them. Dimitar Danchev, chip leader in this tournament. Yeah, byproduct of playing that hand against his fellow countrymen just before the dinner break. Uh, Julian Bogdanov incorrectly calling off with third pair. Does give Danchev the lead, but only a slight lead at top of the chip count. Sean Winter on his tail, as well as Orpin and Chris Brewer looking to climb up the ranks there. A lot of talent in the field. I mean, we have... Triton first timers, Daniel Pausen just really enjoying the moment. The man from Iceland saying that he's free rolling. You know, he's cashed three of four events after winning a package here. Won that three way all in, has claimed a couple of bounties along the way. Uh, Wang Ye, another Triton first timer, just seeing the newcomers kind of tangle with the, the OGs and kind of showing them that, hey, look, they're not here to be pushed around. We, we've seen that Daniel doesn't mind putting chips in the pot. No, these newcomers are fearless. I mean, Daniel almost made that call with eights there. The snowmen couldn't make it, but he's still in. Henry still has a chance for this title. A lot of good players, a lot of big names, a lot of players we don't know about. I have no idea what's going to happen, Henry. Let's throw it down to the main stage as we see the Bulgarian contingent squaring off against the two Americans, Sean Winter and Chris Brewer. Of course, on the other table, can't they get those Bulgarians against the Mateos? That, why, are they, why are we fighting each other here? What's going on with this? What's up with this table distribution, Henry? I mean, let's, let's call in Luca. You know, let's, let's have a word with the floor. Of course, on table two, Jaffe, Mateus, Paulson, Ye, Kisichogoglu, and Ding. Going to war over there. 11 left. All guaranteed. 69,500 for their efforts. 804,000 for first with a top bounty prize of 500,000. This could be trouble for Bogdanov. Hijack open from Winter. Five handed ace nine going up in value. Especially at this stack depth. Wow, pitches it, okay. Lives to fight another day. I think I go broke in that spot. But Chris Brewer has snowmen, Henry, again. Just calls, though. Going to a flop. Well, Brewer still with the best of it, but Sean Winter... The Broadway gut shot, Queen of Diamonds also working in his favor. See how he decides to proceed here. Five-handed. It's just going to continue, and I think, well, mind you, it's a Again, small Henry, bet. the small bet is the only thing that keeps us in here, right? And what people don't realize is we don't have a good hand, the snowmen here, but these small bets give us a great price. We have to call them a lot. 
Well, Brewer seems to agree with you on that one, Will. Does stick around and surely now this hand over and done with as Sean turns top pair. May decide to get tricky. Winter certainly won to have a few tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, and the hand isn't over, Henry, because Brewer now goes from bluff catcher to potential bluffer, right? You think he's going to hit Sean with the check raise with the eights? No, if Sean bets, the hand's over. I agree. But if Sean checks, maybe we see Brewer do something on the river. But Sean, good card for his range. Feels like a... It's an interesting spot, though, because we hate our life if we do get check raised somehow. Hey, Brewer has the talent to put people in the bin. Former track star at Oregon. Nine. Winter's going to keep going, and that, yeah, that does it, Henry. No, it doesn't spot you. Yeah. Yeah. It's Officer Winter. Just a light speeding ticket there for Brewer, right? Nothing crazy. What does hmm? track star mean in America, out of curiosity? Are we talking like high school? Are we talking uni? Are we talking nationals? Uh, uni. Uni. Yeah. Oregon College, also known as uni. For college. <laughs> Danch Danchev now with the ace nine off. We just saw Yulian fold it. You a star of any kind in in college? <laughs> high school? <laughs> Not in college. High school, I peaked at mm. Ultimate Frisbee. Yeah? Yeah. Like behind the back? No, I was... Hundred yards I was, out, like just pinging them in? I was the catcher. Okay. I was fast. But I didn't have good hands. Nothing worked out for me athletically, Henry. Wait, if... You, if you were the catcher, but you didn't have good hands, were you catching with your feet, or? No, I was just fast, and I drop a lot of them. Fair. Uh, Failed athletic uh, career. Same. I tried for a bit, and then, uh, I don't know. We're talkers, Henry. We're not <laughs> doers. Well, hang on there, you know. Kulev back in action with the A7 <laughs> off. And Henry, this is the type of aggression that leads to the bloodbath we've been seeing today. You don't need to do this with A7 off. Oh. Well, he's going to run into it. Fellow countryman, Dimitar Danchev. The Mamacitas out of the big. Does re-jam. With a raise fold from first position. You want your bounce? Very good day for Dimitar so far. <laughs> Again, monster series for him. Remember, first event, third place, 375,000. Second event, 28th place, 54,000. Third event, 19th place, 65,000. I mean, that's the type of run, Henry, that, I mean, now with this cash, it, it, it reminds me of the Olympics. I don't know if you, I used to be into the Olympics when I was younger, and I remember you track how many, you know, medals each country won. Yeah. So far, Austria with two. But Bulgaria. They're trying. They are trying. The Austrian taking that title from a Spaniard, Sergio. Mm. So that would have been two for Spain with him and Mateos. All in. All in. We should we should get that. We should get like a like a country leaderboard thing. Cause I, I know we. They yeah, have let's it get a in the, the Olympics. Series. It's it's gold, silver, and then bronze. Mm. Right? So you could do first, second, third here, potentially. Julian, <coughs> another player, Henry, with a big score here, right? Money staying in Bulgaria. Huh? The money is staying in Bulgaria.
Sam and I'm asking, is Henry Kilbane top 50 commentators? No comment. You're Retired. in there. You're Retired. in there, buddy. Retired. Top 50. Uh, let's call it top 75. Top 100. You're yeah. definitely in. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to don't wanna push it. Let's make it a nice round 200 just to, you know, be sure. All in. Danchev <laughs> gonna jam on the butter with the Queen 10. Great hand to just rip it with, Henry. Bounties abound. Take it down, sir. Dimitar Danchev, Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure winner in 2013, I believe, for 1.3 million. Great player, Henry. Someone who's been around, been playing at a high level, doesn't have that signature score since then, right? No, he's been in the online streets. I'm trying to remember his online name. I think it's Cool, K-U-U-L, if I'm not mistaken. Like the cigarettes, the old American cigarettes? You ever see those? Potentially, yeah. I have yeah, like no 3. idea. 4. Danchev now with another spot, and in these bounties, these suited hands, these <coughs> they become very tempting bounty hunters, don't they, Henry? Yeah, especially at this stack depth now. Those that brewers in, in the bin. Oh, yeah. In the big blind with 24 bigs. And the reason this is so strong is that these players are short. If we call and double them up, it doesn't really hurt that much. But when we do get called, we have tons of equity and we're gambling for their bounties. And this is the difference between bounties and regular tournaments. Dimitar would be much less incentivized to shove if there were no <laughs> bounties on the line here. Seems like maybe we're getting to that stage, bit of pre-flop tanking. <coughs> yeah, it looks like we do have cool, so K-U-U-L for Dimitar's online name. And that's a cigarette brand? No, I thought it was K-O-O-L. Ah, okay. Back over to Adri's table. Action on Biao Ding. Couple of ducks under the gun. Four and a half big, says run it. Oh, well, there's, there's some short stacks over here, dude. Good luck, bro. Mateos. I mean, five million, Henry. He's managed to recover, dude. He was down to 1.5 at one point. This guy's unreal. Just calls. He's going to go bounty hunting. Again, if Adrian can knock out Henry here, there's a chance he's spinning the wheel, an old person lottery, you know, bingo ticket for 500K. It's not a bad spot. And Orpin with a better pair. Really interesting. See if he just jabs this. Yeah, never folding, but he can <coughs> cover Mateos. No, just going to call. Don't blame him. They're pretty deep. And Bao Ding in a great spot to triple here, Henry. <laughs> oh, this is so weird. Yeah, what an awful sight when you have twos and they have threes. Just <laughs> needs a duck or he's going to be out of here near the final table. Yeah, just one deuce left in the deck. We saw one of them folded. Orpin just flatting out the big. Does allow Mateos to flop the best on the ace 10 7. Then just two cards away from bowing out in 11th. And Mateos just. We don't even need to see it, do we, Henry? We know how he got those chips. It's just been crushing, man. And maybe we'll find out if that bag was dings now. If he looks like it might already be gone. Orpin can't do anything here. Ding needs a deuce, Henry. Ding needs the case yeah. deuce on the turn or the river to stay alive. He's won this tournament before. 
Another deep run here in Jeju with 11 left. Things looking bleak though. Teos looking to claim another bounty. Which he does. Four of hearts completes the run out. We're down to 10. Good game, sir. Played well, familiar face. Like you said, defending champ, Henry, takes a bow. Yeah, is this you? Yeah. And eight, remain. Adrian Mateos, Henry. It just feels like it. You think he's going to pick up a second title here? It just feels like it. I mean, can we rebalance and get some Bulgarians over here, at least one? If you had to pick one player from this final 10. No, I can't pick it. Your money's on Mateos? I mean, what? Come on. I, listen, I don't blame you, mate. The guy is an animal. Second in chips. Did you boys see all those time banks walk off the table? Did you see <laughs> yeah. time banks gone yeah. to the abyss? <laughs> Here's Daniel Paulson. And Wang now, on the button with ace five of spades, has gotten a little bit shorter than when we last saw him. He's just gonna rip it, makes sense. Can you see on the app the, because it doesn't Oh, can you, can and I part of the reason, Henry, I think you rip with ace five suited is you really don't want to raise here and get ripped on. And the only reason that's more likely is that the players can get your bounty, right? Orpin, way more likely to get it. Yes. Can't do anything here, though, against it. Orpin taking his time but going to fold. And what does John have? No, nothing to play with. And Jaffe is really short, Henry. 550,000 behind. Wang takes it down. He called dibs. Zia, though. <laughs> A few people in the chat asking about the bounty prizes. Top bounty, 500k, there's three $200,000 bounties, $700,000 bounties, 11 80k bounties, 26 40k bounties, and two 40k bounties with a draw again, as well as the one $0 bounty with a draw again. Always a great show hosted by our very own Arlene Jard, one of the highlights of every trip. Always makes it entertaining. Be sure to check that one out with us tomorrow. For now, our attention on the poker part of the tournament. Orpin just happily open jamming on the button once Adrian's out the way. Ten remain. Kulev on five bigs. Jaffe on four. Part of the reason Orpin's jamming there, not only the bounties in play, but now final table pay jumps in play, Henry. Next player out gets 69,000 after that. Goes up to 82,000. Then we get in the six-figure range for the final eight players. Six-figure club. Used to be a much better club to be in, Henry. I can tell you that. And Jaffe with queen five, and he's nursing the nub right now, Henry. The nub has been nursed. Jaffe's a pretty... It's not his favorite stack to play, right? He's more of a big stack guy. I would say so. He's but been in these spots before. He doesn't mean he can't nurse the nub a little, Henry. And how gentle does he want to be with it here? How careful does he want to be with this nub, I Henry? mean, I think it has to go in. We just have to be you don't aggro. Think we, can't, we can't nurse it a little more, keep it alive? There we go. He agrees with you. He's been, he's been gentle, indeed. Passing up on the queen five. And a real daunting sight for the satellite qualifier. You you qualify for this series, right? Yeah, you think you might have a good time. You go deep in two events. Now you're deep in the third one. Final table bubble. On your left is Adrian Mateos with a pile of chips. 
Yeah, and Adrian's going to find a way to win this hand. Queen 6 3, picking up a gut shot, backdoor hearts. Daniel had him dominated pre, but just nine high. Yeah, really good flop for Adrian. Backdoor hearts. Daniel, awful flop. Nothing he can do here unless he's feeling really crazy. Just going to let it go. Adrian Mateo stacks more chips. Yeah, well, we, but we're like, they're five as well. Yeah, so, five. so they're, they're one player shorter, so they play faster, but yeah, two hands is a bit much. What are they doing? Just open fold. <laughs> Orpin still alive here and Jaffe this is why Henry this is why you are gentle and you nurse that nub isn't it don't throw it out into the wild with the queen five off why not wait one more hand and just get rewarded with the rockets all in and it's Time for Surely. Jaffe to, it's spin time for Jaffe. Certainly we'll get one customer, will he get two? Adrian really gonna be very incentivized to play. I know he has 10-4, but any two cards here, Henry. It's bounty hunting time, that could be 500,000. Yeah, Mateos, even with the 10-4 off, happy to call here. And Wang going to be ecstatic to call. Already 150 in the middle dead, 150 in the big blind. Gel. Gracias. Bye, bro. Thank you. I like it when you guys mean it. Yeah. It's nice. I do. Right. Oh, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> King Jack 10. Both players with a also, pair. What a luxury to be able to use a regular time bank preflop. This is. I live lavishly. For the record, I found the five percent equity until the turn. Queen of Hearts giving JJ the nut straight. Cannot lose. Can only chop. Doing it. Looks like he's gonna fire out Chop. a sizable Chop. bet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Time bank. Time bank. <laughs> but but it only took ten seconds on the next one. Then I figured yeah. it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You tricked everybody. You're right about those triples. Yeah, yeah it's way easier. Way easier. <laughs> That's why he didn't say anything. You're like, who the, 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 the guy is time banking with aces. That's why they are so slow. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker takes a time bank with ace 10 with a diamond. Jesus. <laughs> Four big blinds, aces. Yeah, <laughs> were big bets. <laughs> and I was uh, left before, before, so just before. We've all been hurt. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I checked my emotional state. If I can be wrong again, you know, like, can no. I survive? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you got so many time banks. You only do with aces. It's true. Sheesh. Hmm? Ten of clubs. Oh. What is it? Ooh, sorry. Ten of clubs. And look at this. Jaffe passes the aces one seat over to Daniel. Nice. Seven six in the big and has him covered. Never going anywhere. Going to see a flop and try to quack, crack these aces, Henry. Not on the nine nine three. 
Daniel with a 95% lock on the hand. Daniel, going to play it tricky here and give Orpin some rope. And Call the police. <laughs> Not in your country, obviously, but back home. 999. Come on, Will, give, give us your best British accent. Just what are you doing, mate? Yeah, there we go. What are you doing? Yeah, that's like... Uh, they can take our lives, but they can never take our freedom. That's Scottish, but we, we'll allow it. We're watching some uh, Braveheart. William Wallace. Legend. And great job by Daniel here. Knows he is probably not going to get paid, so he's trying to induce a bluff. And Orpin has stone bottom of range but it's a really dicey board to bluff at. I think you try and fold up maybe some king highs, some ace highs. Go for something like half pot. I'm very curious to see what sizing he takes if he does. I, I was going to say, I think he needs to go big, Henry. And he does, and if that money's going into the ether. Daniel Paulson qualified for a package cut. 13th in the 20K event for 68,000, and then 47th in the last event for 43,000. He's looking to parlay this into a massive Triton payday, sitting on pocket aces. Would be so sick to see him reach the final table. A couple of deep runs here already, having the time of his life. See what he goes with here. Does he just call? Does he take it upstairs? Does he go for all of it? A lot of things to think through. Huge spot for him, obviously. One point four. Goes for one point four and I like this, Henry. It's not too greedy and leaves some door open. I know it's probably not going to happen, but you never know. Or quickly folds. Nice pot for Daniel there. I love it when the dealer says one time, Frank. It's like a reverse. Huh? Usually it's the other way around. <coughs> we say one time dealer, and they say uh, one time Frank. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Right. <coughs> it's like she's asking me for something. I'm like, hmm. Oh, reversal. Daniel enjoying himself. <coughs> Understandably so. Mateos with what we call solver bait. The suited king. And look, Henry, we talk about, it's the Triton Super High Roller Series, the best of the best. We talk about solvers, game theory. Can we talk about nursing the nub? I mean, JJ's been nursing it to perfection so far. In great shape here against Adrian. Started with 1.425. 825 in the middle. Spade, spade, club. SPR less than 1.5. See how Mateus wants to proceed. Just naked king high. No real backdoor to speak of. It's going to go small, Will. Just trying to fold out all hands that completely whiff. Take this one down right here, right now. Jaffe just go for the check raise. 425. Yeah, there it is. 425 to go. He 
Adrian out of time, Banks. Not going to waste too much time with that one. JJ back up to 2.1 million, a bit of breathing room. Look, we talk about advanced concepts like range analysis, and we use big words like merge and polarize, but Henry, can we talk about one of the most fundamental basic skills of poker? Can we talk about nursing the nub? What does it entail, Will? Not ripping on the button with queen five, waiting for aces on the next hand. Let us know what you think, chat. Tripled up there. Tell us in chat, how do you nurse the nub? Don't do that, chat. You get banned. <laughs> You're banned. <laughs> oh, okay, sure. Warp on the button. Things have taken a turn for him. Dare I say looks a little steamy to me, Henry. Oh, no, never. I know you guys think these guys can't tilt. I don't know, they're humans. And Jaffe, down to 550,000 long, what, a few hands ago? All in. Good jam, blind v blind. Daniel Paulson in the big Jack 8 suited. Not going to cut it. What is it. How much is it? Not for 14. I but tempting to gamble, Henry, anytime you have something suited. Yeah, sure. Dan hasn't folded yet. He knows Jaffe's a creative player. It, Henry, look, first in this tournament's 800, but if he knocks out Jaffe and pulls the right mystery bounty, that's 500. I feel like the term creative is being used as a replacement of the word whale. <laughs> like, oh yeah, he's being really creative. Might just rifle it in with the 7-5 suited, you know? That's me. <clears throat> Words can mean a lot of things, Henry. Yeah, this John Jaffe. Fuck with me a lot. <laughs> All of us. <laughs> Everybody's guessing makes the game better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, a lot of people are going to say to me, yo. Is that a different opinion? <laughs> <laughs> Should have just gambled. I heard about a good, good idea for a game. Um, Bonomo once suggested. Uh, they show like three cards from the muck. And John, John Jaffe, I mean, look, last tournament he won here at Triton, his only Triton totem. First place in the 50K turbo bounty at Monte Carlo. So he knows how to take these puppies down, Henry. He does. I believe he beat his good friend. I will say Brian Kim in that head One day, match. Uh, <laughs> you'll have had enough. <laughs> it's like one hand of heads up as well. It's pretty brutal. Wang now, one of our shorter stacks. Ace nine off under the gun. What's he? When was the last time you played a tournament that was not no limit holdem? Gonna min raise it. Or pot limit hold'em. Never. Never in your life. Not a single. Online, not a single. Oh. Zero. Well, I got, well, maybe I got Badoogie on my track record, so. Maybe European love for winner. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Never like just fucking $100 WCOOP PLO while the screens are, wow, what a savage. I like having JJ cold? at the table. Makes my life in the booth right, a lot easier. See, good I asked. Good I asked. You having a hard time tonight, Henry? Mate, I'm, t I'm jet lagged. You play the yellow occasionally, right, Orphan? No, never. Taking a little uh, <laughs> power naps. Look, look at this. So the conquistador is all in again. Yeah, showers, Wang. Zero. Zero. Well, Henry, okay. we've seen yellow. Wang it's call nothing. earlier. When Jaffe but, shoved on him oh, with a seven I mean, of spades, you're, you're saying it's no matter what happens, Adrian's gonna win. You're saying it's no. Only I'm four saying rounds. showers for like yeah, yeah, yeah. min opening. I know the rules of the ace rules. nine yeah. into I Mateus's think, big yeah. blind. Like Mateus is just like, here, have some no of this. I've done like quite well in the, like low stakes PLO, and, like, and that's why you don't do that, right? Yeah, it's, it's a small. I'm probably showers. doing like hundred PLO tournaments over my record, but I've done all right. When you have someone like Mateus who's going to be jamming like, like Jack 10 suited, suited Broadways and whatnot. In high school, I was just like bored at night, and it was the only thing like Regin at that time. Matt Henry turn. always jet lagged. And I won it. Kind and of like feels like that players, recently. So I was like, yeah, you can figure out any game. Sure, <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> <laughs> what, what game was it? Stud high low. 100% played the absolute worst out of everyone in the tournament. I uh, was getting berated most of the time. <laughs> All it did was boost the confidence. <laughs> so I know shit they don't know. Oh, yeah. Stud high low. 
I would rather watch paint dry. You ruffled around in any any other games other than uh, Hold'em? I'm mostly an Omaha guy. Yeah? You're in the five-card streets? Four-card, five-card, just no six. Jaffe now with threes looking at this early position open, and this is what I mean by creative, Hard. Henry. Hard. Whale. No time back. <laughs> <laughs> Jaffe's all in, just rips in Orpin's no face. Point nine twenty-five. I want the dealer. That's fair. Warp is not happy, Henry. He doesn't trust you. He likes an extra four <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yeah. And Henry, you think he's steaming Two? a little bit, or he's not steaming. He's Orp the Turk. Okay. Good thing to check with the dealer. But he's not happy, <laughs> Henry. Maybe not happy about that threes hand from earlier, or if he, if he just rejammed, gets Adrian to fold the king ten. Wow, few people out of time banks, these, by yeah. the way. Just for RFI. <laughs> garbage. <laughs> <They're> just <tease. laughs> just garbage. <laughs> Why are they even here? <laughs> this has been a grind. This really has been a grind. Would have expected to have been down to the final table a couple of levels ago, but the short stacks just keep on fighting. Dimitar Danchev extending his lead. Top of the chip counts on the other <laughs> table. Alex Kulev currently short stack duties with seven bigs. Wang Ye with eight. 375. Bogdanov with 12. 375. Look at this, JJ just coming in hot. I mean, Henry, he has really nursed the nub tonight. And this is an interesting way to do it. An orp. Might be looking to take some of that nub, Henry. Potential rejam hand has all the options available. Just gonna pill. Keeping the weaker parts of Jonathan's range. Queen, Queen Jack, one club on board. Jonathan with enough stack to get creative post flop. It's a weird one because King High has some showdown value in a weird way. Also a very good target for Jaffe to bluff. Box straight draws, king 10, 10, 8, both get there. Although he will have the best hand a lot, so let's see what Orp does. Just gonna check, does Jaffe turn this into a bluff or does he wanna just take his showdown value? I feel like we're pretty happy to ch get to a river here, right Henry? Feels like it, I mean, when we bet, what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to fold out a nine, a jack? What about an ace? Yeah, fold out some ace highs. Look at that, Henry. This is the creativity I talk about with John Jaffe. I wouldn't think to bet there, right? I would just check. But I'm Will Jaffe, Henry, and I'm in the booth with you. Hmm? Yeah, these are mine. <laughs> proudly, <laughs> very proudly. They keep confusing me for like the other type of time banks and so on. <laughs> Blinds going up. Price of poker getting expensive, especially if you're already on short snack duties like Kulev and Wang. Both now with six big blinds. Someone in chat says, good Jaffe, four million chips. What do you think they mean, Henry? Good Jaffe, four million in chips. 
assuming they mean JJ up to 4 million. You don't think they might mean I have like 4 million play chips on a site or something? Nah. Nah, I don't think you, you play with play chips. And Shark Maze. Play chip guy? Nah. Oh. No 10 jack this time? <laughs> 10 jack sounds like it's in bad shape. I would have called. Yeah. <laughs> Paulson gonna take down another one. Four million chips himself. And can we get our production team to find if there are any more players in Iceland? Is he the only one? Is he repping the country on his own? He did say to JJ that there's uh, two or three guys that are making really decent money. I can't think of any personally, so he's 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 repping the country strong. Mateos, do we even need to see his cards, Henry, at this point? I mean, it helps when he's got Ace King. It really does. This is very wise, Henry. We might be tempted we're getting a good price. But don't step in the ring with a bull just because there's a little can of Pepsi in there, Henry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you want to be the one? I've, I've never heard that saying before, but... It's I, an American saying. I, I can imagine some people have stepped in the bull before. In, in the ring, sorry. With a bull. For a can of Pepsi. For a can of Pepsi. Add it to the list, buddy. You seen those like broken phone videos of like bulls running down the street, people like running after them? Oh, hello. Talking of bulls, JJ was down to sub 500k about an orbit ago. He's managed to spin it up to 3.2, and now got to look to shower Wang just. Two away from the final table. There's the rejam as expected. Wow, this is grim for Daniel. This is really grim. It's especially grim because he covers both players, Henry. 16 big blind rejam knows that Jaffe's going to have. Much worse than Queens in this spot. He called Jaffe with Ace Jack earlier to double up. Wang only has five bigs, Henry. This is disaster. Can our Icelandic friend get out of this pickle? I just don't think we can fold in this spot. I mean, it's a really gross spot. Well, it there it is. Makes the call. Ooh. JJ needs to fade an ace or a king I don't know to score a huge here. double as well as a bounty. I cover you, right? Daniel looking for a repeat. Ace in the window to pick up two bounties and get us down to the final table of this 40k mystery bounty. Do love rooting for an underdog. But I'm also a big Jonathan Jaffe fan. Wang knows he's in trouble. Like that diamond. The diamonds in the window. Seven of diamonds would be a beautiful man. Now, I, I deserve a good sweat now, right? <laughs> I don't know about fair play. Uh, How about the seven hey, of spades? <laughs> JJ needs to fade an right, ace, a king, All right, jack, you start off or a good six. Grade, let's do it better. It's the queen of diamonds. Rivers are set. Scores a massive double up as well as winning a bounty in the process. 
Wang Ye out in 10th, going to be going home with no, uh, 69,500 for his efforts. Back <laughs> over here, we've got Brewer. All I didn't in. use this one, right? I gave you one. Hang on a minute. What's going on here? So it's gone open jam effectively from Curly from the hijack. Brewer re jamming from the button, and Danchev is called out of the big with the King Ten of Clubs. That all sounds good, Henry, oh, but I'll tell you what's going on right now. This is an absolute bloodbath. As we predicted, my friend. Heading to the final table. Kulov with the best of it. Some weird worlds in which Brewer gets eliminated in ninth. Kulov triples up and Danchev wins Brewer's bounty. A lot of things can happen here, Henry. Clubs, diamonds, hearts. <laughs> Lol, Chris Brewer. We've seen these 9-9 nine -nine flops, Henry. <laughs> How does Brewer do it? <laughs> He's just been on an absolute tear since getting rid of the mullet. <laughs> Great decision. Top sweat. <laughs> I like how this. Oof. Oh! Stop. Oh. Ace again, Henry. It could have been worse, you know. <laughs> he was slightly behind. Are you kidding me? What? Oh. <laughs> what has been going on, man? I wonder if I fall behind. Well, like almost flipping. That is spooky. The case ah, ace. Yes. Saves Kulev. No, no, no. There is no. He had ace, no, one, no one got eliminated. He had ace 10 suited. He had king 10 of clubs. We and chopped. we play so on, we Henry. <laughs> yeah, we didn't lose a playoff. No, we didn't lose a playoff. Brewer called it as well. Uh, he didn't show king. He just showed the king. Yeah, he showed the king of clubs, yeah. I don't, I don't think it's the Danchev can't believe it. I thought we were going to the final table here, Henry. Yeah, yeah. we didn't lose a playoff. Just for you. All right, so he has one million. One million one. Is it easier for me? If How I about that for a run yeah. out? The stare down from Kulev, by the way, this is one shot. to Brewer afterwards was uh, pretty intimidating. 1,225,000. Yep. Things really did turn around right after he cut that mullet. And 1.1 starting, right? The smirk These on Brewer's face get, disappeared <laughs> immediately after. I told you there was a top sweat. <laughs> so if you're out there in the chat and you, for some reason, God knows why, have a mullet. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, we're, not, we're not mullet, mullet shaming over <laughs> Jaffy here, Jaffy is like... Chip leader now. You know? That's funny. We're pro mullets. Someone and we have a new chip thing? leader, yeah, Henry. Uh, one it's person. Jonathan Jaffe. How does he do it? It's because all the Bulgarians are at this table. Can we get one of them over there? Can we rebalance? This is... there. Can our Americans get some support on the ground here? Sean Winter, just 24 bigs. I thought he had 90, Henry. What is going on? Chris Brewer, 21 bigs. We are still going, Henry. This yeah. could this could go all night, buddy. I mean, Winter had all the chips at one point, and then since we're turning from break, things just really not going his way. Still in with a healthy stack, 24 big blinds, 4.8 million. Danchev, a bit of a blow to the stack, courtesy of Brewer. And we talk about these tournaments, they have different speeds, Henry. Sometimes it's a slog, a defensive battle. But you know what the most entertaining one is always? The bloodbath. The bloodbath has to be. Absolutely. Especially when you get people down sub five bigs, spinning it up, then back down to five bigs, then spinning it back up. And Jaffe, had he shoved like you suggested with the queen, queen five, five off, would be out, Henry. Would potentially be out. He's our chip leader. Jonathan Jaffe, no relation to me, obviously. I'm an idiot. <laughs> but he's a great poker player. And there's plenty of Americans in this. Can we get an American flag? Is this going to be a Bulgarian flag? Is this going to be another Adrian Mateus? Yeah, listen, look, look. There, there are three Bulgarians, three Americans, a Spaniard, a Turk, and Daniel Paulson repping the Icelandic. Daniel Paulson's still alive, Henry. He's in. He's in. He's got two bigs. It's, he needs to spin. It's his time to spin. 
Final table implications, bubbles. You don't want to go out now, Henry, do you? It's looking likely for Daniel. It's pre pretty brutal fashion, but... Don't give up on our man. He's... Like you can, Things are looking bleak go, over go there. Go show your hand and like, let's say you have kings there and he has like King Jack O and gets to fold. You like massively fucked my equity. It's like an insane spot to show a cold. Like it, it, obviously most of the time he's not gonna have a hand that he can fold, but like you can have a big enough hand that he has holds. Okay, but I just When I see the... only the one card? Well, I... well, he was going to show both, I mean. Yeah, well, he stopped and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why, that's yeah, why, I do. you asked why, like, that's why. It's yeah, a, but, uh, It's a really insane spot to show a call. Yeah, okay. but... Drama. gonna happen, really. But Drama I don't made think he's the falling day. For... I mean, if you show him, if you show him a big hand... He thought maybe that... Like, let's say you had shown kings and he had king-ten suited, he would fold. Never. And that's insane, like, you'd have just completely fucked my equity then. I can't do it, but... What? I don't think he's he fold. I don't think you're gonna fold King Ten Suited. What? I have four million. You have four million. But never mind, it's perfect. <sighs> Bro, upset about something. Not sure exactly what, I think. Five seconds. Cool. That Jeff went to show his hand thinking that they're like all in or something like that i'm, I'm not <laughs> entirely sure kind of defending from the big 10 5 5 flops best against the sevens you have 1.2 oh, brewer right? he started a hand before the blinds with 1.8 okay Wow, Brewer's just going to run it. Don't think Kulev's going to be folding. Are we, playing <coughs> we are playing right now hand for hand. You can start the clock. I call. So it is hand for hand. Kulev makes the call. Uh, I have a 10. I mean, Brewer. In rough shape here. Looking for a red seven. Ten. Little running spades as we head back over. Daniel Powson all in on the bottom. One million. Man, it's looking pretty bleak for the Triton first timer. Orpins flopped bottom two. Now the big. And JJ's going to have to fold the king queen. Whoa. What have we here? JJ not being pushed around. There's a bounty on the line. <laughs> Wants to see a turn. Daniel awesome. with just 5%, Henry. Yeah, he knows he's in trouble. Can we turn a miracle here? Let's turn an eight for a sweat. Remember the boys. Sorry. There's got to be some aces left in there. Yeah, let's, let's ah. turn an eight for a sweat and then... Yeah, uh, okay. We'll deal with the aces on the river. Let's pick up a gut shot. Some life. For the Triton debutant. Three caches so far. The four events he played. This one being his fourth. Another crossbar finish perhaps, unless he can find the three on the river. Doink. Yeah, Orpin says run it. JJ going to get out of there. You are Hello. live, Daniel. Four outs once for his tournament life. To triple up <laughs> that massive ace-10 hand yeah, against the queens of JJ. Not going his way. Leaving him short stacked. Ah, yeah, yo. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Can he do it, Henry? Can he stay alive here? I don't think I can fold it. Is anyone to root for? There's no way. No, 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 no. It's got to be Daniel. 
Coming out for the first time. Oh, I should have pulled the four dudes off. <laughs> How'd you bust the biggest spot of your life? Well, the guy called the four two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's get started now. To get us down to the final All table. Right, got my running shoes on. Let's run good with it. Mystery today, bounty. Today. Oh, it's the ace again, Henry. Awesome, the needle from the deck. Pleasure and honor. Ace of spades to rub it in, but top pair no good for Daniel against Orpins. Flopped bottom two. Going to be going home with 82,000 for his efforts. Two cards to come over here. But we're looking for a red seven or running spades. Could have a double elimination. Brewer can find another walking stick. Ah, he's just dead on the turn. Kulev boats up. Back up to 3.5 million. What a swingy couple of frames it's been here for several people still in the mix. But we are down to our final table, Will. It is the qualifier, Daniel Powson, out in ninth, going home with 82,000 for his efforts. But that final table bubble always going to sting. It's a Bulgarian and American affair. Dimitar Danchev going to be leading the final eight. Jonathan Jaffe in second. Sean Winter and Chris Brewer also in the mix, as well as Alex Kulev and Yulian Bogdanov. Not forget about Adrian Mateus, who's been putting on an absolute clinic here today, as well as Orpin Kisichagoglu. Uh, Will, this has been the tournament of spin-ups. It's been a bloodbath. I mean, look, normally I would pick Adrian Mateos, but he's got three American soldiers that are very experienced in battle. And we've got the Bulgarian delegation, Dimitar, Yulian, and Alex. And... Orp the Turk? Yeah, let's not sleep on Orp. Number one on Turkey's all-time money list. All now guaranteed 99,400 for their efforts. Obviously, the pay jumps get steeper as we work our way down to that top prize of 804,000. And tomorrow, Ali Najjar will be hosting the Mystery Bounty Prize draw with a top bounty prize of 500,000. Will Jaffe and myself going to step aside? We've got the night shift coming in. Arlene Najjar and Nick Shulman are going to be taking us down to a champion. I believe about a 25-minute break or so for the final tableists to just stretch their legs, you know, maybe run some numbers, look at how they want to approach these uh, bounties they're up for grabs. And Will and I hopefully back tomorrow, man. GG's, dude. And uh, catch the viewers in about 25 minutes' time. Welcome to the Daily Dose of GTO Quiz of the Day. Do you know how to identify good range bet boards? Cut off versus button, 3 bet pot, 40 big blinds deep. Which of these flops should button C bet 100% of their range? Ace King King, Ace 7 3, King Jack 6, or 8 7 3? Find the answer in the Daily Dose of GTO, our free ebook designed to help you master GTO poker in just 5 minutes per day. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
Just Seize the Wonder. 제주 신화 월드. Your chips in so that the bounty is not up for grabs. I don't know. Look, I'm not best friends with David, but I don't think he's playing those type of games. Vincent, who got 11th in our last event, in a great spot, all things considered, right? With the ace jack, going bounty hunting. Yeah, flipping for a bounty, like you said, that top bounty worth half a million. The EV of each bounty is worth 79k, so these 4k ladders are still pretty insignificant compared to the size of the bounties up for grabs. Time banks Yan wants to burn through here. He's going to get to see the relative good news that he's flipping. I believe both these guys are from New Zealand, Henry. I believe you're right. So I have this one and, and three more? and just come on man let's get it let's get this over with let's flip let's see what we got to do yeah, vincent's made his move bit of a smirk on the ant's face the way he shuffles those chips man i mean aggressive he's an aggressive player henry that is true is he gonna burn through all of them i mean dude what if you win the hand and you get put in a tough spot yeah, interesting that he's willing to go with all the time banks here, Henry, right? Like, just assuming if he wins he that he'll it. act quickly going forward. And if he loses, obviously not an issue he'll have to worry about. Joey Chung taking a little nap. The baby getting some sleep there, Henry. Good time for it, no? Hey, listen, man, whatever they give you. You know, you know what? You I'm going to take, take, take a sec here, too. <laughs> just close my eyes in the booth. A little 30-second power nap. Join us in chat. Take a little. This is the time. Close your eyes because we got a long night ahead of us. Or morning. Let us know where you're watching from. I played all the way down to a champion today. And the bounty draw tomorrow. Here we go. Spin time. Tables the tens. Wang, happy to see. It's not up against ace king, aces, kings, ace queen. So far, so good for Yan. Always nice to have a little life, though, right? The backdoor hearts. The backdoor back Bangkok, yeah, you know. Backdoor what? The backdoor Bangkok. One card to come. Yan needs to fade an ace. Nice call there, Henry. Again. Ah, yeah. I don't know why. I just felt like the tens were holding and piece of clubs, corner pocket, Wang up to 3.7 million. Second in chips overall with 20 left. And gets that all important. Yeah, I guess uh, Tails just not giving Kulev credit for overpairs. And also going back to the blockers, right? He's blocking a lot of them. He's blocking a lot of the good hands that Kulev has there. He also knows Kulev doesn't have a lot of eights, right? So just a really nice read. See what Ding wants to do here. He does have Joe in the small blind on short stack duties. Yeah, suited King looks like he's going to take it upstairs. And this has been another theme here, Henry, the suited Kings. The apparently the silicone overlord, the solver master, loves them. The silicone overlord. That's what Rask calls it. <laughs> okay, I need to. You need to get a little bit. I know you've been playing. I know you've been making runs. And Joey the baby's all in here, taking a stand. And oh. Kulev, wow. Okay. Can and I get this is going to be really interesting, Henry, because <laughs> Bao covers yeah. both players. So he can go. You think he's going to go for both bounties? 15 bigs? It's 15 bigs, Henry. One of those guys could be worth $500,000 if he busts them and pulls the right ticket. Someone could do the back of napkin math and figure out how many bigs a bounty's worth at the moment. Oh, 
it would help me solve it on the fly. I'm if I'm bow here, I'm calling, but I'm also a big part of Seven. me just gambling because these guys are so much better than me. But I feel like he's getting a. It's obviously not the hand you want, right? You could just be completely smashed. But Joe only has two big blinds, right? Joe has two. Sorry, Joe has uh, four. Kulev could be re-jamming hands like Jack-10, Queen-Jack, Queen-10. You're really hoping for a situation like this, which is not fantastic, but... Another problem, though, is if you call and lose, you're crippled now. It's a lot to think about. Ding has taken down a mystery bounty before. Also pulled out the top bounty prize, if I'm not mistaken. That's how to get it done. Yeah, first place in the 30k mystery bounty here in Cyprus. At the Triton <laughs> series. pitch it pained by the two bounty spot probably one of those hands he's gonna have to review later on when he gets back to the PC now I'm gonna have to just live with his decision 680 out there nice little overlay for Joe if he can find an ace King high flop will does have the spade working Joey got fourth in the 25k silver main here for 200, sorry, for 560,000, Henry, but he's going to need an ace here. He's going to be out. No Barry this time. It's Joe Chong departs in 18th. Looking up another cash, as Will mentioned, this series. It was powerful muscle. Depends. For some of us, I guess. For some of us, I was about to say, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Depends who you're asking. Ask the chat, I mean. I knew you were going to go there. Vincent, back in the action. And I notice Adrian does this thing. I, this is not unintentional. This is this is a little bit of, I'm just going to F with you here, Henry. The, the posturing. I'm here. telling you, a lot of people would just fold here. They're not 5-4 off. He also may just play it, Henry. I don't know. But... I don't think that is unintentional. Even Making if he has no sweat. plans on playing yeah. the hand, he's going to make Vincent sweat. And so is Bao here. Waited patiently, picks up the nines. Can't think of any other move than all in. What does he come with? Oh. Love that watch from Bao, Henry. And that's probably like what? Like a couple hundred dollars, that plastic, the blue? She Maybe in the store here? Couple hundred thousand? I was gonna and say Vincent, a couple hundred thousand, dude. Vincent snaps him, and he's going to go bounty hunting. We're going to get a lot of those oh, chips back. He just lost to Adrian. <laughs> oh, yeah. We did say it's go time for Ding. Going to need to spin the wheel. Nine's in good shape. Empires have been built on smaller edges than 10%, but Ace of Hearts in the mm. window, followed by a nine in the kitchen. And it's just getting from bad to worse for Vincent. Does pick up an ace out now, though, Henry. Barry Greenstein, is there one left? This would be a dirty way to do it. Nice double for Bao. Brutal turn of events there for Vincent. Just got put in the meat grinder by Kulev, then Mateos, then doubles up, and now is going to be one of the short stacks himself. Yeah, just looking at his graph. He's played, very, yeah. he's played very well, Vincent, but 11th in the last event, Henry. Now this turn of events after... You have to. A guy wants to to bet more than he's got yeah. in his stack. You know, okay, let's, let's play I mean, my Camry car keys have gone in the middle more times than many, but unfortunately nobody really wants to play for those, Henry. Yeah, my swatch has been thrown in a few times as well, you know. Kulev, not a watch guy, though. Makes it 200. Notice him sizing up a little here. This is interesting on Adrian's big blind and Vincent with the pocket tens, a spot he's been waiting for. Man, if Vincent busts here, 
which he could. It's going to be uh, it's been a long old walk back to the hotel room after a very, very frustrating 13, 14 hands. Tens against Ace Jack. He's a 15% favorite with five to come. Kulev will have a healthy amount of chips if he can spike here. 0.7 in the middle as it does come. King, Jack, seven, and kind of feels like we just knew it was coming. You just could feel it, right? Yeah. Needs a nine or a 10 here, but it just feels so grim for Vincent, and it's felt that way. Can he hit? This just felt almost predestined, right, the way the last hands kind of played out. That's honestly one of the, the roughest kind of downfalls I, I've seen in, in quite some time, Will. I mean, from 3.7 million third in chips with 17 left. I want to see him get heads up at this point. I mean, brutal. <coughs> and really, Henry, when I think of like rags to riches poker tournament stories, Chris Brewer comes to mind. I don't know if you were in the booth for it, but he cried tears after busting one of these I've events. I've cried tears. Real tears. And then he just went on a tear. Didn't quit. He's back. And look at this, Henry. Are we about to be spinning the dong again? I feel bad about this one, Will. I'll be honest with you. You don't feel good? No, you know, the 10-9, the, the, the queen jack, I felt good. The ace jack feels like almost too good of a hand. Your deck reads have been on point today. There he goes, though. I, I feel like the six is sure. coming up against the six. Six is a hot. We saw Mario oh, Mossback win. Yeah, I'm just going to get a count to make sure. Is that the hand he won the last tournament yeah. with? He won, won the tournament against uh, Ido with sixes. I mean, <coughs> yeah, but Sergio Ido is nine, not Dong Chen. Okay. Brewer getting a count. He's not, he's not folding. And Dong now, 2.2 million in here, Henry. Just two mm. hands ago down to 75K. Flicks it in the middle. Now a chance to be like pretty healthy. Three three in a row. Feels feels tough, Will. I don't know how I feel about this one. I feel good. You feel good? Okay. We keep spinning the dong. Get back up to 2.2 .2 mil. Oh, there we go. Jack in the window. What was I even concerned about? Jack 9-3. Ding dong. <laughs> We're going from 75k to 2.2 .2 million in, in three hands unless Brewer can find a six. Let's just boat up on the river. Just, just to be to, safe, just right? Just to like really make a statement. There it is, Henry. What and what? I mean, I get it. You haven't been here, right? You're a little rusty. That's You're jet lagged. True. It's forgivable. But what happened there, man, with that deck read? I mean, I was I was way off. I, you, you're probably still just feeling the the shock from playing with these guys, huh? I feel like a little, there's that. You need a little more time in the booth, my friend. There's definitely that. And also just underestimating Dong Chen, which is just a massive... A huge error. Massive uh, slip-up on my end. Won't happen again. He's moved up to sixth in chips in the space of three hands, up to 28 bigs. And here, I do want to clarify, that's not my younger brother. But he's all in. JJ. Jonathan Jaffe, one of the best. And Wang has had a miserable day, Henry. Nothing has, you know, it's not like he's done anything wrong either. Remember, he, Mateos turned a set against him on the perfect barrel card. Yeah. Now a rough. suited ace in the hijack and just misery. And, and this is not just a clear fold, by the way, against John Jaffe. I really don't think it is. I'm not saying it's a good spot, but John is a maniac. Is it 19 bigs hijack. Well, what Dong is trying to figure out is are there these offsuit aces, right? Is 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 John doing this with the ace four off? How wide is he doing it? The ace seven does feel light, but Dong doesn't have a lot of chips behind. Sorry, Wang. Can't stop thinking about Dong. I'm telling you. There it goes, Henry. Really nice call too by Wang, and he's in a good spot to double here. Jaffe looking to go bounty hunting. That's a pretty bold call there from Wang, just correctly recognizing that JJ is going to have all the suited broadways, and as Will mentioned, the weaker ace -X. 
again, Wang, first Triton, right? Cash the first two events here in the money again. In a great spot to double or at least chop this pot. A lot of chop opportunities here, but. A lot. Well, you take like seven spades. And yeah, this is. Uh, looking for a seven now. Chop it up, gents. One for JJ to take note of, though. That Wang's not afraid. The table, too, to put as in well. 19 bigs. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of these guys have played with Jonathan Dial. I mean, Dong was down to less than a big blind, was forced all in, won three hands in a row to then spin it up to 21 bigs. He's very comfortable now, middle of the pack. And Daniel Paulson. Go time. Yeah. Touched on it earlier, but the only player I know from Iceland that plays poker won a package, parlayed it with a couple of big caches here, now another, but looking for that first final table. That confidence must be I already have the bounty through the roof. For Daniel, as Will mentioned, getting a few caches, parlaying it into another cache here in the, the mystery bounty. I think Vieira. It, this All just it. feels too good, yeah. It, we have hands we dominate. And Orpin now. This is really interesting, Henry. Two bounties for him and Jack-10 suited. And I, Yeah, I just That's don't know how one, you one, three, don't gamble here, honestly. One, two, five, zero. One, two, five. Joe shove only for 12 bigs. Yeah, this just feels uh, mandatory. And Orpin, okay. Orp the Turk. In a great spot to take two bounties. Obviously, he's not ahead, but it's essentially even three ways. Daniel is ahead. Huge spot for him. It doesn't like. You have a good spot. As long as the chips is coming this way, then we're all good. We're all in a good spot. Everyone live, not to state the obvious. Yeah, everyone is happy with the holding. Always rooting for the underdogs. Daniel venturing out for the first time. Be nice to see him hold here. Oh. Ace in the window. Oh, smooth. Yeah, that's about and as clean as it guy. comes, Henry. 95% now for Daniel. <laughs> but it's never over, is it? And a really bad card for Vieira because he now needs to catch to stay in the tournament. Or Orp will take him out. Oh, that's true. Didn't think of that. Yeah. Disastrous run for Vieira. That's brutal. Yeah. Well spotted, Will. Yeah, so Daniel obviously gets the triple, but the 10 on the turn, Orpin did cover Jao. So it's Jao that's actually out in 14th. Daniel gets the triple, and Orpin gets the bounty. Then we're on your cash. Thank you, Dana. Appreciate it. Would have preferred to, you know, last an extra half hour or so inside the money, but I'm not going to turn my nose up. Cash in the 25k. Daniel now with ace jack off, gonna raise it up. Nice for Daniel to cover Ding. Not so nice for him to have John Jaffe in the big though with a very pretty jack 10 of hearts. And these are interesting spots because obviously very comfy defend, but also Type of hand John might get some ideas about. Certainly a rejammable type of hand. There we go. All you can eat. <laughs> and goes for the jam. <laughs> and Daniel doesn't know it, but he hasn't dominated. Well, as you know, my average buy and I have to call. He calls. Wow, great call from Daniel for his tournament life. He's way ahead here. Not long ago, Henry, he was down to about 600,000. Can spin it up to almost 4 yeah. million if he can hold here. I'm always rooting for the underdogs, man. I just heard Daniel say, look, Jonathan, you know what my average buy-in normally is. Zero I've ever played. <laughs> Have to make the call here. In great shape to get a huge double. Ace in the window again for Daniel. Some sweaty turn cards, though. Eight of hearts for a good sweat, right? <laughs> I like this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do, too. Oh, 
How about the eight of clubs? <laughs> Not sweaty enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Some, some, little. <laughs> oh yeah, that felt like an extra pump. <laughs> oh, right, but hope we didn't see it. Clean run out for Daniel. Up to 3.9 million, 62,000 <laughs> guaranteed for these final 13. Andre, I, I just he's up I to like fourth in chips. I I <laughs> I mean, really just enjoying you. the moment. In the yeah, like this. Hey everyone, welcome back to continuing coverage of the Triton Super High Roller Series from here on Jeju Island in South Korea. Nick Shulman, Ali Najad here with the conclusion of the $40,000 mystery bounty. Just eight players remain out there. Nick, just before we came to the desk, you were alluding to you haven't had too many opportunities to commentate on mystery bounties. And of course, as we know, this is a fairly recent phenomenon. It used to be just normal bounties. Now we spice it up a little bit more. I assume you're a fan. Uh... Yeah, I'm a fan, Ali. Good, good to know. Uh, EV of each envelope, it should be said, is $79,000, and that's based on this distribution. We do have one $500,000 bounty envelope, three $200,000 bounty envelopes, 700Ks, 1180Ks, 2640Ks, two 40Ks that also include a draw again, and my personal favorite is they sweat the envelope that's gold in color, which alludes to one of the bigger prizes, and one of them is just stone goose eggs that's the whole cold. way. But it's a draw again. So yeah, you fair. don't actually get showered for the full amount. Let's take a look inside the Triton Poker Plus app at the way things are breaking down right here. Blinds of 100, 200, with a 200K big blind. Any Bulgaria's Dimitar Donchev resting atop the leaderboard. 7.3 million in front of him. And we glance all the way down to the bookended Bulgarian, Yulian Bogdanov, who's been nice, Snake, on the opportunities we've had to observe him. Just seven bigs, a little urgency there. Indeed. Yeah. 13 bigs. <laughs> Have I really just, uh, I'm just going, I'm doing the whole thing now. I'm so sorry. I should, I should. You, uh, you, 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 you go, go on, <laughs> Ali. This is, this is your moment. My I, listen, the mystery bounty is my personal favorite every I'm single glad. time the Triton comes around. And uh, Sean Winters in the building, worthy of note. Chris Brewer there as well from the American delegation, Nick. And Adrian Mateos on form, the Spaniard, already a title here in Jeju. We'll be observing exactly how he navigates in just moments. Average stack, 4.8 million, 24 big blinds. And with that, we send it over to our TD, Luca Vivaldi, with the intros. 190 entries in this 40K mystery bounties. We're down to a final table. They're going to play for a first prize of $804,000. And a lot of mystery bounties left to claim. Tomorrow, we're going to find alongside Ali, who's going to win those golden envelopes. But for now, please allow me to introduce you to your final table. EC number one from Bulgaria, 3.5 million. Please welcome Alex Kulev. Kulev already four attempts here, 25 attempts rather, 26 in the 20K, eight max. This is second cash, yet to win a title. In C number two from the US, 4.7 million. Please welcome Sean Winter. Winter, perhaps the grindiest off of a short stack. 0 for 5 so far here in Jeju. This is first cash in six attempts. Seventh overall, 3.2 million in career Triton earn. In C number three with 6.5 million also from the US. Please put Jen together for Jonathan Jaffe. An admitted oversight in the pregame. Don't sleep on Jaffe, one-time title winner. This is 10th career Triton Cash. Knocking on the door of 3 million Triton Earn. Finish 14th in the 25K Silver Seat number main. five from Bulgaria, 1.4 million. Please welcome Yulian Bogdanov. About as steely as it gets is Yulian. Finished third in the 30K, eight max here in Jeju, 16th in the 15K, 726,000 in career Triton Earn. This is fourth C number cash. six with 6.1 million from Spain. Please welcome Adrian Mateos. Already talked about the seal breaking first title that he had in the 30K, eight max, a seven figure payout, bringing him to 7.1 million in career Triton Earn. Looking for a second title already here in Jeju. C number seven from Turkey, 5.9 million. Please put your hand together for Orpen Kistachikoglu. Orpen. 
His sixth event here in Jeju, finished 31st and 25K silver main, two-time title holder. This is 10th career, Triton Cash, six and a half million. number eight from the US, 2.6 million. Please welcome Chris Brewer. Brewer playing under the stars and stripes, 6.3 million plus in career, Triton earnings, two-time title winner, 19th career cash, 0 for 5 here in Jeju, coming into this one. Last but not least, the third Bulgarian at this final table, and our chip leader with 7.3 million. Please welcome Dimitar Danchev. Bulgaria making waves, three deep here at this FT, three for four coming in, four for five. Now is Danchev, 900K in career, Triton earnings. This is seventh cash, looking for his first title. Right players, we still have 22 minutes remaining on level 24, 100,000, 200,000, 200,000. The button has been drawn on Adrian, I wish you all the very best of luck. Pavel, shuffle up and deal, please. So there it is. A look at your official chip counts as we get things underway at the final table of the 40K 8 Max. One, two, and two means half a million orbit, the price of poker. It's all brought to you by GG Poker. Only one sub 10 big blind stack, but the hunting is a little bit more prevalent in bounty formats, Nick, as that 79,000 per envelope is something that is negligible even when you consider that eighth is 99,400 you know the jumps not worth as much as the envelopes big time that acr.eu bringing us those official payouts 800 dimes up top 36,000 let's call it the difference between eighth and seventh. Just how deep an impact in your experience having played bounty in, you know, events and formats do the envelopes have? Do you kind of look up and go, whoa, now that's a showdown I didn't expect? Well, it's an interesting format in Triton where you draw the bounties the next day. Okay. The bounty tournaments I've played in the Mysteries, they're drawn that day. So you can kind of gauge which bounties are missing and stuff like that, but they have a huge impact. Kings for Kulaf, bounty tournament or not. Yeah, we like this. It will be impactful. Kulev coming in sixth of eight in chips. 18 bigs, takes us upstairs, 450, predictable. Oh my, Ali, <coughs> what are we walking into this evening? Well, as I like to refer to it, frostbite. As these kings felt toasty and instead will be toasted by the aces of Sean Winter. Million? Well, this is unusually salty for Kulev and a decision for Brewer, he's gone. Ace Queen into the bin. And for Kulev, 3.1 back, Nick. Are the options yeah, just me. one and one alone? Not gonna sure, Ali. I, I think maybe in a bounty we're more apt to just put it in. In the hopes, of course, that it all comes forward from winter, but all that hope will be replaced with despair. Oh, he does just click it back, and Sean likes to see this, Sally. Not that the furrowed brow would be giving anything away in that respect, as Officer Winter about to give a speeding ticket. Although Kulev not speeding, this is just a man playing a hand. Sean, utilizing the time bank here. On. Okay. 
Well, 7.5 in the middle. Yep. And it took but one hand to first make it happen. Hand, first strike. Doji. <laughs> 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 right? First hand after the break. Cool. Mislim pop kupa, brat. Pop kupa, mislim. I don't speak Bulgarian, but I feel like I know what he's talking about. Yes, we As might have just learned how to say king. Yeah. 965, though unavailable thus far. As the covering stack of winter is an 86% favorite with two to come. Diamond works for Kulev, and no sooner do I say it than all of a sudden the flush draw materializes. And you can see Fahadim Mustafa and company. Delighted. Oh, oh my! my. Mm. That's really sick for Sean. Bit of a silly game we play. <laughs> <laughs> Let us observe, by the way, Sean's reactions. Among the most entertaining in the game. Yeah, Sean is really kind of the goat. He takes it very well in general, but uh, he's feeling that one, Ali. Oh, yeah. By the way, one of the most incredibly dry and delightful senses of humor on tour yes. nestled there in that seat. No, I know, but how much no more is this? than about six beats. Oh, so how much does he have? We're good, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thirty-eight bigs now for Kulev. Vaulting upwards. First hand, deck was set. Everyone comes back. Into the Kulev, chip lead, by the way. It was close. Uh -huh. No, Alex sponsored Kulev, play. Part sponsored owner. Play. Oh, sponsored player. This is like uh, Carrie in the poker group. What's more painful is he has about 600,000 more than he should. Not sure what Sean was alluding to, but uh, perhaps clarity will be upon us. Probably and not. <laughs> clearly, the place to go to get your fix when it comes to online poker is GG Poker. For me personally, the reason being that it's the only official site where you can qualify for Triton events, but also for the World Series of Poker main event from just a dollar. April 1st and beyond. Mark your calendar. And Mark Alex Kulev in the chip lead by just 200K. Opens to 400,000. This is anticipated behavior. Under the gun with the Queen Jack suited and that lead. Sevens now for Bogdanov, the shorty. Well, he has just a, a hair more than winter. <laughs> 200K, the distance between them. What is Sean laughing? <laughs> so great. Happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> He really is one of the funniest. And isn't always trying to be funny. He's just being Sean. Yeah, he has both going. Yeah. Close for Bogdanov. I mean, when only 200K separates us from Sean, how much does that... ICM really factor in here? It factors in. Sean's taking the blind before us as well. It does let it go.
makes you feel any better. In my experience, this guy usually has really good hands. No. This might be problem. Jaffe. So good that chip leaders are giving him more than five bigs. Edno. Consoling Yuli in there, unsolicited. That's interesting. That's how also good, just that's how good he runs. <coughs> won't play holding against him. I see. <laughs> I mean, everyone's in I guess Dimitar folded small to him. You know what's oh, crazy? It's <laughs> Sean on a short stack. Yeah. Nope. To me, yeah, is like maybe that. his happy place. <laughs> Not <laughs> really, but you know no, what I mean. He has that <laughs> kind of reputation because he really does grind the short stack Snapple. like few others. But he also gets chips a lot. But you're right, Ali. He he's very much still in this thing. Jaffe with the suited connector and also what appears to be an Oregon Trail T-shirt. You remember that game? Nick, I don't. you ever play that game? No. It's this little like OG sim on Mac, the I think, little, the 8-bit okay. graphics. Yeah. All right. That is, a f that is a fire shirt, if that's what it is. Okay. I'll I'm almost positive. We kind of look to Ike for like the t-shirt game a little bit, you know, but here he is. You have died of dysentery. Yeah. <laughs> You've played this game, yeah. you're saying. Oh yeah. When I was an element. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure, sure it's a good one. It's so good. Oh. Well, I know he's giving me a walk. <laughs> <laughs> Same spot. <laughs> it really was. Jaffe under the gun, ace nine. Coming for winter. Bounty hunting a little bit. Still ace nine, respectable, but. Note the, the non-defend from Sean. Stone yeah. dominated. Yeah. I think a lot of people would have defended there. Tend to agree. Free orbit for Jaffe. The result. is now for El Conquistador. Right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Min raise, King Salmon for winter in the small. No thank you. Ace deuce for Jaffe in the big. Obvious issues. Proceeds. <coughs> Jack, Jack, seven. Point three percent is Jaffe here. That's not where you want to be, Ali. No. <laughs> running jacks, running deuces. The only escapes. <coughs> Mateos sprinkles. And a check fold for Jaffe who keeps the damage to a minimum.
You've been in the booth for quite a few bounty events at this point, right, Ali? Yes, sir. They're fun. I mean, the most fun part for me is tomorrow, where during the dinner break is when I get to go out there and get my Bob Barker on. You got your outfit ready to go? Or what are we going with, Ali? No. Game time? Or? I might step it up a little bit, but truly, you know, it can get real fun out there with regard to the, the mystery, the squeezes. I believe Orpin has actually purchased some envelopes from some folks going in, you know, w maybe at a discount. Okay. You want to sell me your envelope? Yeah. 79,000 EV, I'll give you 60 dimes or, or something. You know what I mean? Just these sorts of things. Can You're joking though, right? No, I think he did. That's allowed? I think he did it, yeah. Wow. Don't see why not. Doesn't affect play in any way. You're what right. happens after we're You're done. Right. It's you a know? scenario I've never seen, but... Don Chip, King-10 offsuit, hijack open. We've seen this in particular off of... A big stack, late position, Jaffe, paused, with the queen, nine of spades. <coughs> Go on, John. Getting after Donchev, and of course, part of this is the perception that Donchev is going to be dancing a little bit here as big stack. You're right, and they both have that kind of valuable stack that they don't want to part with. Jaffe. Yeah, gets Coming it through. Donchev. Very nice, Jonathan. A little, you know, I don't want to make too much out of that spot, but it takes some courage. In ICM scenarios, with a stack such as Jaffe's to potentially get engaged against the covering other big stacks out there, you know that your range is supposed to be narrow, you're representing, here like you are out of position. You know. Props? Well, that's why it's nice to be suited in case we get flatted. At least we can flop our way out. Sure. Interested, Ali. He's gone. King eight suited, the responsible kid. I, don't, I know nothing's funny right now, but I just. No, it's not. I to just, just laugh at Sean straight away when it's just on him. It's no, it's the facial expressions that he it's goes just through. His face, the Ali. myriad of, of Ali, different. It's just his face. No, it's the brow. It's the Fair everything feels enough. painful. You know yeah. what I mean? Four twenty-five. You think he's still thinking about that seven point six million that could <laughs> Listen, be in front of him? If he's not, do you he's think not he's normal. eyeing Kulev stack a touch? So we see four twenty-five to go from Jaffe. Queen eight off. Adrian glances at the clock. Defense and a gutter on the 10-9-3 board for Mateo. Same story for Jaffe, by the way. Unpaired in both camps. 1.1 and change in the middle. These are interesting. Could see Jaffe going fairly big here sometimes. Does check. And then connect with the queen on the turn. Two-way straight draw for Mateos. 
One of the least coveted two-way straight draws we could have, one would suppose. Oh, but he is going for 800, and as it stands now, this is not going to work out, barring improvement. Yeah, Jaffe's not going to be going anywhere. Sizing, by the way, there's some weight. As such, happy to flat is Jonathan. It's another 1.6, somewhat unexpectedly works its way into the middle here. Two and three quarter million in the middle and the jack just rolls right off. Nick, this is a touch gross and I'm not just talking about from the queen eight versus eight six perspective, but just top pair. We call this barrel now the four liner on board and we may anticipate a barrel coming up. Not sure, though, by the way, because Adrian could see some King X being involved in Jaffe's hand. He could. Let's see what El Conquistador goes for. The check. And would think Jaffe bets for value and gets snapped in relatively short order. And as you said, Ali, chop it up. Jaffe, with the same hand, uh, confess it was an oversight that he had the eight dangler in the same straight here as I was embarking upon that narrative, but nevertheless, snap call, carve it up. Shout out, by the way, to the YouTube chat, those of you soaking us up. How are we doing, chat? At the Triton YouTube channel. Give us a like and a subscribe, and continue to give us little insights like you've done with respect to a bit of a flashback, the aces versus king spot, Nick. Chat catching that both of the other kings sure. had mm -hmm. been folded pre-flop. That's cold. So it's a lot Extra grosser cold. than even Sean realizes right now. Set was unavailable to Kulev. It had to be a straight or a flush. Get service. Thank you. I know it's early hours back home in the U.S., but about 10.30 p.m. local time, which I do believe qualifies for official night shift uh, designation. Yes, Sally. Locally. <laughs> you know how much I love this? Yes, yes, I do, unfortunately. Oh, allow I it. Embrace it. You know? Malk on the cold or something? Mm hmm? You look like you're trying to rub something off the cold. Yeah, there is like a mark. Huh. I'm trying to figure out if there is a mark on it. Yeah, yeah. There's a puncture there. Oh, yeah, there is. Right? Yeah, there is. I guess it needs to go. Yeah, we need a new deck. It's a new deck, but it's not really. I don't know. Another new deck. That's weird. Yeah, it's, it's also like shiny. That's really weird. Anomaly being detected, nice. by the way, on one of the cards, it would seem. So we'll get a new deck here we'll shortly. As Kulev makes it 400 to go with Jack-10. You could feel a little concern from, from Brewer, too. Almost teetering on paranoia, Ali. Did you hear that? Said that's shiny, that's weird. I mean... I don't like things on the cards either. We've all been around, but Triton's the best in the business. You never know, though, you know? Somebody could be having some wings at the table. <laughs> you ever found a little buffalo sauce on the back of yeah, one? a little. Nick? My, the one that's weird for me is always like, I don't have a better word for it than schmutz. 
Yeah, a little schmutz on the cards, of course. We see the chips there, not particularly deep, but a lot of drama as the bounties, bounty tournaments are more top heavy. A little bit old school, everybody's going for the W. But also the envelopes, and let's not forget That's all bust thus, outs here. Thus the top heavy pass, right, including right. the envelopes. Kulev in front, courtesy of sending winter all the way down. I didn't know end. Persians from, from California have schmutz in the... Uh, Oh, schmutz, schmata, you know? Good you. But it is always uncomfortable. You're always like, I, I don't really want to rub this off because it's unclear where this originated. <laughs> this just came out of this guy's... Yeah. Schnazul. Just came out of his schnazul, Ali. Everybody always goes to the, no, 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 it's the shuffle machine. Winter There's has stuff in three the shuffle bigs. Machine. It feels like he's just planted at the table. But he does need help. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That you go ahead and so fast, uh, go, go oh, ahead and set well, a line on how many more hands you think Winters got in him, and I'll just take the, the over because I've deeper. watched it. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen this dude. Yeah. And there's been some equity. slithery performances thus far at final tables here in Jeju. We talked about David Peters. He worked his way into a deep little run. Mosbach did the same earlier today, I think it was. Mario had a very nice spin. You're right. Queen Jack for Kulev. Up we go. New blind level. 125, 250. Six and a quarter per orbit the price. Ace 10 for El Conquistador on the button. Thought about it. Here's the one that Jaffe got frisky with against Kulev earlier. In the hands of Orpin. Similar stack depth interactions. This one, he's handily covered by the chip leader where the Jaffe Dimitar hand, they had identical stacks of 6.4 million. Pardon me, Bulgarian conflations. It was indeed Donchev that Jaffe three bet. Sounds like there's some fun happening on the outer tables, Ali. Appeared well, to be a hard laugh. I would imagine that that fun wasn't coming from the slot bank that's just to the right of the set here. No, that is darkness on the edge of town, <laughs> that slot bank. I have not seen one person enjoying themselves there. I'm so glad you've zeroed in on it because I've walked past that oh. thing three dozen times in the oh, last four or five days. It is, it is very deep toward the filter, cigarettes. It's it bad. Is very little noise the being issued. The upside down holding <coughs> of the cigarette and just the vacant pushing of the button <laughs> one time. What happens when you but pick guess what? You? Not this time, my friend. I mean, 72.5% payback yeah, out of that, that bank of there is my... I mean, this yeah. one is an actual black spot in the corner. Can you take it off? No. I mean, look at that. That's an actual black spot. Yeah, well, I and mean, you cannot, like... No, it's not. I mean, see if I can really rub hold. You, you see it. This is really bothering Brewer. Yeah, it's not coming out. Yeah, we cannot get this I mean, that one new like deck. It's just like a big black spot in the corner of the cold. So you can change, Chris. It's no problem. <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> Others far less bothered, by the way. Maybe sense of comfort that nothing untoward is afoot. I think it matters also what the card is, Nick. Obviously, if it, the old five oh, of hearts, uh, you know. Uh, I, don't I know. mean, any card that has a visible mark, they should change. It does sure. happen. Sure. Old. By the I mean, way, did I just say one, the five of like hearts? You just see the... I can't rub it out. Just had like two a big fives? black spot. It looks like the card might have a deformity of some kind. It's sure. a wheeled one. Yeah, well, what? Yeah. It's a, it was a five of diamonds. Kind of, that was, oh, that was close. I mean, that one has a big black mulk on the corner. I don't know. <laughs> on, My guys, guess, by the way, is because I was in the card room. Hey, what black it is no, I wasn't. Yeah. That was the five of diamonds. Biggest expense of the trade in decks and fruit plates. What's oh, the fruit so We have another deck change. <laughs> <laughs> a quick pause. We'll get it all sorted out. Fives into the bin, by the way, for Brewer. I mean, you know, all the Makes other business. Sense. No fold equity pre yada yada. 
But he's looking for a spot with he's Six Picks, isn't spot. he? Yes, but look at Winter, who's about to take the blind. And Bogdanov for And bigs. Bogdanov also taking the blind before Chris. So he has to be very deceivingly careful there. Yep. Already locking up just about 100K are these eight, 36 dimes, approximately, to jump to seventh. 800 awaits our eventual champ. Michael Rieckhoff in the chat, by the way, stepping in, says schmutz is a German word meaning dirt, for anybody who was wondering. Uh, Dankeschön. It's interesting, because uh, I've only heard Jews use it. I always thought it was Yiddish. A lot of Yiddish and German, as I understand it, I you see. know, kind of overlap. Also right. earlier, there well, was I was going to guess the about... clock was like two to four hundred, but he said more expensive than I think. So now I. You live in the U.S. In Europe, it's not that expensive. <laughs> had about the whether or not, the age, yeah. so there's in that the startup US. cost yeah. so high. Two thousand. I never made it to Oregon in Oregon Trail that game. Mm -hmm. Not, not only did I not make it to Oregon, I like, never knew anyone that did. It might have been a true dead proposition. I'm just not down there. That's the, that's the objective of the game? Yeah. It this was is interesting. Yeah, it was about pioneers. Look at Winter. Queen 10. He's going for the limp under the gun. Sean has tons of ideas, so let's just observe. I suppose an idea here is that. Start with 700. Let's just see. Okay, Mateos takes us up to 500. Just gently ushering others behind him out of the way. Wants in with 6-4. Note the four dominated. A bit of a, you know, okay. I'd like to be involved in the let's see Sean Winner out of here, finishing what he started campaign, perhaps. And Sean's going to use the time bank. What do you think that moth was? I've never seen, like, cause you're, the one you got looks like. That's a death on production. Yeah, yeah. I had a punch here, you had a mark. Yeah, yeah. They were like different things. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I know, it was the same. Wheel. I mean, surely Sean knew what he was going to do before he limped, didn't he, Nick? Well, but he didn't know that it would go min and then big blind defense, so there's a lot of different ways it could play out. He's obviously weighing call or just jam with the hopes that Adrian isolates, and then we get Kulev's extra 250 in there, but... Okay. <laughs> so He's gone. he lays it down. <laughs> he's he's out, Ali. I promise you, we don't laugh at Sean Winner in any way, shape, or form. I've just been front and center for these sorts of real deviations from anticipated movement. You know, it's like a reverse yoga of sorts. Queen a deuce now. Kulev didn't expect to be heads up with Mateos, and yet here he is adrift. Diamond free, six and four free board texture. Mateo's not in love with it either. So this winter play is objectively very odd. And I will say unequivocally, Sean is a genius. Big one first, right? And one of the great poker minds I've ever seen, bar none. So anytime you see something like Luca. that, that's so strikingly strange. It's interesting. 
but then uh, anti as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's not on the team, but... You were joking because you seen Twitter. No, I didn't see. 5.50 from Mateos, getting the job done there. And listen, if you want... This is a great little track, by the way. But if you want to buy action from some of our Triton pros... The likes of Fader Holes and Michael Soiza. Elkie's getting in the mix every now and again as well. The place to do it is at Poker Stake. They are the exclusive staking partner of the Triton Super High Roller Series, and they are the place where you can go to get transaction and rake free staking in with all winnings guaranteed. And that's important. We've all been in situations well, where we didn't have that guarantee, and all of a sudden the payout didn't come like, our way. Can't run Not necessarily in staking, lines. but in life. <laughs> What's important, the guarantee? You can yeah, run a game without anties, nice. but you yeah. can't run a game without a blind. Winter forced all in. Now, the forced all in, that 200K, is going to be associated with the big blind. And because he doesn't have enough to put the 250K ante in there, then that is lacking here in this pot. Bogdanov has moved in over the top of Sean. And this is interesting because if Yulian can be the one to send Sean packing, <laughs> obviously what? that's one of the very few bounties, the only bounty, in the, fact, these, available to him. These spots are always very interesting. And one would imagine Kulev enters very robustly here. Right, on very account of the fact that two envelopes are available, course. ripe for the taking, no, potentially. Going. And yes, no, there is the jam. By the way, we don't have any idea what anybody has Thank here. So, I'm all for four Kulev... Sit down. So thank you. Let's take a swing. 1.4 on the side between the Bulgarians. 850 in the middle. Although I think that's 250 inflated. I think it's just 600 because Sean didn't have the 250 for a big blind Annie there. So here we go. Ace, Queen, 7 as the revelations are a Bogdanov lead on... Three... The strength of King Queen. All smiles for him. Just dust for Sean. He could end up drawing dead here on this turn, and that's exactly what happens. But can't say the same for Kulev, who connects with the eight and now has five outs to really spoil the party. Oh, my. Oh, and it does come in. What a card that is. Running 8-9. A hand that obviously Alex Kulev is not involved with. GG Sean, GG Yulian. Absent the mystery bounty. But what a card that no, is for Kulev. My. You did You played this hand good. But two players are showered. That was wonderful. Yeah, you by folding, you Deck's so much been money. cleared a little bit here. <laughs> Brewer all alone as the shorty, as he is left to contend with friendly, five others at a final table that is just six-handed from here forward. Alex coming over to give some love to his countrymen. I don't know that Julian was particularly in the mood. If I'm He's like, "What do you want me to do? Nine eight, bro. It's the nuts." Feels like he might have honestly have some You issues. have to go wide there. I don't know about <laughs> things <laughs> like Dusade <laughs> off, but wide. Yeah, Ali. I, I don't. I Nine don't eight is. I'm not looking know. up at Kulev thinking, "What were you doing here?" Two bounty envelopes, seventy nine thousand in EV, both obtained, courtesy of the dispensing of Sean Winter and Yulian Bogdanov. Winter with fewer chips coming in. He'll claim eighth for ninety nine thousand four hundred. Bogdanov, 7th, 135.8, and suddenly 186,000 is on lockup. Mm -hmm. Nobody it's loved to see actually. it more than Chris yeah, Brewer. If, it, like, if that's what he told out, yeah. But it's kind of sick if it goes like, if it goes like someone like jams behind and someone calls and then he just throws his hand in the muck. <laughs> like, can't you just fold and see if people go all in? No, because he wants to induce them by them thinking they're going to get his bounty. I also think he just enjoys like flipping them off and not giving them the bounty. So... <laughs> Just Brewer like alluding to, to the idea <laughs> that the winter limp 
perhaps was trying to induce all sorts of action to then fold and allow people to collide. At least oh, we are no. seeing an uncovering of ideas. <laughs> oh, I hadn't even oh, considered the way it, that. The way it shook oh, out, so though, where it just went min from El Conquistador, six, call five, from seven. Kulev. Five million seven hundred total. Yes. Yes. Bounties always have these strange spots we just never see. And they're cool. They're little, you know, riddles we kind of have to work out. I mean, they kind of jog these guys noodles in ways that, you know, all One of the standard two-card, four-card streets oh, don't. Three bet from Kulov. And you're right. Well, here's another idea being embraced by the clear chip leader who came into this one north of eight figures in front of him. Often in a regular tournament, this particular hand is at the very least strongly considering four bet jam. In bounties, it's this odd dance where the chip leader kind of tells you the story they're going to call you to try to grab the bounty, but they aren't always, but they will a lot because the bounty is worth a lot. Mm -hmm. At a minimum, $40,000 in those envelopes, and at a maximum, <laughs> half a million. <laughs> Owen. Oh, he does for bet jam. Cool left snap gone very nice from yeah. Dimitar. Bravo, yeah. sir. Always a Great little find. dicey, of course, but as you mentioned, with Kulev's wheels greased so much more by the presence of the bounty, off of that big stack, <laughs> we suppose that these four bets get through more often. We have 20 minutes remaining? Okay. Now, now we can see the idea over there, so we can connect ourselves. That is true. <laughs> Let's go like, put up some form. <laughs> David Lapin told me to shoulder charge you. I'm just changing I have to wait until you stop shoulder charging the table. I can't fucking get in the way of this. What do you mean I'm from? It sounds you. I did cast. I'm asking if he'll help me with the book. Ah, okay. Which he would like approval from the subjects. Get your thumbs up. Thumbs up from you. Sure. Well, now Brewer quite content. expertise. Has he... In terms of, has he written a poker book before? No, no, I've just seen his columns He's and coming. I like the way he writes. Okay, okay. Yeah. He's a screenwriter back in the day. Sorry? He did some screenwriting back in the day. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Chris right. going 1.25, 275 back. Yeah, he always seemed well written. I have a 275 behind. All in. Mateos asks for the remainder on the strength of ace five suited as Brewer got all the way through to the big and then the wag of the finger from El Conquistador. Extra 275 in the middle, but Brewer's not going to be upset. Dominant. Okay. Three and a half million. Okay. Rates to go his way. Flop is nice. Chris, eyes closed, can't bear to look, and he makes the nuts. Come on, Chris. On the turn, but opportunity for Mateos. One of three kings would make them go sharesies, and instead it's the seven, so. Huge double for Brewer. Absolutely. Yep. And now this is some depth for Brewer where poker can be played, Certainly so to speak. Alley. Where we want to maintain ourselves, you know, there's nothing more frustrating for these guys. Now, granted, as we've seen, <laughs> three and a half bigs for Sean, poker will be played. But for most, they kind of require a little more. Thank you. Five, huh? Exactly five, yeah. 
Shout out Twitch, by the way. You know, we're always giving YouTube love because we're from the, you know, we're from the old guard, Ali. Sure. But we have, to, we have to shout out Twitch as well. I got an honest question for you. Go on. You ever watched Twitch? I've watched Twitch, of course. I've fired some poker streams. I, uh... I've never like watched anything on Twitch. Me at 6.7, I Neither think have right. I. I was lying. <laughs> 6.7. Now, I've been on there a time or two. King 9 suited for Jaffe. But we appreciate it. We love you guys. You know who Hi, else? Nick from Twitch. Hi, the 8, Brom. How you doing? Chris Look at these guys. These Twitch guys are, are moving different. I'm going to I'm gonna keep it on Twitch I, for I, I a second. Wanna, I'm not needing anything. But. Oh, yeah. I see you, Hermit Capital. I got to I gotta be honest with you here, Shulman, as we see Jaffe. Button, King-9 suited, open. Seeking clarifications here versus the min raise. I'd kind of given up. We have our iPads, Triton Poker Plus app, and one of the tabs. Sir Dinkelberg is Twitch. thought that was funny. <laughs> I'm telling you, the, the, these Twitch chats can get wild. Well, sometimes on the iPad, our Twitch chat won't open. Well, that's why I've kind of Correct. never been in those streets. But much love anywhere you are on any platform. We appreciate it, and we see y'all uh, on always Twitch. Do that, touch the balls is the, that's the yeah, no, just one of those the, uh, Excuse? <laughs> they always do that. <laughs> Brush it off. <laughs> what did Jaffe just say you always need to do? What, what did he say, Ali? I thought I heard touch the balls. I don't know. Anyhow, I digress. I do want to give a shout out, by the way, as I Three caught a for brief the glimpse of this handle in the YouTube chat earlier during yes, the stream, please. Nano Noko, Randy Lou himself. Much love, Randy. We'll be seeing you soon. Yes, Montenegro. We will welcome him back. Unable to join us here in Jeju, but obviously love to see that he's still out there soaking it up. Much love to our man, Nano. Randy. Many people have been asking about Randy in the chat. Randy the course is a of this goat. He's, he's around. around. He's sweating this one. Right. He has things to do. He's grinding poker steak. He's got massive pieces. No, I, I don't yeah, know. Ran <laughs> Randy's pacing back and forth <laughs> with pieces every day. <laughs> you thought the UFC 299 card had Rasty sweat. Yeah. Three bet from Jaffe. How hard does Kulev want to go with these threes or lack thereof? We're about to find out. You know, Jaffe's shown some willingness to kind of, I'm not going to call it out of line per se, oh, Nick. Oh, no, he can get a little out of line. And that's part of what makes him so great. When a player has that button and everybody know he would be the first to admit it, it makes them very difficult to deal with. Jaffe's extremely fearless. King Jack is within bounds. Kulev lets the threes go. So the cutoff third scoop clears the deck as Jaffe cobbles. One who does not go quietly, as you like to put it. Nick. Indeed. A little update on the amount of bounties coming in. Danchev with two. Jaffe with three. Okay. Mateos with two. Orpin with four. Winter had six. Oh, my. Kulev with four. More now, but this was just coming in. Brewer with one. And Bogdanov with three. At the start of the final table. Food for thought.
Brewer Jam Small. Dimitar with the ace. Here we go, Ali. 6.1 in the middle. Mm -hmm. The saucepan. Yeah. The saucepan. One up a tick. Brewer. Kind of shrugging it off here. What? Green Tunnel Jackman. But I think the Queen Tunnel is folded around to him. is two clean cards, neither of them appearing on the seven high rainbow board. Donchev with the wheel gutter. And it comes in on the turn. So Brewers Queen Nine will draw dead. Very good game to you, sir. The legendary Chris Brewer falls. And then there were five, Holly. Yes. Without the bounty. Yeah. I mean, the bounty, I don't know. <laughs> but it's probably still fine. Sixth place finish. Even be better. Who knows? $186,000 will go home with him. He leaves behind five to do battle for 244.8. Obviously, happy to have picked up those two ladders after the double elimination. But he did find a double, and we thought perhaps he would be hanging around a little bit longer, as it were, though not able to do it. And he will bring one envelope to the draw party tomorrow. Blind, I'm blind. Sorry, Pat. No, straight. Eh, no turn. Upstairs to 600, courtesy of Jack 10 is where Orpin takes us. Dimitar lets go of another Jack 10. Queen deuce off for Kulov and the big. Perhaps is Kulev contemplating with Queen Deuce of the prospects of envelopes when you're the covering stack. Kulev second behind Jaffe now. But in the end, <coughs> this is mine. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is mine. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice shot. Sure. Ace nine this time. Five fifty to play and running right into it. No waiting. Ace king for Dimitar. Scoop predictably. Now back over to Orpin. I'm not sure he's going to maintain interest for another 650 here, although obviously only he knows. You're right, Ollie. He's done. Yeah. 
been a nice 15 minutes for Mr. Danchev, all propelled by that great King-10 suited four-bet jam. You're right. I... I don't know, Ali. I like to believe the gods reward us. Yeah, it we've feels that way. Like you do something I, I nice know, out there. And I'm all not of a saying you have more of a chance to win if you're 58%, now you're 59 but it's just... That initiative just seeps into your EV somehow, <laughs> some way. It just does. You've gone down the dark magic rabbit hole in the superstition streets a little bit. Yeah, I feel like you've had this thing with me where you think I'm very superstitious. I'm really not. No, but this kind of moment here, the gods and whatnot is... I believe in the gods, but... <laughs> so the gods are different then, than like superstition. Is that what we're doing? We're parsing, kind of? I don't know. Yeah, they're a little different. By the way, I'm here for it all. I don't want you to think that somehow I understand, it's probably. a rift. I, 550 you know. to go from Orpin, pretty one for Kulev on the button. Let's it go. As does El Conquistador take it, sir. Five left. Here in the 40K mystery bounty. Shy of a quarter million on lockup. Hadn't touched on the jump, Nick, but we're talking about 65,000. The difference between fifth and fourth, and of course the EV of each envelope being $79,000. This is relevant as well. The jumps are getting real, Ali. Oh, yeah. Adrian going for his second win in as many days, or was it the day before? It was the day before, but... I confess. Going for his second win early in the series. It all blurs together. It truly know. does, We were Ali. sitting at dinner today. But I just watched one of the pieces that uh, Pete Latham did for our social channel on Instagram where he said it's time to ask the big questions and pulled a few pros aside. And the first question was, what date is it? Yeah. <laughs> no one knew. In fact, Joao Vieira said like the 10th that. of May. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you great work out there like by Pete. You at least under the gun open, nine-handed when you get that. Patrick couldn't hit the date. Day of the week also <laughs> struggled. I mean, you know, you're just in the trenches. All parts of the operation. You're making me self-conscious about my raising. Say it again. <laughs> self-conscious about my raising. I think it would take many lifetimes to make you self-conscious about your poker. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do it if I had the whole room turn against you. Nice. Ryan, the bounties are drawn tomorrow during dinner break, and Ali will be out there parading around... Oh, yeah. Likely dressed to the nines. It'll be tomorrow, Ryan, from YouTube. Well, it'll be right now, says Mateos. Six, oh. seven of diamonds, eights. Donchev rips back at him. Of course, hazards when we go up. This and just do one interview after another, and I can't get you in an interview for months. <laughs> the jealousy will continue. 4.7. 4.7. Probably less than a date. Sharks9 in the YouTube chat, by the way, saying, I just realized number one and number two on Bulgaria's all time Humby money four list four are four. in this final five. Strong. Stories check out. Uh, this is the Humby 4, so I open. Okay. You cover me, you son of a gun. Yeah. Possibly, I don't know. This is going to be tight.
Orpin. Plus five off on the button. Up we go. North of the men. Now a king five suited for John Chef. Solvers have espoused these kits. Yes, I mean, the suited king is often a good hand, but... 1.4. Oh, there you go, Ali. There you go. You've been grinding the solvers, Ali. Oh, I've just, honestly, it's just, I've witnessed this sort of movement a bit, and I know it's within the realm. You got it, pal. Look at you. I'm out there in the small. My king five suited just hits the muck. I don't want you to think that somehow I do have you it. You might be I don't out there peeling. It. You might peel sometimes if the momentum's right. Little massage, have a little biryani or whatever you guys eat. Not biryani. No, that's Indian. I'm, so <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. I'm Persian, Nick. Not Take a dimitar. Indian. I'm How sorry about long that. We've that been was working with each other. That was honestly messed up. But you know we're we're a little delirious here. The mystery <laughs> has us. 153 now. Hmm. I cover you, sir. Sir? Bad news, of course, for the shorties. Dilution. I cover you. Although, really, I don't know that we can call Mateus and Kisichokoglu shorties 16 bigs apiece. Nice timing for Adrian, whatever the case may be. I understand how that would work, though. I'm going to come up with it. And the blinds are expensive. 600. Yeah. Seven point five five, and you have what? Seven point three. Let's fucking go. Yeah, Not including me. Oh, maybe more. No. I mean, I was I was half a calling hand. Yeah. <laughs> My first card was a king. Like, oh, maybe it's happening. You know. <laughs> Mood's light out there. The mood is light. <coughs> huh. Love to see it. But by the way, don't be deceived. Mood can be light, but the poker, the poker happens at the high levels. That's regardless. exactly right, Ali. Happen with Jack three offer seven deuce though. There's Orpin and Dimitar demonstrate. Puck in front of Kulev. To his left, we must contend with Jaffe. Mateus's blinds bows out. Jaffe's gone. Mateos taking a walk with that ace there. By the way, shout out David Lappin in the chat. Jaffe David. talked about him earlier, apparently in reference to the fact that he's helping him with a book of some sort. Might we have the autobiography or biography of Jared Jaffe? I hope that's Jonathan Jaffe. Uh, sorry, but Jonathan I, Jaffe. I hope so. I'm, I would... You know, I should have made that mistake more often than I have, honestly. The double J, the both play, but it's tough. Multiple Jaffe's but. floating around. We got Will, and, you know, so it's All right. it's getting crazy, the Jaffe situation. <laughs> but bravo, I would love to read a, a Jonathan Jaffe book as we see the chip counts. 20 blinds separating the Bulgarians up at the top. And Jonathan Jaffe running in third, ever so slightly behind Kulev. El Conquistador hunting his second title already here in South Korea. And Orpin bringing up the rear, 16 bigs deep though, no cause for concern as yet. Six hundred to go from Dimitar. 
Uh oh. Uh -oh. Ones on the button, no less for Jonathan Jaffe, who has activated with far less on a couple of occasions here. One Once three, against five. Donchev's King 10, I believe it was. Here he is understandably three betting again, and one wonders whether or not suspicions will be arising. I do think they'll, they'll be aroused, but perhaps King Jack offsuit will not be providing Jonathan with the action he desires. Although, let's see. Fours into the bin, oh. along with Ace-8. 7.5. Fuck, 7.1. Now, this is always a delightful start when we are asked for a count sitting on these aces. I indeed. 5.65 back. Saw Dimitar made that great jam with King-10 suited, but King-Jack off it's a bit of a different proposition. He's sizing him up, though, Ali. Five seconds. He's gone. Wasn't happy about it. No. But he will be happy in a little while right. when he gets the news. Yeah. And you see the Bulgarian flag draped over the rail in the background there. I think that camp is keeping an eye on things, perhaps. Viva Bulgaria. You know, they're here. You know, our own Henry Kilbane lived for a time in Sofia, Bulgaria. Did Had he really? wonderful things to say about the place, too. So Very nice. Maybe... When we head up to Baku, Azerbaijan to hang out with Ramin Hajiev, detours can be made down toward uh, Sofia. I'm not perhaps. doing that. Uh, I'm scared of him as well. I'm telling you, man. He's what, a very what, good what player, though. He's about? probably just a, a poker player, but you see the guy, the shades, <laughs> the outfits. I'm not going to Azerbaijan. Everybody and relax. You're with me. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> you think what I'm going to the lion's den <laughs> with you? <laughs> Offsuit king for Orpen. Chewing on it in the small. And these are interesting covered handily in bounties. The ranges are a bit different than they would be at a normal final table. Brewer alluded to it earlier with his queen nine off where he wasn't sure. King is a lot of hand in the small. Five seconds. He does put it in. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Dimitar with the ace, yeah. in it goes. Good luck, gentlemen. Big That's one here. No hesitation whatsoever. Any of the dissuasive properties of the encounter lubed nicely by that 79K in EV for a mystery bounty as Dimitar seeks the pelt of Kisichikoglu. Eight and a half in the middle Ooh. and aces and sevens. Boy. Squarely in a bad way is Orpin. Go on, Dimitar. Very it's good run to you, Orp the Turk. All over. He Four. can add this to his collection of deep runs, Ali. Oh, yeah. And yes, now there were four. 65. So there will be no third title for Kisichikoglu here in his 10th cash as he Adds 244,000 to his career Triton earnings of almost six and a half million. Second cash so far here in Jeju and Orpen will be back. That we know. Seldom if ever misses a Triton ever since he first joined us back in 2018 in Montenegro. Imagine we'll be seeing Just when I got to above out there at our next stop. King Jack now as action resumes briskly. Or Jaffe. Intense suited for Dimitar. Have Rates to be of interest. 8.4 to start. 
Pulev in the big with 7.3. Interesting decision for Dimitar. Might we have a bold declaration on our hands, Ali? Oh, it does feel like maybe he's been it. looking for an opportunity to get his pound of flesh against Jaffe, although just the merits of the scenario obviously warrant what we're observing. But does Ace Jack warrant something for Kulev here? Well, he's instantly counting down. It's certainly close. Cut off small blind. He can't win a bounty, he's though, gone. and that's an issue because You're he's covered right by about both that, parties. Ollie. That's a good point. And one nice example of the power of the all-in with a hand like this, clearing a slightly better one card rank-wise. Ace queen. Ace king. No. <laughs> Is it suited? Yes. <laughs> you know me. Dimitar feels locked in, Ali. Tend to agree with you. Here he is now, all the way up to 60 bigs, 18 million, 10, 9. Here we go. Queen Jack for Jaffe. Defending. This will actually take a flop between these two, and what a flop it is, Nick. Top pair open ender for Jaffe, bottom two for Donchev. Collision with 165 in the middle. My. Four fifty. Four fifty the follow through. No heart in hand for Jaffe. Very clean for Dimitar, two point five in the middle. This is the Kalahari of turn cards. I'm not going to ask right now. It's a desert. In Africa. And yet he answers anyway. <laughs> Would think Dimitar <laughs> provides a little meat on the bone right now. Really targeting the queen. Two million fifty. And also, we want to charge all of, of that draw-heavy texture a price to peak at the river. He goes for 2050000 And for Jaffe, one would think we just cannot find a way to the muck. Six and a half back. If he makes the call, it'll be it's well irritating. beneath one SPR on the end. It's irritating for him. He began this hand in second, although it's close. He started with 7.8, Kulev 6.7, Mateos 5.5. He's counting down. Time bank is in. Do we call or just jam, Ali? Only Jaffe knows. If we think that... Uh, I've he does wow. jam. Of he course, does. Dimitar calling. He's a little bit better than two to one, top Jaffe. Pairs, no, no top pair. Okay, top updates pair. issued. More top pairs. More top pairs. I was going to say, 
If Jaffe felt as though he was going to call a wide variety of rivers, then maybe as the opposed troika. to play it as check call, check Fair call. Fair enough, Ali. 15.5 in the middle. Pivotal pot. Oh, and Jaffe does get there. What a river. This is the difficult fashion that I confess I had somewhat overlooked. A counterfeiting running duckling. Downing Donchev's tens and nines and propelling Jaffe. That was a little dirty. He had plenty of equity, but I feel like it's the king eight queen that Six I was five. so focused on and they exactly. slid the deuce. Right. Little oversight. No, by the way, the jack would have gotten the job done as well. I mean, there was a lot of paths. Not to be lost, by the way, Nick, if Jaffe plays that one as check call, there are no more tokens to be earned in the event he checks river. You know, river. that's a great point, and Jaffe's outs for the most part, were scary cards for a hand like Dimitar's. And sometimes, in the grand scheme of EV, these are considerations to be made. Excellent point, Ali. <clears throat> well, let's see how Dimitar responds here. I mean, we know that this is not a man who is easily shaken. He's consummate. In terms of... 16 million now for Jaffe, 10 for Dimitar. 6.6 .6 for Kulev and 5.5 .5 for Adrian. Yeah, Jaffe emerges as the chip leader in the aftermath of that one. Some have caught wind, by the way, of something we briefly alluded <coughs> to in the player intros made by Luca Bavaldi at the onset of the final table. Donchev. Three for four coming into this one in terms of caches. Four for five now, and a very deep run in that kickoff 15K event, won by Fedor. Third place finish Go on there. Go Dimitar. So He's on obviously form. on form. He really is. Kulev with a respectful fold to the situation knows Jaffe and Adrian clash a fair amount. But imagine it goes in here, Ali. Five seconds. All in. Yep. Queen 10 enough. Conquistador is gone. L Conquistador Nick. C Padron. <laughs> Do you watch Narcos on Netflix? You know I do. Yeah, I suspected as much. We gotta get. Let's take a trip to Mexico. Let's. You know what I mean? Sinaloa. Just. I hear it's lovely. You have ten million. Ten point one. Just want to meet these dudes. You know. Yeah. I don't know how well it would go, but. <laughs> Great series, by the way, if you happen to be the 1% of the populace, uh, obviously over that much, who didn't soak it up. Narcos, Netflix, wonderful. Get involved. Narcos Mexico, also, the follow-up. Enjoyed that one as well. Sure. <laughs> you're, just, you're just plugging Narcos in here. <laughs> I think you really just get in the zone. I, uh, you sound like you work for Netflix. Like, Listen, if anyone from Netflix is listening. Oh, boy. The Triton Super High Roller Series, something to be considered in terms of content for your platform. Just saying, you know. Ali and Sinaloa. That could be a series. It would probably last 0.5 seasons, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Lead actor in <laughs> Netflix series. 600 to go. Unheard from for nine days. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
perhaps you take a nice senorita out on the town who <laughs> was like spoken now. for. <laughs> Jack Nine suited. Speaking. 600,000 if you do. Ace 10 for cool. And does Alex take a stand, Ali? Oh. Goes for call. You know, not in the form of a jam, but defense. Indeed. Oh, and a nice start for Kulev. In front of second pair with top pair, top kick. He checks it. Jaffe with kind of a great hand. Very bettable. Also a cozy check. Interesting spot. Goes for 450, and one would expect Kulev to raise here perhaps every time. And the reason behind that course to be charted more so than the check call? That kicker, we really want to inflate the pot against an inferior 10, and of course this hand. 1.3 million. There it is. For Jaffe, certainly no folding. Five seconds. Big turn coming, Ali. 2.6 million added to the middle, four and a quarter. And now suddenly the open ender added to the equation for Jaffe. We saw the way in which he responded to that development on the flop against Donchev. It was on the turn where he activated, of course, but this is clearly among the worst turn cards in the deck for Kulev. But with just north of pot to play, ace-10 still all sorts of hand. Interested to see Alex's procedures. Do we need to conquer the discomfort associated with that eight and continue to march forward following up upon the 1. check 7. raise here so as to prevent Jaffe from seizing initiative? 1.7 declared. Could you repeat that, yeah, Ollie? Do, do we need to kind of conquer the discomfort of the eight on the turn? and follow through on the check raise to prevent Jaffe from seizing initiative against I, us. I like that a lot. And in addition to the preventing of an initiative seize, it's still top pair, top kicker ahead of things like this. Jack eight, seven eight, king 10, queen 10. We must embrace the discomfort as you said. Jaffe does jam. Kulev doesn't like to hear that, but it's going in and a huge river coming, Ali. Brute force as Jaffe not oh, able yes, to dispatch no. Kulev, but seeking his pelt here for 13 million with outs. Seven or queen for a straight. Jack or nine to ruin Kulev's day. Here's the river. It oh, is the queen. Go on, Jonathan. And Very once good again. Game to you, sir. My. Jaffe with the heat. And this time, Kulev, the victim. The heat is confirmed, Ali. Fourth for Kulev, bravo. And then there were three. That there were as Kulev's envelope is. Is the Bulgarian slid. nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Over to Jaffe. $310,000 will be going to Kulev as the remaining field locks up 381,000.
Add that 310K to Kulev's 788 coming in, and he is now a seven-figure winner on the Triton Super High Roller Series. Eight-time casher, but no first time. I don't have Turkish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I don't I have don't. Turkish. <laughs> Russian, English, Lithuanian, Ukrainian, Jew. I believe Jaffe just gave us the 23 and me swab. That's what it sounded like, Ali. Uh, slight mutt pedigree on uh, on Jaffe, but he had, he had it all working, didn't he? What did he leave out? <laughs> mutt pedigree, wow. Have you done it? The the uh I ain't giving my DNA That's to where I'm, I'm not, not even too. a conspiracy theorist. I hear you, but my double helix is my business. I don't really need to know. I right. know, you know, we're all kind of together as humans. No. It's, you know, I saw Minority out. Report. That was enough. Queen Adolf for Dimitar. Don't need no precog out here calling my name. <laughs> you know what's weird? I just realized... I did some earlier during our break before we got in the booth that was benevolent but also has left me a little annoyed. We Rast and I walked over to the spa where as it turns out you were actually enjoying a treatment at the time. And we both were like, Can uh, we get hang on, we both said, Can we get a massage? And at first the woman said there are no available appointments. Cut to the chase, Sally. Then suddenly she said, There's one. <laughs> Rast and I looked at each other. I said, you know what, Rasty, go ahead, you take it. Well, that was very nice of you, Ollie. But now I just felt a little <laughs> tension in the traps, and I'm realizing maybe I should have taken it. 7.50 to go from Jaffe. A glance up at the clock from Adrian. 4.1 to begin. 10 for Dimitar, 23 for Jaffe. Mateos is a clear shorty. He defends. Would you have taken it? Ali El Conquistador has defended. <laughs> All right. Okay. Fives against queens. Very sneaky from Jaffe. Following up on the preflop raise with the check and leaving Adrian to wonder whether or not a little sprinkling here could draw the curtain. Well covered, of course. Two to one SPR. Six hundred. Does go for six hundred, and perhaps some bad news is coming Mateos' way. <sighs> ah, Jaffe electing to be a bit coy. Now he picks up a gutter to go with top pair, top kicker after taking the passive line here and hoping that Mateos. Will do Jaffe's work for him. But obviously this is a development that the fives are not in favor of whatsoever in what has grown to a three million chip pot. Check. Now four liner on board after El Conquistador checks back. Is it the kind of run out that leaves Jaffe unable to hunt value? It's not ideal, the eight of hearts. We can all see that. 1.9. He's Never going 1.9. Yeah, this is, this is a little beefy. Two thirds, let's call it. Three, one effective. And is Adrian left to wonder exactly what's afoot just given pre-flop raise, check the queen jack five board, check call the turn, and now, uh, rather, check check the turn, and then come out swinging on the river. Oh, he's wondering what's afoot, Ali. Thank you for replaying the line. This is a clear example of a merge. Sometimes better folds, although not 
really, perhaps, but a little bit. Sometimes worse calls. Very interesting choice from Jaffe. concede as Jaffe continues to pull back on the yoke and find more distance between himself and sea level. 82 bigs, just an absolutely massive chip lead with Donchev. 35 bigs, Mateos, just 10 bigs after that exchange. Seven eight offsuit now. So obviously this is the kind of chip lead where Jaffe is just going to abuse. It's such a nice spot in a bounty. He can really lean on Dimitar. Two point seven million. Really nice from Adrian. Note Jaffe's hand and Adrian's hand. Very well done. And this is behavior Dimitar in front wants, of King Jack that is he unpleasant. Wants that bounty, but it is unpleasant behavior in front of him. One gets the feeling Dimitar has played quite a few bounties. Just watching the way he goes about his business, I, I get that feeling. And for Jaffe, again, the bounty overlay is real. He's asking for a count. Ten bigs, Ali. Eight, nine, not, not one, but two players out. Under different circumstances, granted, that was earlier. Kulev, the guilty party. Five seconds. But the impacts are irrefutable. Oh. Nevertheless, and a good choice yeah. it was in all sorts of trouble sharing the kicker. By the way, Mateos, another one of these guys who's not going to go quietly. Said that about Jaffe earlier. He's got a title here in Jeju already, and he's got a break on his hands. As we take a look at the distribution of the remaining three with the blinds ticking up to 204,000 in a 400K big blind. Annie, one million every three hands. You're gonna get shaved off your stack. That's bad news, obviously. For those joining Jaffe here, Glimpse brought to you by betacr.eu. Back here at the desk, Ali and Nick and uh, it has been the Jonathan Jaffe show, has it not? A little bit in that kind of last stanza, looking nice. And is there a world in which, is there a price that could be given to you where you would take one of these other two guys at this point? I'll take plus 600, Ali. You want to do something? Nah, come on, plus 600. Something. You always got to start oh, just yeah, crazy, you on. know? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> just take it from there. All right, listen, let's take it to a break, shall we? About 10 minutes time. We're going to come back. Three remaining. Obviously, a lot of money still gapping between third and second, second and first. Envelopes still available, two of them to be precise, plus your own if you end up winning it. So some things still to sink our teeth into here at the Landing Casino in Jeju. Don't miss out. We'll see you in about 10.
Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Just sees the wonder. Jeju Shinwa World. We like this. It will be impactful. Kulev coming in sixth of eight in chips. 18 bigs takes us upstairs. 450 predictable. Oh my, Ali! <coughs> what are we walking into this evening? Well, as I like to refer to it, frostbite. As these kings felt toasty and instead will be toasted by the aces of Sean Winter. Million? Well, this is unusually salty for Kulev and a decision for Brewer, he's gone. Ace queen into the bin. And for Kulev, 3.1 back, Nick. Are the options yeah, just me. one and one alone? Not gonna sure, Ali. I, I think maybe in a bounty we're more apt to just put it in. In the hopes, of course, that it all comes forward from winter, but all that hope will be replaced with despair. 1.6 minutes. Oh, he does just click it back, and Sean likes to see this, Sally. Not that the furrowed brow would be giving anything away in that respect, as Officer Winter about to give a speeding ticket. Although Kulev not speeding, this is just a man playing a hand. the time bank here. Mm -hmm. 
on. Well, 7.5 in the middle. Yep. And it took but one hand mm. to first, make it happen. First deck. <laughs> Doji. <laughs> right? First stand up to the break. Cool Isle pop kupa vrat. Pop kupa misle. I don't speak Bulgarian, but I feel like I know what he's talking about. Yes, we As might have just learned how to say king. Yeah. 965, though unavailable thus far. As the covering stack of winter is an 86% favorite with two to come. Diamond works for Kulev, and no sooner do I say it than all of a sudden the flush draw materializes. And you can see Fahadim Mustafa and company. Delighted. Oh, oh my! my. Mm. That's really sick for Sean. Bit of a silly game we play. <laughs> so, I'm all for four Kulev. Left. Sit down. So, thank you. Let's take a swing. 1.4 on the side between the Bulgarians, 850 in the middle. Although I think that's 250 inflated. I think it's just 600 because Sean didn't have the 250 for a big blind Annie there. So here we go, ace, queen, seven, as the revelations are a Bogdanov lead on Three. the strength of king, queen. All smiles for him, just dust what? for Sean. He could end up drawing dead here on this turn, and that's exactly what happens, but can't say the same for Kulev, who connects with the eight, and now has five outs to really spoil the party. Oh my! Oh, and it does come in. What a card that is. Running 8 9. A hand that obviously Alex Kulev is not involved with. GG Sean, GG Julian. Absent the mystery bounty. What a card that no, is for Kulev. Oh, my. You played this hand one, but two players are showered. That was wonderful. Yeah, you <laughs> By folding, you made Deck's so much been money. cleared a little bit here. <laughs> Brewer all alone as the shorty, as he is left to contend with friendly, five others at a final table that is just six-handed from here forward. Alex coming over to give some love to his countrymen. I don't know that Julian was particularly in the mood. If I'm <laughs> He's like, "What do you want me to do? Nine eight, bro. It's the nuts." Feels like Musta, he you might have have honestly has you issues. have to go wide there. I don't know about <laughs> things like <laughs> Deuce eight off, but wide. Yeah, Ali. I, I don't. I Nine don't eight think, is. I'm not looking know. up at Kulev thinking, "What were you doing here?" Two bounty envelopes, seventy nine thousand in EV, both obtained, courtesy of the dispensing of Sean Winter and Julian Bogdanov. Winter with fewer chips coming in. He'll claim eighth for ninety nine thousand four hundred. Bogdanov, 7th, 135.8, and suddenly 186,000 is... ...the table, I can't <laughs> fucking get in the way of this. Like, what do you, you mean I'm bubble? Bubble? From? We well, still I, it's as you, I did cast. <laughs> I'm asking if he'll uh, help me with the book. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Wish you would like approval from the subjects. Get your thumbs up. Thumbs up from you. Sure. Well, now Brewer, quite content. I don't know expertise, the, has he... In terms of, has he written a poker I, book before? No, no, I've just seen his columns and I like the way he writes. Okay, okay. He's a screenwriter back in the day. Sorry? He did some screenwriting back in the day. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Chris going 1.25, 275 back. Yeah, he always seemed well written. and... I have a 275 behind. All in. Mateos asks for the remainder on the strength of Ace 5 suited as Brewer got all the way.
And welcome back to continuing coverage of the 40K Mystery Bounty from right here at Landing Casino at Jeju. Shinwa World, Ali Nishad, Nick Shulman. The night shift, it is late hours here, encroaching upon midnight with only three remaining, and it may very well happen in a hurry. In terms of the conclusion to this one, we know Jonathan Jaffe might as well have a little war paint on his face and a spear in his hand because a couple of envelopes are still available and he's sitting on a massive chip lead. Quick peek inside the Triton Poker Plus app will show us that 60 bigs, Donchev 25 bigs, Mateos 11 bigs, and you know, already, Nick, in a normal setup, we expect Jaffe active in a situation such as this, but add to that $79,000 in EV, you know, with the envelopes available, and it's going to be even more savage. Very well put. Jaffe, it's pedal to the metal time, trying to get those envelopes. Uh, I'll be frank, this whole final table, I haven't known what's going on <laughs> all the time. So it's this has been a very fun one to sweat a lot of, just spots you kind of don't see. And the 8-9 uh, really offsuit of Kulev, it. of course, coming to mind where there was two that smaller That one stacks I of did fun. understand. But the this Sean Winter limp? Intuitive. The Winter limp off three under the gun. Many other spots. Mystery bounties are always fun, and, and I can't wait to see the finish. Yeah. All right. So that finish is going to be for payouts as follows. $804,000 up top. 541000 going to go to second, 381000 to third. And the other storyline to be touched upon, Donchev, four for five already here. And Mateos, El Conquistador, hunting a second title already here in Jeju after having broken the seal. There's the official peak. Jaffe, by the way, looking to add a second title here at Triton to his trophy case. It's all brought to you by Poker Stake. As the players work their way back to their seats after a scheduled break. All right. um, how much, Adrian? Sorry. 4.2. 4.2, thank you. Demetari, you know? Um, just a second. Five, six, eight, eight, five, nine, nine, six, nine, eight, I think. Nine. Yeah. Jaffe cross checking live chip counts against the Triton Poker Plus app just to ensure that everything is synced up as it is a tool leaned upon. That is one of the cool things about Triton. A lot of times you'll see players on their phone, but they're really just using the app, which right, is right. providing perfect updates in real time. It's crazy. I mean, listen, we don't And the most fun, thousand. sorry to cut you off, but the most fun part of the app is when you're on a day one in a Triton, sweating all these hand histories from around the room coming in again just right as they're played. It, it creates a little camaraderie in the room. A7 suited for Dimitar. What were you going to say, Ali? I was going to say, we don't bat a thousand percent, but I mean, it is certainly the best of what's around, and there's not a lot it, it, around. Correct. Three do suited for Adrian. Two four hundred now on the blinds. Three point five to begin. And presumptions, of course, that Donchev's willingness to open. Jaffe right there on his left obviously can give him fits in terms of the pressure. It should be reasonable kit out very, there. Very well said, Ollie. The diaper, though. Your razor tonight. I listen. I've been beside you long enough to pick up a thing no, or no, two, my, my friend. friend. It's you. It's. A and little bit rattled, almost. <laughs> Not Mateos, though, here. Indeed. Not really Donchev, either, but Adrian slips it to him. A little half million. And let's move on. Salmon on the button for Jaffe. Mm. 
See if Jaffe goes bounty hunting, Ollie. All in. Yeah. Oh, for a moment, Conquistador was flicking in a snap, but it's just the small. I didn't catch a glimpse. Okay, it wasn't the kid. It was just the, the vision of him. He just <coughs> threw his small yeah. blind in right. after snap folding. What's that statue, the thinker? I'm getting that vibe. Is that a famous statue? It is the one with the guy with the... Pondering. I'm sure you've seen it. Probably, uh, you know, doesn't ring a bell, but. Don't don't pull it up. I, I don't need to see it right now. I, I can look later. I'm convinced you know it. This one. He is. He's passing me the phone. Yes, I have seen it, Ollie. You were right. <laughs> Do you say it that way? So it's no, like I've seen that. It's a, it's a great statue. Beautiful. Is it one the million thinker. black you have in your... Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's not like I have Thank some you. super deep knowledge of art, by the way. I just happen to know that one. A lot of hand for Jaffe in the small. I believe we know what's coming next. Queen 10. All in. Yep. Caroline. Little bullseye on that short stack of Mateos, and he has decided that Jack 8 is the one. Good Off luck, of Adrian. Gentlemen. Coming in. A little over 5 million in the middle. And can Adrian. Find this double behind, headed to the flop, and unimproved on the ace nine four two diamond board. Same story for Jaffe, of course, but he's not the one that needs the improvements. He just needs to fade six outs for the time being. To punch a ticket to heads up play with Donchev. The turn is compliant. Can Mateos find a hook or a snowman? No, sir. GG's issued. As El Conquistador denied his second title. Bravo, Adrian, on another terrific run. Legendary player. And just like that, Holly. Yep. Dimitar Doncha versus Jonathan Jaffe. This is a nice one. Stage is set. Nice is also the payout for third, 381,000. The lockup, though, a buck 60. The jump up to second, 541 ahead for Jaffe and Donchev. Guaranteed 804,000. That's what's going to go to the eventual champion, and Mateos will not be that man. Podium finish here, but a bronze medal in the end as he adds to his career Triton earnings. Well, up towards 7.5 million, bringing you back to the desk briefly. I think I can get that out there. Yeah, you could do it, Ali. Wanted to touch upon envelopes. Uh, coming into this one, Mateos had two. Don't believe he added to it, producer James. Did Mateos bust anybody out there so far? I don't can't really remember. Him busting anyone at the final. I don't think he did either. So it's going to be a flat two envelopes for him. Jaffe had three coming into this one. We know that he's picked up more since then. And for Donchev, he came in with a couple of envelopes. So with that. In the books, Donchev is going to have to tussle with a three-to-one chip disadvantage here. Is there going to be haste on Jaffe? At this point, heads up, does the envelope factor still become a thing where we just start savagely going after? We want it all, but it's not in that savage way that it is in that last three-handed setup at all. It's slightly more conventional, a bit of a typical heads-up match, but with the dessert. Ali, I have no idea. I don't play bounties. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. Well, hold that time out. Let's consider 804, 541, the gap. We're talking about 260,000. So the 79K in EV for an envelope, a little bit more negligible at this point. Fair enough. You know what I mean? This I'm deferring to you on it's, this. It's You're... a secondary thing, right? I like so, that. You know, oh, but hang on. Producer James reminding us that you get your own envelope when you win. So it's your actually... Own. 
160, roughly, 158. They both want first. In EV. Oh, yeah, there's no question about it. But I'm also curious as to whether or not Donchev forces the issue a little bit, looking for a spin, and then we re-rack. Well, we'll find out momentarily. That I do know. Yeah, yeah. We're going to send it right back down into the arena yeah, here at right. Landing Casino. Sunny on hand to get the festivities underway. Cards in the air here in the 40K Black. Mystery Bounty. Black. Dominant is Jaffe with King-9 against the 10-9. A rough start for Donchev. Played as a limp, and that has been somewhat of a theme that we've observed quite a bit. Rast and I last night. 1.4. Heads up action, many limps pre-flop with a wide variety of holdings. Very much so. 1.4 to go from Jaffe. Likely appeal coming from Dimitar. There is the peel, and there is a gut shot on the 764 board available to Donchev. Jaffe plays it as a check. Perhaps a challenging board texture to try to interact with for the pre-flop raiser out of the big. He'll have some coverage, but you're right. There are some challenges. Conversely, though, for Donchev as a limp caller, he senses an opportunity. And is perhaps the 679 and that key king of hearts just enough for appeal? Let's see a turn. Pot up to 4.8 after the call. Look at that turn. It is a heart. Four-liner on board. Murky spot, Ali. Lack of a heart. Dissuades. Just because he checked turn doesn't mean he's giving up. And for Jonathan, does he feel king high is just enough to check? Or does he feel he has to bluff every time? Or sometimes. He's reaching, Ollie. You were going to say, or sometimes? I, I oh, believe that was I the, did okay. say, right, or right. sometimes. It wasn't the follow-through, forgive me. Yeah, that was it. Winner, best hand winner, but if he checked, perhaps Dimitar bluffs, and it's all different. Great start for Jaffe. Yeah, so far so good. Both players again share a card here. 16, six, three suited, 17 and a half effective. Jaffe, of course, covering calls. Raggedy one for Dimitar. Sometimes the more raggedy they are, the more that we want to try to stick a little something in there to prevent having to see a flop. And that seems to be the case for Donchev here. The extra million gets the job done. There you go, Holly. And a nice little momentum boost for Dimitar, obviously, to take that one down uncontested. He kind of needed that a bit. A disruptor of sorts. A little bit. Yeah. I'm with you. Eight, nine, and ten, three. Action on Donchev.
Limpot. Ace Queen Deuce. The ace high boards in particular in these limp pots become a bit interesting just given that maybe we sense anybody putting chips into the pot is going to be under suspicion. Why wouldn't they have put the raise in pre? But we know on balance sometimes those ace x's do allow things to go unraised. Nicely put. Agreed. Does go check check as the only heart draw belongs to Donchev now. Courtesy of the seven. And Jaffe very naked with the nine of clubs, eight of diamonds. And the back door flush slides on in after another round of checks. In the best sort of way for Dimitar to maybe cobble a few chips. Yeah, Jaffe connecting with the nine. One last check. One would think a flush certainly has to go for value. Maybe a little skim milk. Donchev agrees. That's not skim, though. That's that's the 2%, 75% pot. And for Jaffe with the 9, does he keep an eye on all of the rags? These are tough. Heads up, limp check, check down. Does get away, bravo. Temptation resisted and able to give credit for the heart or better to Donchev in spite of the limp and two streets of check back. Correctly, mind you. Brunson on the button for Jaffe. One mil. Where is one mil? Mill to go. And this match feels, you know, like a real battle. One gets the feeling a deal was not made, and it's on. Love, the, love to see it, by the way, as Jaffe loves to see spades. Tennis spades, strong, the deuce also. Bottom pair, perhaps less the focal point on this texture. Don't Jaffe, check, check by it. the way, has a reputation as an absolutely superb heads-up player. For what it's worth. There are those... Dimitar might be fantastic in his own right. Right. Not sure. But there are those out there in terms of elite pros who just kind of are known as, as being tougher customers than some others. Heads up. No one's soft. No one's easy. But there are, those, but there are some you know, great players who just heads up yeah. for whatever reason isn't their thing or... Anyway... Pocket tens now for Jaffe. Donchev plays the dusty one as a limp. No, sir. There will be no limping as <coughs> Jaffe. Drops an extra million on it, takes it down. How hard will you go at the button limp with sub premiums get raised repeatedly before all of a sudden you make the adjustment in, in that sense? It takes a lot for a great player to raise a few times in a row. 
for me to then say they're really messing with me. I'm willing to assume they have reasonable candidates for raising and are just kind of playing the game. This is a reasonable <laughs> candidate, by the way. I'll tell you what, this is a Go on, Jonathan. An election winner here. Not just a candidate. One million to skate, say the two black aces. Six do suited for Donchev. We don't want to get in the business of conceding all these spots. But this one he will, and that's going to be disappointing for Jaffe, of course. Chat, by the way, reminding me that Dimitar is excellent at heads up as well. Has a heads up bracelet. Fair enough, chat. Bravo, Dimitar. He's obviously great. He's on fire this week. Oh. This is a very spirited match. Perhaps Dimitar can march back a little bit. We shall see. Couple of nice hands here, Ollie. Queen Jack and King Seven. All things considered. Jaffe suited. Fifteen and a half for Dimitar. All in. They're all in. Does put it in. Could this be one? Six point four. Call it 16 bigs. We've got our answer. Jaffe suited King High. Here we go, Ollie. In the lead. Just about a 3 to 2 favorite. To the flop we go. There's a jack involved. Very clean for Dimitar. No spade anywhere. That is a board. That certainly <coughs> makes things cozy for Donchev, improving on the turn, but suddenly the coziness disrupted in terms of four Let's tens. Pick up one extra out, yeah. Jonathan. The rail calls for a deuce. It's the ace. Good enough. Sit back down, sir. We have ourselves a match, Ali. Note Yulian Bogdanov, who was here at this final table earlier, has worked his way to this rail to cheer on Donchev. Very nice. Now, of course, Donchev in deep makeup. Dimitar has 120% of him. I'm just kidding. This is <laughs> just all a. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yulian books Donchev in <laughs> soccer. <laughs> and yeah. It was a very salty <laughs> run for, for Dimitar. Yeah. Oops. Who would have thought Arsenal was going <laughs> to <laughs> So a nice little infusion there for Donchev. Now roughly a two to one dog. Remember it was roughly three to one coming in. So this is a better setup than he had to start the match. Wes Combs, by the way, in the chat, Nick has asked, can I have Nick and Ali narrate my life? Love these guys. You want to address Wes's uh, inquiry there? You know, I mean, no, Wes, of course not. What do you think? We're just going to come over and much love, Wes. Thank you so much. And also, just, you know, if the price is right, I feel compelled to say that I'm in. <laughs> Ali would be on it. By the way, you know, I'll get, we're at the grocery store. You could get store. Ali for, I mean, it's expensive, but it's nothing crazy. <laughs> <laughs> An approachable rate. <laughs> Nine, six, an approachable pot here. Donchev, though. No, Dimitar has been quite aggressive in the face of the limp. With the, particularly yeah, the, eight, the bad ones. Yes, the eight, three off before the jack three. Sharing the seven, Donchev first to speak. 
And let's see if Dimitar limps, whether or not Jaffe returns the favor. We'll Breeze never know yeah, as he takes it upstairs. This is really a good match, Ali. Look, I'm here for it. You know what I mean? There yeah. are occasions in which I Heads think... is always intriguing, but this one for me has a, a little extra chutzpah. Not sure why. I, I love that, by the way. And you know what? I know what chutzpah is, yes. Nick. I'm telling you, I've got... I'm sorry about the biryani okay, comment. <laughs> I genuinely got confused. I, I'm upset that you're apologizing because it was, was I hilarious. Thinking of? I was thinking to of me. the lamb and the rice that, you know, the Persian dish. Uh, Badem June? No, I, I, no <laughs> I've never heard of that. What do you think? We're in. <laughs> like, this, you're going really Shiraz. obscure here. <laughs> Limp from Jaffe. First flop in what feels like a little while. And interestingly, almost like this oh, contrarian on, data Dimitar, point. Oh, Dimitar, my word. Top pair for Jaffe and the stones for Dimitar. Yeah, chips. Jaffe, rather. Chips will be lost. Nice it does go check, check. Jonathan. I was going to say, though, Donchev, maybe the 9-3 offsuit would have been more the candidate for him based on what we've observed in terms of a pattern. I was thinking this as well, Ali, but... Checks twice. Can't lure Jaffe into a bet. One third attempt, perhaps, to lure Jaffe into a barrel. It's Top official. Top on the flop, by the way, I mean. And indeed, we expect Jonathan to seek value with second pair. Oh, it wasn't official, but now it is. I thought he had checked prior. Well, he's kept his nose clean thus far, but now one would not fault him for reaching as he is. In fact, perhaps one would fault him for not reaching. He goes Great. for 800, and this is really music to Donchev's ears. And how awkward is it for Jaffe when the rays that impend Exceedingly arrives? awkward, such is the nature of Heads Up. Another spot, limp check, checked to the river. Incredibly wide ranges, very difficult to navigate. And it's actually a bit interesting in regards, if you're Jaffe, on the one hand, a club blocks a flush, but on Four the other, days. it blocks some offsuit combinations that would represent a flush. And that gets murky when we're dealing with extremely wide ranges. 4.8 to go from Dimitar. And does Jaffe hero it off, Ali? That six in particular is so relevant, is it not? For it Jaffe? does block four, six, and six, nine. Hard to flop a flush. It also blocks. It is hard to flop a flush. This we can certainly agree on, Ali. And also perhaps even more difficult if we have to check it a third time in the hopes that this opportunity presents itself. All of this percolating. Very much so. Time bank forcefully thrown in and a little side of a stare down to Dimitar. He gives nothing away. And it's always tricky when you're a bit capped. Very nice, does get away. Go on. Having checked yep. back twice in position, we feel we might be getting attacked because we can only have a hand that's so good for the most part. Right. Those are always tough, Jaffe does get away. We understand it was just one pair, but still. We've all leveled ourselves in situations. Indeed. Such as that, but on this occasion, as so often will be the case, Jaffe makes the right decision, lays it down. Similar territory for both here. Limp.
Let's see three, says Jonathan. Flops himself middle pair. An airy 8-6, slides 400 forward. Jaffe with the call. Second over card arrives. Donchev drawing dead. Doesn't mean he can't win the pot. Checks back, however. Second queen on the board. Jaffe. Slides 500 forward and pulls it back along with other friends. Blinds are up, Ollie. 255 now. But note, Donchev still hanging in there. 46 blinds to 30. As Jaffe's got his hands full here in spite of bringing that overwhelming chip lead to the heads up match. 23.2 to 14.8 as it stands. Second place payout, 541,000. First place, 804. Envelope EV in this mystery bounty, 79,000. And not one, but two envelopes are gonna go to the eventual winner here. So obviously a nice overlay. Stone Cold minimum on those envelopes is 80 dimes. So not to be scoffed at, two no. dimes. <laughs> Sharing the nine advantage Jaffe on the button here with a pretty one. One point two five goes for one point two five. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry, five hundred more. Yeah. Note, by the way, the benefit of always verbally declaring your sizing there as Jaffe had failed to put the full 1.25 forward. Dealer able to just say, hey, you're short 500,000. If you don't declare verbally, now you're held to a call. You're quite right. I think that would have been a min because he was 500 short, but the point absolutely remains. You're right, and I have paid the price for not verbally declaring before. Do you do it now, or it's still kind of one of those? You if I'm unfamiliar with the colors of the chips, I do. If I feel at home, I don't really. It is certainly a free roll and a prudent one at that for those that adopt it as standard practice, as yet again, cards are shared. Donchev declined to participate last time around. Understandably not the case this one, as he limps the queen jack. Seven tray deuce. Both with a spade, both with queen high. Jonathan knuckles over, check back from Doncha. Jaffe with the lone heart. Chev Mulling, second check back. Backdoor hearts and a king on the end here, and 
Jaffe really doesn't feel the need, I would imagine, to turn this one into a bluff. Queen high feels like some showdown. We're on the same page, Ali, although we are looking at a hand one could target a slightly better queen, but he does check, and the jack will play. Yeah, turned it over in a manner once Donchev checked back that, uh, you know, Alluded for to me, the showdown you were mentioning. Yeah, kind of made it seem as though he thought it's going to collect the pot from time to time. Ali, is there any chance you're a mystery bounty savant? <laughs> no. And no. this should be your thing? that you Because you never really play tournaments. You're a cash guy. But maybe your new thing should be you never miss a mystery bounty. I, I got to tell you, like... You seem really sharp at these. Being able to excuse whatever the butchery that I would be guilty of in a spot on account of a bounty would be a delightful That's feeling the thing. for me. You know, you... It's like, well, hang on, guys. I, there was the bounty, guys. You know, normally I wouldn't Big nine bet Jackson. jam. <laughs> Seven, eight. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> King Jack suited here. 1.25. Upstairs we go. Don Chef doesn't want any part of that one. <laughs> what is this shirt, by the way? Initially, I thought from Dimitar. Yeah, it looks actually, you know, and I'm biased a bit, but like. Persopolis, you know, one of these Persian that's sort of... What, uh, that's what I was thinking, something like this. At first, I thought it was like a a British King attorney. King Sir Jaffe. You know, they Suited the nine for Donchev. Indeed, Ali. Race. Upstairs, says Dimitar. Uh, 14, this 1.25 is... Sorry? A little bit less than 14, I think. 14. Thank you. Not boding well. For Jaffe, do we ever get into the weeds with a flat? I think we're three betting if we're Jonathan. Just 100% of the time? I like that, Ali. I think it's time to go upstairs, my friend. Obvious reasons here Three in the form seven. of the Kings, and Jaffe agrees. 3-7 announced, and the profits will be capped at 1.25 pre-flop. DK in the chat, by the way, has Go said, on. true story, I was on my way to play an MTT Kay. at Aria, and my Uber driver was Nick Shulman's billiards teacher. Then at the MTT, he sat next to you, Nick. What are the odds? And a Uber lot of love coming in from my the billiards. billiards teacher. I'm, why weren't you paying him enough to keep him out of the Uber streets is really the first thought that I have. I don't really <laughs> know about that story. Although I believe Call. DK, it does go in. Jax for Dimitar. Hang on, let's put a pin so in all of that. Valeta. He has my Valeta now. Nick, if this 24.6 were to slide over to Dimitar, it would be roll reversal for Jaffe for the first time so far in this heads-up match where he came in nearly 3-1 to one in chips. And Donchev, 71%. To enjoy that outcome, flop is oh Jack. Oh, go on, Dimitar. Top set. Jaffy Kaveri. That's a man who's taken some bad beats before Dimitar. <laughs> no early celebrations here. Just fade the king or the queen and haul it in, sir. Go on, Dimitar. There it is. And he has indeed flipped Jaffy Ali. <laughs> I gotta tell you, this is the time where I, in particular, nothing 
to do with Jaffe himself, but always keep my eye on the person that's lost this pot just to kind of get a sense he how will they so respond. He has so much experience, heads up. 11, I, I think he has them screwed on pretty tight, but I hear you, Ali. Yeah, I don't think the love nuts I understand. on Jaffe loosen easily, if at all. I agree with you. But, you know, we're all human out there. Frustration, something that none of us are particularly immune to, dare I say, but how it is that we react to that sort of frustration, of course, there's a spectrum. On the heels of this beat, I'm, of course, reaching over for the Bulgarian flag, balling it into a small crumple, and then throwing it somewhere off stage. Nick's looking at me alarmingly here. <laughs> he can't he can't get behind it. What it, I think I might have asked you this the other day, but what's be honest now. Because I've I've told the story about crumpling up aces and putting them in my mouth a couple of times on streams. Go on, But Ali. I've never asked you what is the craziest reaction you've ever had to you a beat. Know. Cash uh, tournament, yeah, whether or not you were wonder. busted by the hand. I mean, you know, nice hand, you <laughs> expletive, <laughs> and then a, a fairly forceful passing of the chips 13. over. I believe 13. Thank you very much. Yeah. You know, I don't have one story, but that one has happened more than I would like. Playing cash a long time ago, Ollie. I'm going to go out I on really a, have settled down. I'm going to go out on a limb. I have as well. But you see Ten Deuce raising it up. Jaffe might have a response here. Indeed he will. Was it David Oppenheim on the receiving end, by the way? Just out of curiosity for my own sake. Call from Jaffe. Okay. Uh... Yes, it certainly has been. Okay. Yes. I don't know why. I thought Go on, Ali. Three that's million a in the middle. It's about Jaffe and Danchev right now. You're right. Queen, eight, six. And it's about the ace of diamonds on this board. As we have the opportunity now to observe Dimitar's behavior as a chip leader. With position. Checking back, of course. This board really not his in any way, shape, or form. Gut shot. It's a potentially arrives. representable card for Dimitar. checked once more. Two million. Very nice from Dimitar. Barrels. Two into three. No, Jaffe does not go quietly. Sizing him up does, of course, have the most key card in the deck. or among them. Does let it go. Go on, Dimitar. Yep. What a nice feeling for Donchev, who hung in there, fought, scrapped, and then earned it with jacks against Ace-10. And he's had such a great start to the series, it would be, of course, a, a major feather in his cap to take this down. Well, speaking of feathers in caps, if you really, really want to round out your game, want to learn where you might be missing opportunities to run huge bluffs and take down pots, refine your strategies with GTO Wizard, the most sophisticated poker solver in the industry. Try it now at gtowizard.com and get free access to all features for the next 24 hours. I gotta 
I gotta say, Nick, my copy says the next 24 hours, no matter when I read it. <laughs> I've read it across the last five days. I don't know if someone from the wizard is standing by to kind of start the timer on that, but somehow they knew what they were doing, you know. They, 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 they know, Ali. It's like those ads on TV and they start a clock. You know, you get free shipping for right. the next nine minutes. I mean, how do they know the commercial just ran? Just You're like right, Ali. Jaffe. You're just up. living in a perpetual loop. <laughs> you might not be far off with that, by the way. I've definitely felt that way from time to time. Nice look at one of the many world-class dealers at Triton. Daniela. Ah, here he is. Knows all the names of no, the ladies. I, I promise I don't. They really are a solid bunch, though. I mean, not just anybody gets the nod for the feature, either. Got to qualify right. your way in. Limp from Danchev. The Brunson is upon us once again. 10-6 off for Jaffe. Checks. Slightly dominant. Queen 8, deuce. Bottom pair for Donchev as he connects with the side card for the improbable lead in a limp one pre. And a little bit more that way. Put between Donchev and Jaffe. Now a better than two to one chip lead. And even though obviously we know that it has been a poor stretch for Jaffe, there is no cause for panic 23 big blinds deep heads up. Agreed. And I really do believe Jaffe is, you know, has him screwed on tight. Yeah. Nine eight off. Could easily see him marching back. This has been a great match to watch. Really a great final table. Very fun one with a lot of spicy spots, Ali. Donche. We'll give Jaffe the discounted peak. Two hearts, two fives, and a deuce. Strike one for both. Round of knuckles. Strike two now. Bit of a stutter step. But imagine we'll be hearing from Jaffe at some point. Goes for 40%. Donchev not quite done with it yet. I love both of their mannerisms and the way they go about their business. He is gone, very nice, from Jaffe. Picks one up with the worst hand there. Chef. And the five duck for Mr. Jaffe. Limp from Dimitar.
1.7. Oh, and a finger wag. Very much so, and Dimitar will not be going quietly. Shoots him a quick glance, another looks back. We're not making more noise with the King-9, are we? No, just defense. It was a reasonable question, though. 3-9 in the middle, top pair, and the bad side of the gutty. And Jaffe in a bad way after limp raise. Five of hearts interacting somewhat, we could certainly see Jaffe being a bit off to the races right now. Right, looking to represent this texture in particular. Goes for a million, Ali. Mm -hmm. And does Dimitar want to extend a little more rope or, ra or raise right now? He's going for the rope, Ollie. And now trip kings on the turn. Jaffe drawing dead. Does Targets for, yes, Ollie, please. Uh, I was gonna ask, does the lack of the raise on the flop discount the king X enough for Jaffe to feel emboldened? It doesn't totally discount it, but it is, of course, a factor. He does check, which, as we can see, of course, is a nice choice. See what Dimitar goes for, 9.5 for Jaffe, 5.9 in the middle. Four million. Really going for the gustar, di gusto, Dimitar. And this will do it, Ali. Right? <laughs> I love that you, because you, you, you look out at Jaffe. Jaffe's always capable of minning here. Save the 1.5 if it oh doesn't man. work out. Oh, boy. The non -zero. By the way, note that he reached for the orange chips and then just glanced ever so slightly up at Dimitar. I see Sometimes it. responses will inform us. It's a great point. He is gone. You know how wild that is? That with five deuce, the man checks. Danchev bets four million and then you have to slide right with the question mark on the end of the presumption that the five deuce will find the muck. That is such a compliment to Jaffe. I know it's a weird thing. No, just I know, kind of I on know the surface. what you mean. He's like, dude, he might just get all over you in a spot like that. And when you don't have the king nine, guess what? Jaffe has no fear. Oh. But the five deuce off on King, Queen, Jack, King, he's still a brilliant poker mind. Mm. So that would be, but as you said, he glanced over if he thinks the guy's folding. Oh, he's wily, no question. Limp check. Cheap one coming. Nine, five, four, top pair for Donchev. Lackluster stove top for Jaffe, he checks back. And now suddenly a bit of luster delivered to one of the burners in the form of a six. Two-way straight draw for Jaffe. Jaffe very content to take the free one. Five of spades on the end. Interesting. A no cost pull at the river, fruitless for what is now just queen high. Backdoor spades have arrived, a second five, it's a bit wet. And if Dimitar seeks value, would not be shocked to see Jaffe have ideas. 
goes for pot, Ali, 1.5 into 1.5. And Jaffe, of course, with a very key card next to the queen. We got a little bit of action on the rail, by the way, from just what I can gather. Doesn't get Forgive away. me, I'm, I've lost sight of the objective there, but there appeared to be an amorous exchange transpiring back then. Okay. <coughs> an amorous exchange of what kind, Holly? Are you yeah, referring to the lady? Yeah, with being shallow. I certainly hope for his sake is her, her partner, but a little hair and stuff. Anyway. Yeah, if it's one of the Bulgarians' girlfriends, I would really leave this one <laughs> alone. <laughs> I'm just saying, I just call it like I see it. Nicholas. You'll find yourself killed, <laughs> my man. Oh, man. You're why not in Kansas <laughs> anymore, Ali. Dimitar jams. Shake of the head, no. I find myself easily distracted. You know what I mean? My report card's growing up. The teacher's always like, he's a, he's great well, with the, I, the grades, I've, but I've he's, I've mentioned you this know. many times, but it's been a while. Believe it or not, many years ago, Ali actually worked for CNN. <laughs> this is a true story. But it didn't work out <laughs> for him in the end. He has some wandering eyes. It, that was not the issue. By the way, by the way, <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> sure it relax. wasn't, Tali. Jack ten suited. No issues for Jaffe. It will be getting open. in, and good luck, gentlemen. By the way, my distraction. No, Jaffe going for the just raise non all in. Such oh, a pretty hand to take post. I kind of lost sight of the fact that Jaffe slipped to this low water mark. It happens fast with that Annie. Jaffe will be calling. Good yeah. luck, Jonathan. Yes. Gentlemen, yes. Dimitar has a chance to oh, win sorry, it. 13 bigs. Rainbow? I don't like that. <laughs> All right, jack of clubs, jack of spades, 10 of <laughs> clubs. 16.1 in the middle, the jack 10 in need of help, oh, and on an ace high board. Dimitar, my. It's just that diamond ace factor. It's worthy of interest, but. Has a chance to win this thing on yeah. the turn, Ali. Donchev would be completing such an improbable comeback. Will there be a sweat? And he does no. do it. Bravo, Dimitar. What a win. Good game, man. I ran pretty good. Hey, I ran very together, you know? That's how it is. Very nice to know. Jaffe, a great guy. Dimitar, a graceful winner. Jonathan, bravo on the second place. Ali. What an amazing exchange, by the way. Donchev came in and said, I ran pretty that good. Jaffe said, I ran really well to get there. <laughs> Class all the way. Humility. Take that 541 and go cast those yeah, bounties okay. out tomorrow, Jonathan. <laughs> Love to see it. Oh, look at the pride there. That's very nice. And Donchev's lady. She's a little misty. That's I a beautiful could, moment, Ollie. I'm a little misty, man. I'm a softy out here. 40K mystery bounty winner, Dimitar Donchev. He fought hard. So much patriotism in that delegation there. $804,000 richer for the effort has absolutely been the story here in Jeju. Producer James going out there. Ask for a loan, no doubt. 541000 <laughs> Jaffe in second. We kid. Final look at the payouts distribution. Brought to you by GG Poker. That was a hell of a final table. And a proper punctuation point. It, it really was, Ali. I couldn't agree more. Dare I say, as, as we bring you back to the desk here, let's not overlook a couple of bounties 
added to the equation there for Donchev, a minimum of $80,000 in value. The EV of those envelopes, $158,000. But I do want to really zero in. We touched on it very briefly. Maybe we can wax a bit more poetic. That level of humility out of both of those guys directly following what was an absolutely deflating sort of, you know, 30 minutes of just savagery, everything went Donchev's way. First thing that Jaffe says to him, I ran so well to get there. Yeah. So, you know, well met. Yeah, you're right. You know, you they've shared the grind for a long time. Jaffe's a great guy, fantastic player. He really is a humble, just... He's a great guy. Yeah. And Dimitar seems all class, all the way. Bravo, Dimitar. What a win. What's weird is I've shuffled chips for a long time, and yet I don't. my forearms don't look like Jaffe's, Nick. You think there's more to it? Yeah, I think there's a little more to it, Ollie. <laughs> Might you know? have to spell Jim with a G. You do snack a lot, so there's a <laughs> lot, but it's not quite enough. That doesn't get it done. But I must say, that was one of the most fun final tables I recall ever sweating. Yeah. It was a pleasure to... to be on the call and, and sweat that one. It was Likewise. really fun. Love being in here with you. Night shift comes to a close, but of course we do have some procedures that are still left. Nick and I will say good night, but we will send it down to the floor as one Dimitar Donchev stands by with our Marianella Pereira. That's going to do it for tonight's coverage on the back end of it, but don't forget to come back and see us again for more goodness here at the Triton Super High Roller Series from Jeju. Good night, guys. Well, the odds were favorable that a Bulgarian would be the last man standing. Dimitar, you joined us on this Triton journey just in Monte Carlo, where you went three for eight, including a runner-up finish. Here in Jeju, you finished third in the opening event, two other caches, and you are just minutes away from holding up your first Triton trophy. Did you ever imagine you would see so much success early on? Uh, not really. I mean... Um... I just was hopeful that I would run good, but uh, it happens sometimes in poker. You have some streaks, and maybe that's my time for some nice trick. Not bad for an early run good. And it did not escape our attention that when we got to eight, there were three Bulgarian flags flying. It must have been really nice to have so many people supporting you on this rail. Yeah, it was pretty nice, but the other Bulgarian guys are pretty tough players and uh, it wasn't easy at all to battle with them. Uh, and yeah, it was very hard and I think they played also very good and just the cards went my way. Yeah, as you mentioned, very tough competitors. And actually talk to me a little bit about that. Talk to me about the poker scene in Bulgaria right now. I mean, right now, I think uh, the poker scene is quite uh, good, quite developing. We are here five Bulgarians in Triton and I think there are many other, uh, not many, but few other who can also come, who are upcoming players and pretty good as well. So yeah, I think uh, we have some talent for such a small country. And yeah, I'm, I'm very glad about that. I'm very happy about that. And the excitement doesn't stop here. You have uh, six bounties to pull and Pretty nice moment for your fiance, who actually told you, please win. If you're going to win anything, please win this 40K mystery bounty so I can pull some bounties. Is that, is that what's going to happen? Are you going to allow her to pull? Yeah. She's saying thumbs up, yes, all six, please. Yeah, yeah that was, uh, that was uh, her wish. Uh, and I kind of gambled a little bit extra hard to win at least one bounty, and it went my way. So let's reach this epic moment now. I'd like to bring out tournament director Luca Vivaldi. This is your moment to present you with this beautiful, shiny Triton Trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, your 40K Mystery Bounty Champion, Dimitar Danchev.